What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn As A New Chiha Reviving The Clan With Harem System. Part 7. Like share and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Samu's face was filled with fear. The other Kumo ninjas were initially stunned, then their scalps crawled. Damn it. It's Natsuo. How did he get here? Wasn't he supposed to be fighting Karigaka? Natsuo noticed that the moment he approached the group, Goro and Naomi regained consciousness. But to his relief, they continued to pretend to be unconscious. He then looked at the remaining children, and seeing that they were not injured, he sighed softly. How did he get here? Of course he chased them. Although talks had already begun to reach an agreement between Karigaka and Konohagaka, Tsunade had still ordered Natsuo to stabilize the situation on the Karigaka front and protect against any sneak attacks from the Kiri ninjas. But Natsuo knew that the Kiri ninjas did not have the courage to launch a surprise attack. Even if the Kiri ninjas took advantage of Natsuo's distraction and successfully attacked the Kanova camp, it would be pointless, because Natsuo could go to the Karigaka camp, and make their losses even greater. The Kiri ninjas might not be aware of this, but Tsurumi may definitely knew. So she would do everything possible to prevent this situation from happening. So in addition to going to the Karigaka camp to check on Tsurumi Mei's pregnancy status, Natsuo directly used the Flying Thunder God to return to Konoha and fight for the revival of the Ichiha with his wives. In addition to helping his children adapt to their new skills. Because the mental ties with his children are increasingly stable, some of his children began to manifest various abilities, as is the case with Goro and Naomi. All their bodies and senses were strengthened significantly, as was the case with Ran. Today was no different. However, just as Natsuo arrived at the Ichiha clan residence, Yukino approached in a panic to inform him that Samui had kidnapped several of the children and was now fleeing along with Komogaka's spies. Naturally, he immediately chased after them. Samui was surprised. This shouldn't be like this. You shouldn't be in Kanoha, no. Even if you are in Kanoha, you shouldn't be able to catch up with us so quickly. Before they left, Samui had disguised herself well. Normally, it would take some time for Kanoha to realize that the Ichiha children were missing. After all, there were quite a few Ichiha children, and in the chaos, it wouldn't be unusual for children to be taken by their mothers, and kept away from conflicts. It would be normal for them not to return home immediately. He shouldn't have caught up with them so quickly. Of course, Natsuo wouldn't explain to her that Rayan had been suspicious of her, and when he couldn't find his brothers and sisters, he immediately informed Yukino. That's why when he arrived at the Ichiha clan residence, he was immediately informed. And although Samui and the others did not have the mark of the Flying Thunder God, but thanks to the Bakudo number 58 Kankishitsu Jaku, Natsuo was able to find the approximate location of them. And thanks to the fact that he had left several special kunai, with the marks of the Flying Thunder God in the surroundings of Kanoha, he was able to reach them quickly. Natsuo calmly looked at Samui and sighed softly. So, in the end, you side with the Kumo ninjas Samui bit her lip and said, I'm sorry, but I'm a Kumogaka spy. My name is I know, Samui of Kumogaka. Natsuo sighed softly. I just didn't expect you to finally side with Kumogaka, wasn't I good to you? You really do know. Samui had a bitter smile. She was aware of the many spies in the Ichiha clan, and as far as she knew, Natsuo was aware of the spies' identities, but he never interfered with them. Even if you were a spy, Natsuo would treat you fairly. It's not that you weren't good to me. In fact, during my time in the Ichiha clan, it was the happiest and easiest time for me. Samu sighed softly, but there are tasks that need to be done. Clearly, in her eyes, Kumogaka took priority over everything else. Natsuo is aware that at this point, with so many wives, it is impossible to think that they all love him. In the end, everything is based on mutual benefits and respect. And even though Kumogaka couldn't offer her as much as he could, she still chose them. I understand. Natsuo didn't think much about it anymore, and simply nodded calmly. At times, he found it difficult to understand the sense of commitment and exaggerated love that shinobi have towards their villages. In the world of Naruto, loyalty to the village is embedded in its political, social, and military system. But from an external perspective, Samui's betrayal was a foolish action. Natsuo did not expect that every woman who saw him would betray her village and completely change her focus to become loyal to him or the Ichiha clan. That's unrealistic. Not wanting to harm your village is understandable. For example, Amayuri still has an attachment to Kurigaka, and that's why she kept asking Natsuo to have mercy on the battlefield, but she only made one request. She didn't try to betray him or harm the Ichiha clan, but Samui, if you want to leave, tell me. 
Although I doubt I'll let you take a son, but Natsuo sighed lightly and slowly closed his eyes. He suddenly opened his eyes. The pattern of the Manjekyo Sharingan appeared in his eyes. Why did you kidnap my children? The chilling power of the Manjekyo Sharingan burst from his eyes, enveloping the surroundings in a cold atmosphere. His voice carried a hint of coldness. Miss Samui, as a ninja, you chose to carry out a mission, so you must also be able to imagine the consequences of carrying out that mission, right? The chilling chakra pressed down on them like a mountain. There are two full teams of elite Kumogaka spies here, all of them skilled with minimal jonin level strength. But they instantly felt a chilling sensation, as if everyone was going to die in the next second. Samui took a deep breath. Yes, I understand Natsuo said coldly as he looked at all the Kumo ninjas. We must all bear the consequences of our actions. Hearing this Goro and Naomi trembled slightly. The next second Natsuo's figure disappeared in front of everyone's eyes. Kumogaka's elite spies trembled. They were all experts, but none of them noticed Natsuo's figure. Ah, a cry of anguish rang out. The Kumo ninjas sharply turned their heads only to see that one of the two elite Jonin level captains had died at the hands of Natsuo. Natsuo without hesitation puts all the ninjas in a powerful Jinjutsu. Jinjutsu, Manjekyo Sharingan, noticing that all the ninjas stand still, Goro telepathically tells Naomi. It's our time Naomi. We must act. Naomi quickly responds through the telepathic link. Don't cause problems Goro. Our father is already upset. Let's just escape. Because the conversation takes place in their minds, everything happens in an instant. Then with precision and agility, Goro and Naomi free themselves from their captors. As they walk away from their captors, Naomi, with her telekinetic control, disarms the nearby ninjas. Naomi mentally tells Goro, We need to get to our brothers and escape, so as not to be a burden to our father. Goro responds mentally, I'm with you sister. After using the Jinjutsu, Natsuo removed the sword that pierced the Kumo ninja, and before the ninja fell to the ground, he snatched his unconscious child from him. Then in the blink of an eye he disappeared and put his child away from the Kumo ninjas. He then instantly appeared near the Kumo ninjas, who had been holding Goro and Naomi. Naomi. In Akami Kagura, the air seems to distort from the heat as Natsuo deploys this technique. Raging Sun. With agile movements, Natsuo lunged forward, leaving trails of flame behind him. That danced in the air like ribbons of fire. Two slashes of flame materialize, glowing with a dazzling radiance before engulfing the two Kumo ninjas in deep red flames. Natsuo seeing that Goro and Naomi escaped taking two of his brothers with them, placed the sword in front of him, before it returned to cover itself in dark red flames. He then moved the blade to his right side before raising it above his head. In Akami Kagura, in the blink of an eye, he appeared in front of one of the two Kumo ninjas from whom Goro and Naomi had taken the captured children. With a swift movement, the flaming sword cut off the Kumo ninja's head. In an instant, Natsuo's figure disappeared again, and he reappeared in front of the second Kumo ninja, leaving a trail of fire in his wake. The sword danced, unleashing a lethal thrust that culminated in the all of another enemy. Once again, he disappeared and emerged, leaving behind him a burning trail that culminated in one last death movement that decapitated the third Kumo, who was holding a child in his arms. As the last enemy fell, the flames came to life, forming a majestic fire dragon in the shape of a Japanese dragon. Sun Halo Dragon Head Dance. With the glow of the flames dispersing, Natsuo emerged, holding in his arms the child he rescued from the last Kumo ninja. In an instant, Natsuo arrived next to Naomi and Goro handing them their sibling, while asking them to stay hidden and take care of their passed out siblings. He urged them to protect their unconscious siblings, ensuring their safety, while he dealt with what came next. Natsuo immediately returned to where the rest of the Kumogaka spy team were, because Natsuo had to use Jinjutsu on several ninjas at the same time. The effect did not last long. When he returned the Kumo ninjas had freed themselves from the Jinjutsu. Waking up from the Jinjutsu and seeing that Natsuo had already killed several Kumo ninjas in a short time, the eyes of one of the Kumo ninjas turned cold. Don't move. A Kumo ninja shouted, holding a kunai to the neck of the Achiha child he was holding hostage. If you dare to move, I'll kill him. The expressions of the other Kumo ninjas changed slightly, but they also performed the same action. They all took out their kunai and held them against the Ichiha children's necks. However, Samui, who had just freed herself from the Jinjutsu, changed her expression. Wait, Raiden, Reikich-sama's mission is to safely bring these children back to the village. Is this the time to worry about that? The Kumo ninja named Raiden said angrily. Without this method, can we still bring the children back? After speaking, he turned to Natsuo and said sternly, Natsuo, I know you're strong, and no one here is your match. But if you disappear from our side again, we'll kill your child first. Don't think we're threatening you. As he spoke, he was about to press the kunai down, intending to leave a blood mark on the child's neck, and make a deep impression on Natsuo. A flash of coldness crossed Natsuo's eyes, before his Manjekyo Sharingan began to spin. Tsukuyomi the next second, Raiden felt the world change, and suddenly he found himself in a strange, empty space, tied to a cross, unable to move a finger. I wanted to try some of my techniques on you. But you had to make me even more angry well. Forget it. Enjoy your stay here. Schlick. Natsuo's figure appeared in front of Raiden, and his ninja sword slowly sank into his body. The blade penetrates to the bone. The pain penetrates the heart. Raiden let out a painful howl, 
The sound was incredibly loud, as if he wanted to drown out all other sounds. Samui noticed that the moment Raiden Thread and Natsuo, all the Kumo ninjas began to stand still one after another almost simultaneously. The next second Natsuo's figure moved among the paralyzed Kumo ninjas, while his ninja sword cut their throats. Although his speed was not very fast, but all the Kumo ninjas were easily killed by Natsuo. The moment their throats were cut, the Kumo ninjas showed a terrified expression on their faces. Their eyes widened, their facial muscles tightened, and their eyes were bloodshot. It's Jinjutsu. Samui was stunned and quickly understood that in the moment before dying, the Kumo ninjas were freed from the illusion. But she didn't know what kind of Jinjutsu Natsuo had used to make several experienced ninjas present show such a terrified expression. Now, only you are left. Natsuo's voice was calm, without a trace of emotion. Although the eternal Manjekyo Sharingan and the sage body allowed Natsuo to use the Tsukiyomi several times in a row without side effects, using it on the remaining six, Jonin still consumed quite a bit Samui smiled bitterly, but still didn't make any moves. Or rather, when she saw Natsuo, she understood that there was no way to escape from him. She had already given up resistance from the beginning. Natsuo didn't find it strange either. He picked up the unconscious children before taking them to Goro and Naomi. He then used the Flying Thunder God technique to bring all the children back to the Ichiha clan residence. This was repeated several times until it was Samui's turn. Whoosh! Samui only saw a flash before noticing that she was back in the Ichiha clan residence. This is the Flying Thunder God technique. Samui, being an experienced elite jonin, immediately recognized the nature of Natsuo's ninjutsu. Then she let out a bitter smile. Now he understood why despite being so careful and having several Kumo ninjas serve as a distraction, Natsuo was still able to catch up with them in such a short time. After leaving Samui in a room, Natsuo took the unconscious children to their respective mothers, leaving Goro and Naomi alone with Natsuo. They were waiting for Kurinai and Enko to return, since they also went to look for their children in the chaos caused by the Kumo ninjas. Amidst the general relief, the pent-up stress and tension burst out in Naomi. She, with tears in her eyes and her heart racing from past fear, throws herself at Natsuo, hugging him tightly. Naomi between sobs tells Natsuo, Dad, she was so scared. I didn't know what else to do at that moment. It was horrible Natsuo, surprised by her daughter's display of vulnerability, since she always seemed very calm in any situation despite her young age. He hugs her tenderly but also with concern, before comforting her. You're safe now Naomi. Everything's okay. Naomi continues sobbing. We shouldn't have followed Samui. When we realized, they knocked us out Goro. Noticing that Naomi was going to tell their dad how they ended up being kidnapped, quickly communicates with her telepathically, trying to stop her. Naomi, stop. Do not say more. But it's already too late. Natsuo, with a stern look, understands the implication of his daughter's words. Natsuo in a stern tone asks his daughter, Have you gone after Samui? Did you follow her even though you noticed that there was something wrong? Naomi, with fear and remorse, nods, unable to hide what happened at that moment. Natsuo then reprimands his children for his recklessness. Acting without informing anyone puts everyone at risk. They shouldn't have acted like that, it's dangerous and irresponsible. I don't want them to put themselves in danger again. Goro and Naomi, embarrassed at having disappointed their father, nod silently, acknowledging their mistake and promising to be more careful in the future. Noticing Yukino approaching with Anko and Kurenai, Natsuo stops scolding them. Naomi runs to hug her mother between sobs, while Anko hugs Goro, who only laments the punishment that awaits him. After Natsuo explained the situation to Kurenai and Anko, and told them to discuss Goro and Naomi's punishment later, Natsuo left it in Yukino's hands to call the doctors from Kanova Hospital to check the children before going to see Samui. What are you going to do to me? Samui forced a smile, raising her head and looking at Natsuo's face. Unlike his previous kind smile, Natsuo's expression is now filled with indifference. You're still carrying my child. Until the child is born, I won't punish your body. Natsuo looked at Samui, locked her in a secret room within the Ichiha clan residence and spoke calmly. At least for a short time, you can rest assured. But instead of feeling calm, Samui suddenly felt a tightness in her chest. What are you going to do then? She asked anxiously. A person must take responsibility for their actions. Natsuo didn't answer, he just looked into the distance quietly. This responsibility cannot fall on you now, so it can only fall on Kumogaka. With that, Natsuo walked away from Samui. But Samui's face only showed an expression of endless worry. Natsuo, are you going to attack Kumogaka? Natsuo walked out of the secret room. Tsunade, Amayori, Yukino and other women were waiting outside the door. Yukino already informed me that you saved all the children. Tsunade looked at Natsuo and sighed in relief. I'm glad everyone is safe, otherwise it would be negligence on my part as Hokage. As Hokage, Sune believed it was her responsibility to protect the village. Now that the Reikage, Mizukage, and Kazukage have all gone to the battlefield, Sune, as the only cage to remain in the rear without going to the front, is responsible for supplying military resources and manpower to the battlefront, as well as being ready to provide support at a moment's notice. Another important duty is to maintain the stability of Kanoha. However, the Kumo ninja managed to take the Achiha children from Kanoha, while she was in the village. 
This is simply a dereliction of duty on her part as the Hokage. It's not your fault. Natsuo shook his head. Kumogaka had been planning this for a long time. In this operation, the Kumogaka spies who had infiltrated Konoha over the years were almost completely eliminated. They paid such a high price, all to buy time for the Achiha clan lineage to be transferred to Kumogaka. Tsunade is currently under a lot of pressure due to the war and internal conflicts accumulated during the third Hokage's mandate. Not to mention that with the help of Samui, the time for the missing children to be discovered has been greatly delayed. If it weren't for Natsuo's sudden return, Yukino probably would have reported the children's disappearance to Tsunade, and although she would have personally gone after them, she probably wouldn't have arrived in time. This is also due to Natsuo's carelessness. During this time everything has turned out well for him, so he wasn't very worried about someone trying something against his children. This incident is a wake-up call for him. But speaking of it, when did you learn Flying Thunder God? Tsunade breathed a sigh of relief, and then asked curiously, This ninjutsu is not easy to learn. Did you really learn it secretly? When did Natsuo obtain this forbidden technique? This ninjutsu is only found in the Kanoha Scroll of Seals. Besides, he has been busy reviving the Achiha clan, and has recently been on the battlefield. Where did he find time to learn this forbidden technique? That is the powerful forbidden technique that the 4th Hokage became famous for. Even the 4th Hokage's Hokage Guard Platoon were only able to learn the Flying Thunder Formation technique as they could not use the technique on their own. Natsuo just smiled and didn't answer her. This guy Tsune pouted. How much does this man really hide? This time instead of leaving directly Natsuo gathered his wives and children and imprinted his Flying Thunder God mark on each of them. In this way, even if a situation similar to Samui's were to happen again in the future, he could quickly arrive and solve all the problems. However Natsuo, there is a big problem at home. Home. Tsune paused for a moment and finally spoke. Although Samu's defection is the first time for the Achiha, it is also a dangerous sign. Can you guarantee that there won't be a second Samu? Stop it, you are too lenient with the spies. Tsune frowned. Now that you have so many wives, isn't that enough for you? Is it necessary to have children with Kinochi from other villages? Tsune expressed her confusion. In the entire ninja world, even if you go back a thousand years, no one has been as open as Natsuo, welcoming all spies. In fact, whether it was the ninja clan in the Sengoku period or the ninja villages of the current era, they all hated spies to the core, and called for their extermination. Once discovered even at the cost of incurring losses, they must be completely eliminated. How could there be someone like Natsuo who would open the doors wide and welcome guests from all directions? There are many Kinoichi spies in the Ichiha clan. Although there has been no betrayal besides Samui until now, why do you take this risk? Tsunade advised him seriously, and in the end she even said with a touch of shyness, Natsuo, aren't Kinoha's women enough for you? Natsuo smiled. Tsunade, are you jealous? Natsuo, I'm trying to talk to you seriously. Tsunade glared at him as she clenched her fist trying to control herself from hitting him. Of course, Tsunade was indeed a little jealous. According to the agreement they made, she was now supposed to be his wife, but he still wants to have more wives. She hadn't said anything before, since he already had several wives when they met. But now couldn't he contain his desire for women a little? All right, all right, just kidding. Natsuo chuckled, then turned serious and said, But I don't plan to abandon the current policy. I may not take more wives easily. However, the Achiha clan has managed to revive to this point, and the help of the Kinoichi is crucial. Samui's actions were just her personal thoughts. Most Kinoichi spies have abandoned their mission a long time ago. Today's incident was just an accident. I can't judge other women just because of the mistake of one of them. But don't worry, now I will be more careful, and I will not allow any more accidents to happen. Of course. The most important thing is that Natsuo has taken almost every powerful Kinochi or one, with some special Kekei Genkai in Kanoha. So he can't give up spies from other villages. Except for Tsunade, whose betting agreement has not yet been fully resolved due to the ongoing peace talks with Kurigika. The truth is that there are few women in Kanoha who can bear powerful offspring. Furthermore, as long as Hiyashi remains the leader of the Hayuga clan, and the rigid control over marriages between clan members remains, Natsuo will stop looking for wives in Kanova. Only when Miji takes the reins and allows freedom for the Hayuga to marry outside the clan, will Natsuo once again pay his attention to the affairs of Kanova. Women from other villages are a strong complement to revive the Ichiha clan, and Natsuo will not give up. As for Samui, Natsuo plans to keep her under house arrest until she gives birth, before deciding what to do with her. It seems I cannot convince you. Tsune pouted. But what will you do if someone like Samui appears again? Although you have set up the Flying Thunder God, it is not invincible. Some seals can block your perception of the Flying Thunder God mark, not to mention the risk of the other party, using the Flying Thunder God mark as bait to ambush you. What do you plan to do? Natsuo smiled slightly. Then he looked in the direction of Kumogaka. Of course. I will first teach those who have gone too far a lesson I am not Saratobi Hiruzen. Do they really think that I will not dare to do anything? Konohagika vs Kumogaka Battlefield. Reiki J felt a bit uneasy. But no matter how he thought about it, 
He couldn't figure out what the problem was. The frontline attack is going smoothly. Jiraiya can only hold on and wait for reinforcements. Although there is no news from Samui's side yet, there shouldn't be any problems. After all, the spies we have deployed this time are the accumulated strength of the village for many years. There are also many experts in the support troops. It won't be a problem to stop Kanoha's pursuers. So where could the problem be? Reiki J couldn't figure it out. Killer B who was calmly writing his new song, suddenly changed his expression. Yo, Hachibi dropped the word. A mega chakra slinger just stepped into the scene. Brother, is it Jiraiya? A raised his head. Well, then let's teach him a lesson first. But Killer B's expression became extremely serious. No, he's not Jiraiya. He's the next second a powerful sword energy suddenly appeared cutting everything in its path, whether it was a powerful ninja or a sturdy structure, it cut through them effortlessly. The powerful slash created a deep crack in the earth. The energy from the sword cut headed straight towards the Kumogaka camp. Being a pivotal point in the war, the fortress built by the ninjas was incredibly solid, but it was directly destroyed and turned into ruins. Bang, bang, bang. Several high-level Kumo ninjas emerged from the ruins, their eyes filled with fear. Reiki J kicked away a huge rock and stood up from the ruins. He had almost died just now. Fortunately, his keen instinct made him jump to the side, avoiding the brunt of the attack. Who is it? Reiki J looked at the now ruined fortress, then at the countless bodies of the Kumo ninja buried in the rubble. Instantly, his eyes filled with anger. Who dares to attack Kumogaka's main camp? He roared with full anger. But the next second thud, thud, thud. A loud sound came, and Susanoo took big steps, causing the ground to shake. He held a long sword, the blade hanging down and touching the ground. With each step he took, a deep trench was carved into the earth. And on the giant's forehead, there was a man exuding extremely strong killing intent as he quickly approached. At this moment Killer B also moved the giant rock and emerged from the ruins, shouting, Brother, he's not Jiraiya, he's Ichiha Natsuo. You're Ichiha Natsuo. The Reikage's expression changed. No wonder I felt uneasy. So it was because of Samui's problem, it was indeed your order. Natsuo's Susanu was already very close. His expression was extremely calm, with a hint of coldness. The Kumo ninjas are nothing more than a group of rogues. Besides stealing things, they don't do anything else. This is not the first time Kumogaka has attempted to kidnap ninjas with Keke Genkai from Kanoha. During the peace talks with Kanoha, Kumo's envoys tried to capture a girl who was only a few years old. After failing to capture her, they still had the audacity to act like old rogues, and extort Kanoha of course. Kanoha is even cheaper. The third Hokage actually backed down and handed over the Bayakigan. But now this time, you've stolen the wrong person. Natsuo's voice was icy. Who gave you the courage to attack my Ichiha clan? Yes, I gave the order to kidnap your children. So what? The Rakage didn't try to fight back and snorted coldly. But you, you dare to come to our Kumogaka stronghold. Who gave you the courage to attack the Kumo ninjas? He suddenly took a step forward and intense lightning crackled around him. Lightning release chakra mode. Now that you're here, don't think about leaving. Rakage snorted coldly. Ichiha should not exist in Kanoha. Natsuo raised an eyebrow at her words as he thought. This guy so confident. I came here with my complete Susanoo from the beginning. Who gave Rakage the courage to be so confident? Even Killaby couldn't help but say, Brother, be careful. This guy is not weak. He is even stronger than the tailed beasts. I know he's not weak just by looking at his momentum but... Reikage tore off his clothes and looked determined. Do you think I can't defeat Mizukage? If the Mizukage can resist Natsuo, then you and I, together, can kill Natsuo right here. Natsuo. Killer B pondered for a moment, nodded, and his tail beast chakra surged. Brother, you're right. Let's go. B. Reikage shouted. Yes, brother. In the next second, the two of them disappeared. And then, the two of them appeared near the Susanoo's neck at an extremely fast speed. Each of them extended their arms and simultaneously hit the Susanoo's neck. Lightning release. Double lariat. Boom. A loud noise. Susanoo's body trembled. The armor was slightly damaged. Reikage A. Killer B. They exerted all their strength, but instead of penetrating the damaged armor with their power, Susanoo's armor slowly regenerated at a visible speed. Susanoo is essentially a combination of chakra, and as long as chakra is infused, it can easily recover. Seeing this, the two exerted even more force, but it only slowed down the Susanoo's regeneration and did not affect the result. The Kumo ninjas really are a bunch of arrogant fools. Natsuo scoffed. Susanoo's large hand reached out. The Reikage and Killer B's expressions changed, and they immediately backed away. While retreating, Reikage couldn't help but shout. How is this possible? How could you easily block our attack? That was the double lariat. It was his collaboration technique, a team attack passed down from generation to generation in Kumogaka. How could it have no effect at all? Natsuo's mouth twitched. Is it possible that it's because you're weak? This is the complete body Susanoo, and with their strength breaking through its defense is already quite impressive. After all, they guys are really weak. 
However, the Reikage coldly snorted. You, who was stopped by the Mizukage, how strong can you be? Although the strengths of the five cage are not equal, Reikage is confident that he is absolutely not inferior to any of them. Terumi Mei, just a woman with no significant achievements Natsuo. Actually, from a certain perspective, Reikage's confidence is not wrong. After Namika's Minato's death, he is the true fastest ninja in the ninja world. Strong in attack, strong in defense, he can turn the tide of the battlefield by himself. If the Reikage were to face Terumi Mei, he would probably completely dominate her, since her speed is actually not very good. Unless Terumi may prepare some traps to slow him down or blocks the surrounding space to facilitate the use of her ninjutsu, then it could be said that her defeat would be only a matter of time. And Terumi Mei, who was almost completely overwhelmed by the Reikage, is only slightly inferior compared to Natsuo. Reikage A is confident that he and Killer B can defeat Natsuo if they join forces, without any problems. But the question is, who told you that my battle with Terumi Mei was a real battle? Reikage A and Killer B attacked the Susanoo without hesitation. They were extremely fast, like lightning, relentlessly attacking the Susanoo. However, the effect was not as good as the initial combination attack. The lightning release. Double Lariat is indeed a collaboration technique recognizing Kumogaka, capable of greatly increasing destructive power. But with the cooperation of two cage level experts, they only managed to scratch Susanoo's surface, which was incredibly sturdy. Now that they are attacking individually, their destructive power has suddenly decreased to the point where they can't even break through its surface. How could this be? How could this be? Reiki J widened his eyes and said, He shouldn't be so strong. Even mere Mizukage was able to restrain Natsuo, so there's no reason why he couldn't. He waved his fist infused with a powerful lightning release chakra and punched at maximum speed. Lightning straight, but it was completely useless. What can Reiki J use to attack? He desperately attacked throwing punches and kicks at Susanoo. As he attacked he heard a voice. Buzzing like mosquitoes you guys are so loud. Reikage's pupils contracted, and the next second, he saw Susanoo's huge palm slap down. Bang. The Reikage was sent flying away. Looking at the size difference between him and Susanoo, he really looked like just a mosquito. Boom. The Reikage crashed into a rock in the Kumogaka camp, then spat out a mouthful of blood. Brother. Killer B exclaimed, but then noticed a shadow looming over him. He hurriedly used the Eight Tails Chakra to block, but was still sent flying away. Boom. They both landed in the ruins of the Kumogaka camp, feeling intense pain throughout their bodies, as they struggled to get up. Brother, this guy seems a bit off Killer B's mouth twitched as he covered his bleeding arm. There is clearly no problem with the technique he is using, and he can use his full power. He is not as weak as we imagine. The Reikage frowned and said, could it be that the Mizukage has found some weaknesses in the technique that we haven't addressed? That's why there is such a difference. Otherwise, it's impossible to explain how a Chihamadara's powerful ninjutsu could be blocked by the mere Mizukage. That's possible, Killer B said. Otherwise, he can't imagine how the Mizukage managed to stop a Chihanatsuo. The two fell silent for a moment. The current problem is that they haven't discovered any of Natsuo's weaknesses. Let's go straight at it. Reikage took a deep breath. With you and me, brothers working together, what is there to fear? Killer B stood up. Yes, brother. In the next second, more chakra surged from his body, covering him in a dark red tail beast chakra. He put on the tail beast cloak, still in human form, but with eight tails made purely of chakra behind him, exuding a strong aura. Jinchuriki forms. Version 1. At the same time, A's chakra instantly surged throughout his body. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Intense thunder roared as lightning release chakra mode erupted with the most dazzling light. Boom. He rushed forward, his knife-shaped hand pushing his momentum to the maximum, heading straight for the crystal on the Susanoo's forehead. In the blink of an eye, he had already reached Natsuo's front. Without hesitation, he struck out with a powerful hand slash. How naive. Natsuo's voice was cold. In front of an Achiha, you dare to attack directly him. A's pupils constricted, feeling that something was not right. But in the next second, he directly met Natsuo's eyes. The pattern of the Manjekyo Sharingan rotated in Natsuo's eyes, and an extremely cold and sinister power burst forth from his pupils. Jinjutsu. Manjekyo Sharingan. Reikage A inwardly thought it was not good, but how could he resist the Jinjutsu of the eternal Manjekyo Sharingan? In an instant his gaze dimmed, and the intense chakra on his body suddenly dissipated. However, his body still followed the previous inertia, and collided with Natsuo. Then, the Susanoo extended its palm and grabbed him firmly. The price for laying a hand on my children is heavy. Natsuo's expression was calm, but his voice turned cold. And you will serve as an example so that others understand the consequences of doing so. As the Susanoo brought the rakage closer to Natsuo, he raised the ninja sword in his hand. In the next second brother, Killer B exclaimed rushing towards Natsuo. As he jumped into the air, he transformed directly into the Eight Tails, and tried to attack Natsuo. However, the Susanoo brandished his sword. Ah, the Eight Tails let out a painful cry, a deep wound slashed across its chest. The entire tail beast was sent flying. Be quiet, you beast. Natsuo's eyes narrowed slightly. Don't worry, it will soon be your turn. He threw Rakage A into the air, and then the sword in his hand made several cuts. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Three consecutive cuts, two cuts cutting A's arms, and the last cutting both legs are, 
The intense pain awakens A from the illusion. With his keen eyes, he instantly understands the situation before him, and his eyes turn red. You dare. You dare to sever my limbs. What's there to be afraid of? Natsuo remains calm, and the Susanoo grabs the rakage again, and brings him in front of Natsuo. When you decided to kidnap my children, you should have anticipated that I might retaliate. Natsuo said with a calm expression his gaze was deep. People must pay the price for their actions. I can't control what choices you make but I can control the revenge I take. Fresh blood dripped, staining the Susanoo's hand red. It is no wonder that he inherited the lineage of the most resilient ninja in the ninja world, the third rakage. Even with his limbs severed and his arteries bleeding, he gritted his teeth and refused to continue his cries of pain. Instead, he looked at Natsuo with a mocking smile. Ha ha ha, is this your revenge? Natsuo looked at the rakage with disappointment and said, You were the chosen one, Anakin. You were to destroy the Sith, not join them. You were to balance the Force, not leave it in darkness. What the hell are you talking about Natsuo? Who the hell is Anakin? Stop this nonsense all I can say is that you're still too soft. Oh, Natsuo raised an eyebrow. I'd like to hear why you think that way. Ha ha ha, despite attacking mercilessly, you didn't kill me. Reiki J gritted his teeth, glaring angrily at Natsuo with a hint of disdain. What's wrong, Natsuo? Can't bear the consequences of killing a cage. Or is your hatred only to this extent? However, Natsuo, upon hearing this, burst into laughter. Indeed, my revenge is only to this extent I won't even kill you. I'll even help treat your injuries. Saying that, he actually crouched down and began using mystical palm technique to treat Rakage AA was dumbfounded. What was going on? The next second Natsuo's voice reached A's is, Rakage, do you think the most painful thing for a person is just death? What's so terrifying about death? After death everything is over, no more worries. No more feeling of humiliation, no more anger. What kind of revenge is this? Natsuo's lips curled up, his gaze filled with a hint of amusement. The truly terrifying thing is to be beaten half to death, unable to take care of oneself, losing control of bodily functions, and yet still being forced to live. Don't worry, I will do my best to treat you. I can't make you live forever, but making you live 180 years is quite simple. His voice, gentle as if it were the wind. But this wind, it blows from hell. Seemingly soft, but with infinite malice inside him. A widened his eyes and looked at Natsuo with a hint of fear in his eyes for the first time. A is a proud man, and just the thought of being partially paralyzed, unable to take care of his bodily functions relying on others for everything, made his scalp tingle. The prouder a man is, the less he can bear this torment. Kill me. If you have the guts, kill me. I shouted angrily. But Natsuo looked at him mockingly as he thought. I went through all this trouble to cut off your limbs. And use medical ninjutsu to treat you only to give you a quick death. Even without speaking, I could clearly understand the meaning behind that look. The rakage who did not hesitate anymore and decisively stuck out his tongue and bit her hard. Splurt. Blood splattered. He was actually planning to bite his tongue and end his life. However, Natsuo shook his head. Lack of education kills people who told you that biting your tongue can end your life. There are two principles behind biting the tongue to end life. One is the loss of a large amount of blood leading to loss of consciousness. And the other is death caused by the tongue blocking the airway. But, you think so little of me that you think this stupid game can work with me in front of you. Natsuo punched A, shattering his teeth, then grabbed his bloody tongue, and began treating the base of the tongue. You want to easily die after trying to snatch my children. It's not that simple. On the other side, Killer B, who had been severely injured by Natsuo. He struggled to stay conscious amidst the pain, but his weak limbs made it difficult for him to move. However, when he saw his big brother, A, being brutally attacked by Natsuo, Killer B somehow found a bit of strength and roared as he rushed towards Natsuo. Natsuo, how dare you before he could finish his sentence, the Susanu attacked him with its sword directly. Blood gushed out. The immense gap in power was insurmountable. Ichiha Madara treated the tail beast like he was dealing with small cats and dogs. Natsuo was the same. However, Killer B did not give up. Jinchuriki form, tail beast mode. He then opened his mouth wide, and, disregarding the intense pain throughout his body, forcefully squeezed out a large amount of chakra. Tail beast ball. But just as the tail beast ball was forming, a giant hand reached out and grabbed it. Susanoo's arm caught the fully formed tail beast ball and then pushed it into the eight tails mouth. Boom. A loud explosion. The eight tails exhaled white smoke from its mouth and, with its eyes blank, fell unconscious to the ground. How can this be A's heart tightened as he stared wide-eyed in the direction of the eight tails? He had never seen him fall into such a state. Beside him, Natsuo's mouth curled up as he said, Hey, should I just kill him directly, or cut off his limbs like you? I really want to see what expression you'll have then. A widened his eyes, his body tense, his face full of nervousness. But let's forget about it. Natsuo laughed as a descendant of a Chihamadara. I naturally have to inherit Ichihamadara's will, and bring him back to Kanoha. Saying that, he glanced at the eight tails. Natsuo doesn't know if it's because Killer B is a perfect Jinchuriki, or if there's another reason, but the eight tails still hadn't returned to Killer B's human form. He continued to stay in the tail B's form, and just fainted directly, with such a large body. It's not easy to handle Natsuo muttered, not caring. Susanoo directly reached out its hand. He grabbed the eight tails tail and dragged it like that, heading towards Kanoha. 
The huge and heavy body left a deep imprint on the ground, and the trees in its path were directly crushed. Several remaining Kumo ninjas saw this scene, and regardless of the strength gap between them, they desperately chased after them. But what awaited them was just a casual slash from Natsuo Boom. All the Kumo ninjas who pursued him were killed. Reiki J stared blankly at everything in front of him. His eyes were full of regret, and, for the first time, he shed tears of remorse despite considering himself a man who does not cry even when he was seriously injured. This is all his own fault. His reckless attempt to kidnap the Ichiha children to take Natsuo's children otherwise, Kumogaka wouldn't have ended up like this. Who could have imagined that Natsuo's revenge would come so quickly, so ruthlessly? All this is his own fault. At that moment Jiraiya arrived with the Kanoha army, after noticing such a commotion. What is this? Jiraiya widened his eyes, looking at the Kumogaka fortress that seemed to have been destroyed by a natural disaster, and the ruins in which only corpses remained. And then, not far away, there was the enormous Susanu dragging the eight tails, step by step. So this is the strength of the most powerful technique of the Achiha, this kind of dominance over tail beasts, no one can compare. All the Kanoha ninja present looked at the scene in front of them with surprise on their faces, unable to speak for a moment. It wasn't until the giant gradually walked away that everyone finally regained their senses. Then, a heated discussion broke out. So this is the power of the Achiha. The entire Kumogaka army has been wiped out. Natsuo is actually this strong. It's really exaggerated. Was Achiha Madara also this powerful back then? I understand now why my grandfather and the others would be filled with fear. When they talked about the terror of Achiha Madara, pressuring the Kumogaka army, the formidable Reiki J and the weapon of war, the Eight Tails, and yet they were no match for Natsuo. It expresses the literal meaning that a person who can confront an entire nation, no, even if all the ninja villages combined, they could at most stop him, but there is a good chance that Natsuo can escape them. And such a powerful force belongs to us in Kanoha. The crowd immediately showed smiles with a glimmer of ambition in their eyes. As the largest nation in the ninja world, the Kanoha ninjas are quite frustrated, because in every great shinobi world war, several nations besiege Kanoha, weakening it, before internal conflicts break out, and they attack each other. This leads to Kanoha having to shed blood and maintain peace with other countries, by sacrificing countless ninjas and now to hell with peace. We now have experts as strong as Achiha Madara. We absolutely cannot leave regrets for our children. No, we can't be so optimistic. Jiraiya pondered for a moment and said, Don't forget that Mizukage Terumi Mei is one of the few female ninjas in the world who can withstand Natsuo's strength. In the past, I thought it was Natsuo's lack of ability to fully utilize the power of Achiha Madara's technique. But now it seems, look at the eight tails who was dragged away while being taken away. Look at the Reikage who wishes for death, and look at the marks on the ground left by the battle, where is it seen that Natsuo cannot fully use the power of the technique? Natsuo is so strong, and yet Terumi may manage to stop him. That means that Terumi Mei's strength is not inferior to Natsuo, and should not be underestimated. Jiraiya's words were like pouring a bucket of cold water over the excited minds of the Kanoha ninjas, which finally stabilize everyone's emotions, shaking them from their desire to unify the ninja world. Jiraiya nodded and then smiled as he said, But we won this battle, thanks to Natsuo. The Kumogaka army has been defeated, and there is no one left who can stop us. Brothers, it's time to attack. Upon hearing this, the other's eyes lit up. Yes, Jiraiya-sama. Natsuo didn't care about what Jiraiya was doing. He just dragged the eight tails and headed towards Kanoha. Although the eight tails was heavy, Susanoo could easily drag it away, and its movements were not slow at all. The tall figure gave the impression that Susanoo was slow, but in reality, it was extremely fast. In just a day, Natsuo forcefully dragged the eight tails to the gates of Kanoha. Fifth Hokage Tsunade, Hayuga clan leader Hiyashi. Nara clan leader Shikaku, and others who were passively drawn out, were all stunned by what they saw. Bang. Susanoo threw the eight tails at the gates of Kanoha. Hokage-sama, get me a dog leash. Natsuo said, it's better to tie this thing up with a dog leash. Tsunade, what the hell, tie it up with a dog leash. This is the eight tails, not a pet dog. However, despite what was said, Tsunade ultimately took out a pair of metal chains, and tightly bound the unconscious eight tails. These chains were made of chakra metal inscribed with special seals, capable of sealing the chakra of a tail beast. Although the tail beast can be freed from these chains easily. As long as Natsuo is in Kanoha, it is of no use to the Eight Tails to free himself from the chains. And then the entire Kanoha village knew about the incident where Natsuo captured the Eight Tails. As expected of Ichiha Madara's successor, Natsuo is truly strong. He was able to easily defeat the Eight Tails, so I think there shouldn't be any problems on the battlefield against Kumogaka. The residents of Kanoha were filled with excitement. It had been a long time since Kanoha had had such a shocking victory in a war. During the Third Hokage's era, although Kanoha was still the largest shinobi nation, they were constantly asked to compromise and make concessions. But Natsuo simply went and dominantly destroyed all the enemies. Furthermore, with the Eight Tails and the Rakage falling into Kanoha's hands, the outcome of the war against Kumogaka had already been determined. The lives of the Kanoha troops on the front lines against Kumogaka 
were now completely protected, and the residents of Kanoha no longer needed to worry about the safety of their loved ones there. Although the ninjas didn't say it, their eyes looking towards the Ichiha residents were filled with admiration and gratitude. Some ninja whose families were not on the battlefield against Kumogaka also had high hopes for Natsuo. They hoped that after recovering he would be able to resolve the other battlefronts and provide the same level of security to their families. For a time, public opinion in Kanoha was full of praise for Natsuo. Only 5th Hokage Tsune covered her forehead, wearing a helpless expression. After all, the Eight Tails is a strategic weapon and a political legacy that cannot be abandoned. But let's not talk about the fact that we are still in wartime. Just the fact that the Reikage and the Eight Tails are prisoners captured personally by Natsuo, the village cannot make decisions on its own. After all, Natsuo has proven to have the power to single-handedly defeat one of the great shinobi villages. Furthermore, the way he took revenge on the Reikage for the actions taken against his children has scared many people Tsune thought to herself. How can the village go against him at a time like this? Even if the Reikage is completely consumed by despair and regret considering himself a Kumogaka criminal. But without Natsuo speaking, it is clear that no one will give any release to the Reikage, who has aroused Natsuo's ire. Natsuo's exploits in destroying the Kumogaka camp, capturing the Eight Tails, and crippling the Reikage have shocked countless major clans in Kanoha. Is this guy really that strong? Hayuga Hiyashi swallowed his saliva silently, his eyes full of shock. The Hayuga clan's Bayakigan can perceive the chakra of others, and Natsuo naturally falls within its perception range. That intense aura and gigantic chakra are enough to make it difficult for anyone to face him. Even the strongest of the Hayuga, Hiyashi has no chance of winning. Hayega Hiyashi was originally too proud to take Natsuo seriously, which is why he didn't bother to see how strong he was. But after returning from the battlefield against Kumogaka what he saw made him scared, who could have imagined he would be so strong. Hayega Hiyashi sighed bitterly. If I had known he was this strong, why would I have said those things to him? Back then, when the Ichiha clan was declining, Natsuo offered a large sum of money to have a child, and there was actually a Hayuga woman who was tempted by it. However, Hiyashi stopped it and angrily scolded Natsuo for lacking the glory of the Ichiha clan, and willingly falling into decline, saying he was unworthy of being a ninja. But now what a load of nonsense. Your decline has turned into overpowering tailed beasts, and cutting down the rakage. If Natsuo still holds a grudge from back then Hayuga Hiyashi suddenly felt uneasy. But luckily Hayuga Hiyashi looked at Niji and showed a hint of relief. Niji, it seems that my old eyes are blind only you have enough insight to recognize a good teacher. Before Niji graduated, he was already hanging out with Natsuo, and after graduation, he didn't even meet the teacher assigned to him by Kanoha, and instead directly became Natsuo's disciple. This made many elders of the Hayuga clan furious. How could a child as talented as Niji be led astray by a mere Natsuo? At that time, Hiyashi was also quite dissatisfied, but because of the guilt he felt towards his younger brother, who sacrificed himself in his place, he finally decided to accept Niji's choice. And now it seems, I'm just a little luckier. Niji slightly lowered his head, his expression also somewhat complicated. When he first became a disciple of Natsuo, he knew that Natsuo was very strong, but he never thought he could be this strong now. He thought at most he would be at cage level, who knew he would end up being so powerful. But this is also good. Niji squinted his eyes with a hint of joy. His plan for the revival of the Hayuga clan will go more smoothly. By the way, clan leader, Niji suddenly spoke, although it may be a bit blunt to say this. I think Miss Hanata should try to get closer to the Ichiha clan. How about this? I will take on the role of Hanata's private tutor, and after school, I will bring Hanata to train with the Ichiha clan. I believe we can definitely improve the relationship between the Hayiga and Ichiha clans. Niji remembered that although Natsuo treated his wives as equals, there were always some people in this world who were more equal than others. When Niji first became Natsuo's disciple, once in a moment of frustration, he complained that Hanata lacked potential. But Natsuo mentioned that Hanata possessed a Byakugan of great purity, as well as one of the most powerful bloodlines of the Hayuga clan. And although he was not very sure about that, but for the future of the Hayuga clan, Niji thought it wouldn't hurt to push Hanata into the fire pit. However, Hayuga Hiyashi frowned. Isn't that Sasuke boy supposed to be arrogant and indifferent towards girls? Do you really think he could become friends with Hanata? Hayuga Hiyashi obviously misunderstood, thinking that Niji wanted to pair Sasuke with Hanata. After all, how old is Hanata now? She hasn't even graduated from the Ninja Academy yet. How could Hiyashi think that Niji wanted Hanata to start preparing to be Natsuo's wife from now on, just like Karen? After all he has seen the potential of Karen's bloodline, and according to what he heard from Natsuo, he would also value Hanata for the same reason. So Hiyashi was sure that Niji wanted Hanata to be Sasuke's training partner, and to slowly develop some feelings. Although Hiyashi heard that Sasuke, who was ranked first in the ninja school, had no interest in girls, and only thought that women only affect the speed at which he releases his ninjutsu like a true Iron Man. But maybe he can fall in love with his daughter with Niji's help. Although Hiyashi feels disappointed with Hinata, who has average talent, she is still his daughter. 
Hiyashi believes that if she can be protected by the Achiha clan, then when he chooses her sister as the clan's next successor, the Achiha clan will not allow her to be branded with the caged bird. Niji showed an almost imperceptible smile. Yes, this is the result he expected. And next, just as Niji expected, Hayuga Hiyashi says, Since that's the case, you will be Hinata's private tutor. I hope you can change Hinata's weak personality. Niji lowers his head barely able to hide the smile that appears on his lips. Yes, clan leader, not only the Hayuga, but other ninja clans are also surprised by the strength displayed by Natsuo and secretly panic. After all, when the Achiha clan declined, many ninja clans coveted the Achiha's assets and secretly made moves against their wealth. But in the end, it was easily overturned by Achiha Atachi. Of course, now everyone basically guesses that it wasn't Achiha Atachi who took action, but Achiha Natsuo himself. But the result hasn't changed. Their relationship with the Achiha is still unfriendly. They are even worse off than the Hayuga clan. Although they are not as formidable as Hiyashi in offending people, they don't have a connection like Niji does with the Achiha. Although there are some ninja clans, such as the Kurama clan, that have a great relationship with the Achiha, because Kurama Yakumo has married Natsuo. But most ninja clans can be considered to have a strained relationship with the Achiha clan at best. Among them, the Saratobi clan and the Shimura clan are the most panicked, followed by other ninja clans. In this state of panic, they quickly tried to suppress the Achiha clan, bringing up Orochimaru's attack on Konoha, where Achiha Natsuo stood motionless, watching as Sunagaka and Atogaka devastated the village. Don't be too happy, said the leaders of the Saratobi and Shimura clan. Natsuo is not a good person. He has inherited Achiha Madara's evil legacy, and intends to lead Konoha down the path of war. If it weren't for the current war situation, no ninja clan would want such a powerful ninja to exist in Konoha. Perhaps this clan's, fearful of Natsuo's retaliation, can really provoke a wave of opposition against the Achiha. Tsunade found this situation very difficult. Although she didn't believe that Natsuo would become a destructive force like Achiha Madara, she also didn't think he would be as dedicated to the village as the first Hokage. And the most crucial point is that the Achiha are indeed an unstable factor. Actor. Tsunade remembers very clearly that Senju Toborama, the second Hokage, once said that the Echiha are a naturally evil clan. This inherent evil doesn't mean that all Echiha are bad people or lack kindness. It means that they are too extreme. The Echiha have rich, deep and extreme emotions. When they really love someone, they are even willing to give up the entire world for that person. And once they lose that person, a unique and powerful energy emerges from their minds, and that energy is what allows the Sharingan to awaken. Of course, there are ordinary Echiha who are not extreme. But every person who awakens the Sharingan is an extremist. And those who awaken the Manjakyo Sharingan are even more extreme to the extreme. And once they become extreme, they are prone to going down the wrong path. It's one thing for ordinary people. But unfortunately, the more extreme the Achiha become, the stronger they become, and the more likely they are to cause great harm to society and the people. That's why the second Hokage considered the Achiha to be evil. Although Natsuo has not yet shown the extreme personality of Achiha Madara, who wanted to destroy Konoha, or Achiha Atachi, who destroyed his own clan. Or, from the current situation, the revival of Achiha, the growth of the Achiha clan, the birth of many Achiha children and protecting them as they grow up. This is Natsuo's extreme direction. Otherwise, how could a normal person have so many children like him? Until now, he has had almost a hundred children almost reaching the number of children during the heyday of the Achiha clan. Although this type of extremism is not necessarily good, it is much better than Itachi, who wiped out his own clan on a whim or Achiha Madara, who planned to destroy Konoha and killed his dear friend. But Tsunade also can't be careless. Although Natsuo may be an unstable factor in Konoha, but after the peace agreement with Kurigika is finished being signed, according to the agreement, I will marry Natsuo. Tsune took a deep breath, her expression serious. With me there, perhaps I can guide him and make him more stable, less extreme. Although Natsuo has many wives, each with their own charm and attractiveness. But as the heiress of the Senju clan and princess of the Land of Fire, Tsune believes that none of Natsuo's wives can compare to her. Tsune proudly straightened her chest and looked at herself in the mirror. Which woman can compare to me? Tsune snorted arrogantly, full of confidence. And it is said that when a man becomes a father, his character will mature all at once. After all, even the most extreme person person will soften when they see a cute baby, isn't that right, Hikari? Tsunade used her fingers to play with her daughter, showing a happy smile on her face. Daddy, daddy. Hikari spread her small hands and laughed. The fact that she still likes to call him daddy even now, really annoys Tsunade. Who taught her that word? She clearly taught her to call her mommy. Could it be? Did Natsuo secretly teach her while I was away? Tsunade pursed her lips, looked at the time, and felt that her daughter should be hungry. So she went to prepare the formula. However, when he returned, he found Hikari playing with a branch, moving it with her hand. Where did the branch come from? Was it blown by the wind? Tsunade found it strange, but didn't think too much about it. She reached out and took the branch away. This thing is not a toy for babies. It wouldn't be good if the child got hurt. 
However, what she didn't expect was that her curry suddenly pouted and made a couple of grunting sounds. Then he extended his small hand, a faint chakra surged, and a brand new branch, full of vitality, appeared in her hand. Sunaid's eyes widened. This is would release, my daughter really awakened the would release. This is would release without a doubt. Sunaid was almost in tears of joy. God knows how long the Senju clan had waited for another member of the clan to awaken that Keke Jenkai. The reason why her younger brother, Nawaki, was so valued was because he possessed the most concentrated lineage of the first Hokage, making him the most likely candidate to awaken the wood release. Unfortunately, Nawaki ultimately died under mysterious circumstances. Even though Orochimaru was nearby, he miraculously fell into the enemy's trap and only left behind a body without internal organs. And now finally, a member of the Senju clan has awakened the wood release. How could Tsunade not be overjoyed? And unlike Nawaki, Hikari is not even one year old yet, but she has awakened the wood release. This shows that she has great talent, even the first Hokage did not awaken the wood release so soon. Wood release is different from the Sharingan. Although it is also the most famous ninjutsu of the Senju clan, most members of the Senju clan only possess a strong physical body, and do not have any wood release abilities. Only the first Hokage had this Keke Jankai, and thanks to it, he was able to suppress the entire ninja world. And now Tsuned hesitated for a moment. Although someone with the wood release could make many people, and even some villagers, focus attention on her daughter. But after reflecting she still decided to announce this matter decisively. Almost instantly, the entire Kanoha erupted. The Saratobi clan, Hayiga clan, Ino Shikicho trio, all the clan heads rushed over, staring with wide eyes at the little baby playing with tree branches. An heir to Shodai Sama has appeared. This girl will become the future hope of Kanoha. Countless elders who were loyal to the first Hokage were immediately filled with enthusiasm. Although, due to recent special circumstances, the prestige of Lord First Hokage has slightly declined and the name of Uchiha Madara has become even more renowned. But in the eyes of the older generation, the first Hokage will always be the only one worthy of their loyalty, and all Kanoha ninjas should remember his great kindness. Other ninjas were also overjoyed, without any sense of hesitation, but instead relieved. Being able to awaken the wood release at such a young age with this level of talent, as long as she grows, we will no longer have to fear the Uchiha clan. This situation somewhat calmed the fears of many ninjas. Although Natsuo's behavior seemed normal, his extremism was only evident in his insistence on reviving Uchiha. But how many years has it been since Uchiha Madara's death? There are still many people who remember the terror of Uchiha Madara, nor have they forgotten Uchiha Madara's uncompromising attitude. Although Natsuo did not show too much hostility, he still showed that he was not so tolerant when he killed a member of the Shimura clan in front of the Hokage, or when he retaliated against Kumogaka after the attempted kidnapping of his children. But which clan leader wouldn't worry about him becoming the second Uchiha Madara? Someone no one can contend with. No, it would be even more tragic than when Uchiha Madara was in Kanoha. Because unlike then, Kanoha no longer has a first Hokage to balance Uchiha Madara. But now that a member of the Senju clan who has awakened the wood release at such a young age has appeared, how could they not feel relieved? Even Nara Shikaki couldn't help but subtly complain to Tsunade. Tsunade Sama, what were you thinking? How could you casually expose the fact that Hikari can use wood release? What if someone with ill intentions targets her? Well, those ill intention people are not external forces of the village but rather refer specifically to Natsuo. In his eyes, there is a possibility that Natsuo might harm Hikari. After all, if she died before she grew up, then there would be no one to balance his power in the world. However, Tsune was left speechless, as she thought. Natsuo harming Hikari. With his obsession with his children, I doubt he would do anything to his own daughter. But looking at the genuine concern of the ninjas present, she could only choose to announce in advance. I will marry Ichiha Natsuo soon. Plus Hikari is actually the result of the union between Natsuo and me during my travels. However, many did not believe these words. What kind of reputation did Natsuo have back then? What kind of status and strength did Tsunade have back then? Even Jiraiya, who had pursued her for many years, was completely ignored by her. Would a woman like her really care about someone like Natsuo? Not to mention that even if Natsuo were to reveal his current strength, Tsunade might not agree. Everyone unanimously believed that Tsunade-sama must be worried that Natsuo would harm Hikari. So she sacrificed herself and married him in exchange for him not harming Hikari. Side Tsunade Sama sacrificed too much for Hikari. Tsunade, why don't you listen to what I tell you? But she couldn't bring herself to say that she and Natsuo had gotten together by accident because of her medicine resulting in Hikari. She could only repeatedly say, Natsuo is handsome and considerate. Although he's a bit too loving he treats women well. He pursued me for a long time before I reluctantly agreed to be with him. Well, she could only make up a story that distorts the facts. When Natsuo heard this news, he was dumbfounded. Could it be that the so-called chase referred to the story of him and Amayori chasing her every day seeking treatment for Amayori? However, what Natsuo didn't expect was that not only the high-level officials of Kanoha didn't believe Tsunade's words, but also many of Natsuo's wives didn't believe her either. Yukino, Gurin, and Yuzumaki Yoko were women with their Uchiha clan, always comes first mentality. They even hinted in various ways, saying, Natsuo, take action when necessary. Don't wait for the enemy to grow stronger. 
That would be troublesome. Even Karen stepped forward and said, Natsuo-sama, if you are unable to take action, why not let me do it for you? Anyway, I'm not an Achiha by blood. Even if I make a mistake, it won't affect the Achiha clan. Although this mission is very dangerous, once executed, I will definitely become a missing nin, and may even be killed on the spot. But for you, I'm willing to do anything. Then came the crazy implication. Natsuo-sama, I am certainly willing to sacrifice myself. But can you accept me before you leave as an act of farewell? Although I'm still young, I believe that the physical qualities of the Yuzumaki clan can already withstand some hardships. Natsuo sometimes wondered if it was right that he decided to train Karen as his future wife. The degree of obsession he showed in the Naruto series didn't seem so creepy until he experienced it himself. In the end he had to bring out Karen, the stalker, to explain to his wives that Hikari was actually his daughter, but that due to the circumstances of how she was conceived, she had been raised by Tsunade. However, that Hikari would awaken the wood release so soon surprised Natsuo. He didn't think the special connection he had formed with her would strengthen her so quickly. Hikari wasn't even a year old, and hadn't received any chakra training, but she could already use the wood release. Although she could only produce a small twig, it was still wood release. Truly, the fact that she is so far his child with the highest potential evaluation is not in vain. As for Hikari awakening the wood release apart from the initial surprise Natsuo, didn't pay much attention to it, although Tsune thought it was all due to her lineage from the Senja clan. In reality, Natsuo knew that it was mainly because he had strengthened his bloodline quite a bit with the rewards of the system. This added to the special connection he recently formed with Hikari. It would be strange if Hikari did not awaken the wood release, and I even hoped that he would awaken some special abilities like his other children. The only thing he did not expect is that she would do it so soon. And although Ran, Natsuo's eldest son, who is only five years old, has not shown a talent as strong as Hikari's, but the talents that he and his brothers are awakening are amazing. As Natsuo continues to form that special connection that passively strengthens his children, when his children grow up, they will probably surprise the entire world. And at the same time Kumogaka suffered a devastating defeat. The news of Natsuo defeating the Reikage and capturing the Eight Tails has already spread throughout the ninja world. Upon hearing this news, the leaders of all the ninja villages were taken aback. This is just like the Achehamadara of the past, especially for Kumogaka. The morale of the Kumo Shinobi, who were originally very high-spirited, was almost completely shattered by this defeat. Naya Yujito the Jinchuriki of the Two Tails, had no choice but to step forward and lead the remaining village forces to block Jiraiya's attack. In front of Jiraiya, Naya Yujito, who were also perfect Jinchuriki, could only retreat step by step. In this great war, Kumogaka no longer had the qualifications to participate. While Naya Yujito resisted Jiraiya's attack and bought time, she also sent representatives to Konoha at lightning speed hoping to sign a peace agreement. It's not a big deal to pay some compensation, but at least they wanted to redeem Killer B and the Rakage. Wagaka, on the other hand, was also in a difficult situation. Because Konoha had a manpower shortage, they had not been able to send many ninjas to resist Awagaka's large army. This made the Awagaka forces led by Anoki feel like they were in an empty land, continuously attacking and capturing territories, with an offensive drive no less ferocious than that of Kumogaka. But as soon as the news of Kumogaka's defeat came, the Iowa Shinobi were stunned. Damn, Ichiha Natsuo is actually this strong. No wonder Tsuchikich Sama has always been worried about the power of the Ichiha clan. It turns out it's really terrifying. What the hell are we going to do? What if Natsuo comes over to attack us? What should we do? Although Awagaka does not have such prominent shinobi, they still have the Four Tails Jinchuriki, Roshi, the Five Tails Jinchuriki, Han and Tsuchiki Janoki who are in the front line. This alignment is as strong as Kumogaka's ab combination. However, they don't think they can stop Natsuo. Suddenly, everyone panicked, and morale plummeted. But at this moment, Anoki stood up. There is nothing to fear from Uchiha Natsuo. Anoki yelled angrily. No matter how strong he is, he's just a person. There's no way he wouldn't have been hurt after defeating Kumogaka. Also, even if he wasn't hurt, can his technique resist my dust release? What's there to be afraid of? Suchikij, who was anxious and worried about Uchiha's power before the battle, now stood up like a pillar. With his not sobered shoulders, he carried fearless courage. His inspiring words reassured the Iwa Shinobi. Fear and courage are sometimes not contradictory words. For the sake of the village, let alone Natsuo, even if Achiha Madara were in front of him, Anoki would dare to fight with all his might. But courage is courage, and Anoki also recognizes reality. Under his leadership, Awagaka's offensive instantly slowed down, and they began to build defensive fortifications like Sunagaka. However, they still did not choose to surrender to Konoha. As one of the five great shinobi villages, Awagaka could not afford to lose its prestige like that. On the other hand, the ninjas of Sunagaka were somewhat panicked. Although it was already an undisputed fact that the fourth Kazakiage was the strongest Kazakiage, being the strongest Kazakiage does not mean being the strongest ninja. Whether or not Rasa can withstand Natsuo is really worrying, but Rasa remained as calm as ever. What are you afraid of? He shouted sternly, don't talk about Natsuo not showing up yet even if he does. I'll handle it. Everything remains the same. Continue with the construction. Rasa thought. Panicked. What's the use of panicking? Anyway, when Natsuo comes, 
I will immediately send my own daughter to ensure the safety of Sunagika in this battle. I don't intend to fight to the death with Kanoha. I just want to gain some advantages. Relying on the well-built fortifications, Rasa felt that as long as Natsuo didn't make a move, Sunagika could at least ensure a decent retreat even if they couldn't take a piece of Kanoha's meat. Actually, with a few surprise attacks, Sunagika achieved quite good results at a small cost, and gained a considerable amount of resources. Although these resources may not mean much to the wealthy village of Kanoha, in the eyes of poor Sunagika, they were already worth fighting for in a ninja war. Listening to Rasa's words, the Suna Shinobi settled down one after another. Then they looked at Rasa with admiration in their eyes. Truly worthy of the Kazakij. That's right. So what if Natsuo comes? Maybe the Kazakij will capture him directly and establish himself as the strongest in the ninja world. Yes. Although I can summon a chakra giant, the Kazakij's golden sand can't bury it. That's right. That's how it is. They then began to discuss how Rasa would use his sand gold to defeat Natsuo once he arrived. Rasa. But there is no way. Thanks to Rasa's wise leadership, Sunagika has achieved great results with minimal sacrifices, which is an unprecedented victory in Sunagika's history. Such a leader naturally receives the greatest admiration from the ninjas. Even though Rasa has explained it several times, people continue to come up with theories of how Rasa would defeat Natsuo, which angers Rasa. So the only thing he could do was go see Tamari. After all, his own safety and that of Sunagika depends on her. Other Suna Shinobi, seeing this, look at Rasa with eyes full of admiration. As expected of the Kazakij, he is not afraid even after hearing Natsuo's achievements. This is the fearless heart of a strong person, right? Komahagika, residents of the Ichiha clan. Natsuo looks at the timid little girl in front of him and scratches his head. So, Niji, you just brought her in like this. Niji calmly nods. Yes, Natsuo-sama. This is the order of a Haiga clan leader. Hiyashi-sama. Did he lose his mind or something? Natsuo thinks to himself, then turns to look at the little girl in front of him. Hinata has dark blue hair with two long strands on the sides, framing her face in straight bangs white skin, and maintains a constant shy expression. Meanwhile, Hanata also looks at Natsuo with her white eyes typical of the Hayuga clan, revealing shyness, fear and joy. I finally see you again, hello Hanata. Natsuo smiled. Long time no see. Yes, it's been a while. Hanata's voice was very soft and low. Then they fell into silence. Natsuo scratched his head a bit. Although the people of Kanoha regarded him as a womanizer, he felt a little uncomfortable when faced with a small and shy girl like Hanata. Even more so when he knew the intentions why Niji had brought her here. She tried to find things to talk about to try to improve her self-confidence. But basically, it was him asking a question and Hanata answering. This girl was too shy and couldn't speak fluently. Hanata's personality in the Naruto series may seem cute and obedient. But when you meet her in person, you realize how uncomfortable it is to interact with a person like that. Natsuo also worried that he might accidentally say something inappropriate and scare Hanata. So after dealing with it for a while, he told Hanata to go to the training ground first. Hanata nodded obediently, then turned her head and headed towards the training ground. After turning her head, a hint of sadness flickered in her eyes as she lamented in her mind. I'm so useless after Hanata left, Natsuo felt much more relaxed. He looked at Niji and asked, How did you manage to bring Hanata over? It was the clan leader who personally asked me to bring her. Niji smirked. I hinted that we could get closer to the Achiha clan, if I brought Hanata to train in the Achiha clan, and he willingly asked me to bring her. He even ordered Hanata to get closer to Sasuke. Well, it is not surprising that there is a misunderstanding, and Hiyashi's reaction is also understandable, although Hiyashi deep down cares about Hanata. As the leader of the clan he also values practicality. Hinata's talent is average, although compared to the other ninjas, she is not considered bad. But compared to Niji, one of the most talented of the Hayuga clan, it is not surprising that Hiyashi is dissatisfied with Hinata. It is not strange that he made this decision. Well, then teach Hinata well. Natsuo thought for a moment and said, Maybe you can hint to Hinata about the existence of a method to free herself from the caged bird. Maybe you can win her support. Hinata is the eldest daughter. Although she has not been designated as the heir by Hiyashi due to her talent issues, in the eyes of many traditional Hayuga elders, Hinata is the heir. If he can gain the support of the main family's heir, it would be very convenient for Niji. However, Niji frowned. Hinting to her about the method to free herself from the caged bird is one thing, but will Hinata support it? He will. Hinata and Hanabi have a good relationship. Natsuo smiled and said, she wouldn't want to see her sister marked with the caged bird. The reason why Hanata is considered to have insufficient talent and has been completely abandoned by Hiyashi is because in a battle, she lost to Hanabi, who is six years younger than her. However, the reason why Hanata lost is not because she couldn't defeat the little Hanabi, but because she couldn't bring herself to harm her younger sister and showed mercy. The sisterly bond between the two may become a help for Niji. Upon hearing this, Niji's eyes droop slightly. Hanabi does Natsuo-sama even know about Hanabi? Hanabi is still so young. She hasn't even started ninja school yet. She is about the same age as the oldest child of Natsuo. But Natsuo knows very well about the relationship between her and Hanata. Could it be that Natsuo not only has eyes for Hanata, 
but also for Hanabi. Niji's heart shook, and his eyes showed a look of shock. This is really beyond his expectations, but thinking about how Natsua could be interested in Hanata, it's also normal for him to be interested in the younger Hanabi. Yes, Natsuo-sama. Niji nodded and secretly kept this matter in mind. Niji now that he knows of the bond that Hanata and Hanabi share, he thought of bringing Hanabi here with the reason of since I'm teaching Hanata, I might as well teach Hanabi too, which seems easy enough to do. If Natsuo really knew what Niji was thinking, he would probably be speechless. He admits that he is curious about Hanata and Hanabi, but it is because they appear as characters in the Boruto series, in addition to the fact that both sisters have one of the purest bloodlines of the Hayaga clan. Well he also can't deny that the greatest interest is because they become very beautiful in the future. But being interested doesn't mean he wants to add them to his harem, much less right now when they're still little girls. How old is Hanabi now? Hanata and Sasuke haven't even graduated yet. He wouldn't go so far as to torment such a young girl not just Hanata. Natsuo is not really interested in the group of girls who appear in the Naruto series alongside Sasuke and Naruto. Hinata may be an exception as she is treated as a main female character and carries the burden of the Hyuga clan. Although Sakura is not physically attractive as the only woman who can keep up with the main group, her talent is at the level of a cage. But without her, Sasuke may never find a partner. Ino has an average talent apart from being beautiful. There is nothing remarkable in terms of lineage. As for Tenten, well she has a lot of money. Anyway, Natsuo will just let things happen naturally. Because by the time Hanata is older, he will possibly already be the strongest in the world. But for now, it is even more reliable to have offspring with the other women of the Hyuga clan. Niji, how is your prestige within the Hyuga clan now? Natsuo thought for a moment and asked. It's alright. Being a genius of the Hyuga clan, the branch house respects me. Niji pondered for a moment and said. But being a genius is just being a genius. There are still several ninjas whose strength surpasses mine. In terms of prestige, I still have some room for improvement. Niji is too young. Although he is a 12-year-old jonin, he is already on the same level as Kakashi back then. But even Kakashi, who advanced through strength and achievements, couldn't receive the normal treatment of a jonin. He could only carry out missions with Minato, instead of leading his own team. Not to mention Niji. Everyone has high hopes for his future. But it's just hopes for his future. He still has a long way to go before reaching the level of leading the branch family to overthrow the main family. Now there happens to be something that can conveniently enhance your prestige. Natsuo's mouth called up. And not only the branch house, even the main family will be grateful to you. Hum. Niji raised his head curiously. This time, Natsuo's reputation soared. His legendary achievements directly made him the strongest ninja recognized in the entire ninja world. He is young, and everyone even believes that he may surpass a Chermadara. Rumors have even spread about Natsuo's extreme obsession with his family. Many Kinochi and Kanova suddenly put aside their reservations, and wanted to marry into the Ichiha clan. This is the benefit of fame. Originally, Natsuo was at most just an ordinary jonin. Although he had the wealth of the Ichiha clan, there were many Kinochi and Kanoha who despised him even though they were tempted by his appearance. They were envious of the treatment that the women of the Ichiha clan received, but their inner pride prevented them from accepting the idea of sharing a husband with other women. They even made fun of the Kunochi who married Natsuo. Since only ordinary women married men with multiple wives, they considered themselves independent and truly strong women. However, as Natsuo's strength began to reveal itself, many Kunochi changed their minds, which caused the Ichiha clan to continue raising its standards, and explicitly stating that only elite jonin level Kunochi would be accepted, due to this countless Kunochi lost hope of joining the Ichiha clan. Although the ninja world seems to have elements of the modern world, in essence it is still a feudal world, so few women can hope to have a happy or love marriage. And now that Natsuo has proven to have great power, in addition to giving his wives absolute freedom and respect, many Kinochi strive and train, hoping to have a chance to marry into the Ichiha clan. Furthermore, considering the current influence of the Ichiha clan, many of the clan leaders have relaxed their restrictions on their female members. Even now they actively encourage them to marry into the Ichiha clan hoping to benefit from the Ichiha's prosperity. As a result, the Ichiha clan's highly paid mission to have children has become popular once again. However, due to Haiga Hiyashi's pride, in addition to Niji's relationship with Natsuo, as well as the fact that Sasuke may get close to Hinata, the Haiga clan continues to restrict its female members from marrying outside the clan. The leaders of the shinobi clans of Kinoha sent many Kinochi to join the extended family of the Ichiha clan. After all, no one knows if Natsuo, who possesses the strongest combat power, will suddenly do something to Kinoha. Marrying Natsuo is a guarantee of family security. However, besides Natsuo, there is still one person in the ninja world who has also gained enormous prestige. Fifth Mizukage Turumi Mei. Previously, Turumi Mei blocked Natsuo's advancement. Although initially everyone expressed their doubts and stated that Natsuo may have the same technique as Ichiha Madara. But there must be a problem. 
because he cannot be as strong as him. Except for Kurigika, who believes that Tarumi Mei is the strongest Mizukage, other ninja villagers were disdainful of the fact that she managed to retain Natsuo. But now, after Natsuo defeated Kumogaka, everyone changed their minds instantly. The strongest Mizukage, the number one Kinuchi in the Shinobi world. Maybe in the future I can defeat the Chiha Natsuo. One after another, various honors were bestowed upon Tarumi Mei. After all, she is a strong contender on par with Natsuo. Who would dare disrespect her? In any case, Tsuchiki Janoki and Kumogaka, represented by Nai Yujito, sent representatives, in an attempt to keep Kurigika in the war, since they were counting on Tarumi Mei to confront Ichiha Natsuo. Not just the two of them, even Kanoha, gave great importance to this expert who is currently the only one in the shinobi world who can stop Natsuo. Although it was clear that Kurigika's representatives were here to seek peace, the respect shown by Kanoha made it seem like they were here to sign an equal ceasefire treaty. Tsunade was also very wary of Tarumi Mei's strength. She believed that Natsuo's power relied heavily on the support of his Manjekyo Sharingan. But according to the records left by his second grandfather, the power of the Manjekyo Sharingan would eventually run out. On the other hand, Tarumi Mei's ninjutsu depended solely on her chakra, which could be replenished. Therefore, Tsunade did not dare to put too much pressure on Tarumi Mei, fearing that Kurigika would continue fighting in anger, and then exhaust the power of Natsuo's Manjekyo Sharingan. Both sides genuinely wanted a ceasefire, and their communication naturally became harmonious. Although there were no smiles or laughter at the negotiation table, the atmosphere was incredibly relaxed. Until suddenly, Niji, with a cold expression, stood up and applied to join the negotiation. With just one sentence, the atmosphere became tense. Now that you admit defeat, shouldn't you return the Byakugan stolen from my Hyuga clan by Kurigika? Since you admit defeat, shouldn't you return the Byakugan, which Kurigika stole from a Hyuga clan? This sentence instantly froze the smiles on the negotiators' faces. While frowning, Ao turned his gaze towards Niji, narrowing his eyes slightly, and giving off a slight pressure. Niji, on the other hand, met his gaze without backing down, his pure white eyes filled with determination. The atmosphere became incredibly tense, and even Nara Shikaku, who was responsible for negotiating on behalf of Kanoha, couldn't find anything to say in response. He could only glare at Niji with anger in his eyes. Are the Hyoga clan trying to influence the negotiations between the two countries? Can you afford the responsibility of delaying the ceasefire between the two sides? Al took a deep breath and said, This Hyuga ninja I remember your name is Niji, right? Are you speaking on behalf of Kanoha or the Hyuga clan? His voice was calm, but it made Shikaku struggle to answer. If he answered on behalf of Kanoha, the negotiations would likely break down. But if he answered on behalf of the Hyuga clan, it would expose their own shortcomings to the other side. Neither option was a good outcome. However, Niji smiled and said, No, this is not the villager's intention, nor is it the Hyuga clan's intention. It is my own intention. Your own intention. Both the Kanoha and Kurigika delegation were stunned. They had thought that the Hyuga clan was unwilling to lose the Byakugan, so they specifically sent someone like Niji to cause trouble. That's right, it's my own intention, Niji proudly stared at Ao. Pausing as he directed his gaze towards Ao's covered eye, he then continued. The Byakugan belongs to Kanoha, and also belongs to the Hyuga clan. This is a Kanoha-only Dejutsu, and should not fall into the hands of Kurigika. He calmly looked at Ao, then at the dumbfounded Kanoha negotiators, and said lightly, My teacher, Ichiha Natsuo, also supports my idea. He told me, As descendants of a ninja clan, we have the responsibility and obligation to claim the characteristic Keke Genkai organs of our clan. He did the same back then, and now he supports me doing the same. When Ichiha Natsuo attacked Danzo, it was for this reason. And now, Niji is adopting an I'm his student attitude, and no one can say anything. After all, if the war continues, the one who will stop Tarumi may will be Natsuo himself. If even Natsuo supports Niji, who else has the right to speak? The Kurigika ninjas felt their hearts tighten upon hearing this. They could ignore other things, but they couldn't ignore Natsuo's words. Don't forget, the reason they came to seek peace is because Natsuo's actions forced them to do so. Ao and Niji stared at each other for a long time, the atmosphere in the room feeling very tense. Niji stared directly at him without backing down, although he didn't activate his Byakugan or release any chakra. But even so, the Kurigika envoys felt that an immense pressure fell on them, because this is a message from the strongest person in the ninja world. Who dares to take it lightly? In the end, Al took a deep breath. I understand that the Byakugan indeed belongs to the Hyuga clan. Young man, you have won. Al finally backed down. He had to back down, because Kurigika couldn't completely stop Natsuo, and if the war continued, Natsuo would end up bringing the war to the land of water. This was a burden they couldn't bear of course, Al was not easy to deal with. Although he backed away, he directly took out the Byakugan in front of countless people, and then crushed it with his hand. The destruction of the eyeball plunged the conference room into an uncomfortable atmosphere. But Niji smiled instead. Whether the Byakugan was destroyed or not was not important. What was important was that there would be no more Byakugan in the hands of outsiders. Of course, this was not important to himself either. 
What was truly important was the sudden increase in his prestige after this incident. Before today, no one thought that the Byakugan in Kurigika's hands could be recovered. The Byakugan, known as one of the three great Dejutsu, had great strategic value. Without the Byakugan, Kurigika could not have discovered that the fourth Mizukage was being controlled by a Jinjutsu. Don't even mention Konoha, even the Hayuga clan has given up on getting the Byakugan back. When Kurigika was weakened after the cage change, Al, the holder of the Byakugan, personally came to Konoha to cooperate, and even the third Hokage did not dare to demand that he return the Byakugan. Now, the fifth Mizukage is known as the strongest Kinochi in the Shinobi world, and her reputation surpasses even Tsunade. Even if Tsunade is stronger than the third Hokage, how can she demand the Byakugan back? However, Niji actually pulled it off. This has great significance for the Hayuga clan. On that day, the entire Hayuga clan celebrated both the main family and the branch family, raising their cups in high spirits. Hiyashi, in particular, completely changed his previous strict personality. Spending a large amount of money to hold a banquet, smiling throughout the entire event, completely different from before. During the event, he kept praising Niji, saying, Niji, well done. If your father could see you now, he would definitely be very proud of you. The elders of the main family also had smiles on their faces, saying, Niji, well done, you haven't disgraced our Hayuga clan. Niji, with a smile on his face, humbly said, The loss by Akigan, it is a regret for the Hayuga clan, and both the main family and the branch family, have the responsibility and obligation to reclaim it. Although I'm young, I understand this principle. Well said. The entire Hayuga clan cheered. The loss of the Byakugan is a great regret for both the main family and the branch family. During the negotiations, Niji showed an extremely firm attitude, although everyone knows that the granting of Kurigako is due to Natsuo's reputation. But that doesn't prevent them from recognizing Niji. But Niji's mouth curled up, revealing a very subtle smile. Although Niji's actions were bold, Kurigako had no ability to refuse. After all, what is the true situation of the so-called strongest Kinochi in the shinobi world? Others may not know, but can Natsuo not know? But in the eyes of the outside world, Niji's steadfast attitude demonstrated his loyalty to the Hayuga clan, as well as his firm determination to defend the clan's honor. For every member of the Hayuga clan, this is a cause for celebration. With this achievement, the way they look at me has really changed. They no longer underestimate me because of my age. Niji's eyes glance over the surrounding Hayuga ninjas. Even the third Hokage didn't dare to demand the Byakugan from the Kiri ninjas. But I, Niji, dare. Hayega Hiyashi cannot show his attitude in front of the Kiri ninjas. But I, Niji, can. Just with these words, it is enough to establish his prestige and make the members of the Hayuga clan completely regard Niji as a leader even though he is only 12 years old this year. Next is strength my strength is still lacking. Within a year, I must become an elite jonin who can defeat Hiyashi. Not only my own strength, there are also many shinobi in the family branch who can lend me their strength. Natsuo-sama can help unlock the caged bird, especially those high-level skilled shinobi who have children. They definitely won't want their children to become caged birds as well. That wasn't the case with Hizashi. If it weren't for Niji, how could he have developed murderous intent towards his niece Hinata, thus provoking Hiyashi's punishment? He was a man who was willing to sacrifice his life for his brother Hiyashi. During this celebration Niji has already begun to search for suitable candidates discreetly. Now that he is in the spotlight he has enough influence, so with a proper reason, he can get the high-ranking members of the Hayuga clan to accompany him on a trip. Of course, the candidates still need to be carefully selected. The Hayuga clan's indoctrination education, although it has caused resentment among ninjas like Niji, there are also those who have truly been indoctrinated and willingly act as lapdogs for the main family. Even my own actions must be careful. Niji thought to himself, Natsuo-sama is not the kind of person who would proactively help me solve the Hayuga clan's problem. If I mess up, he might not lend a hand well. It's not impossible to get him to help. Should I first kidnap Hanabi? After a few more days of negotiations, Kurigika finally signed a peace treaty with Konoha. Honestly, this treaty is not harsh at all, and is even full of preferential treatment. Not only does Konoha refrain from interfering in Kurigika's diplomacy, but they also establish trade routes, form an alliance, without demanding compensation, due to the destruction during the war. If it weren't for Natsuo killing many Kurigika shinobi, causing significant losses to his forces. Perhaps this defeat of Kurigika is not a loss for them, but on the contrary they would have gained. Of course, the mood of the Kurigika delegation is not good. After all, their leader, Al, lost an eye due to Niji demanding it in an almost threatening manner, making it difficult for them to be happy. Al, who noticed the group's feelings, said seriously, Please don't make such expressions. Don't forget, the treaty we ultimately signed is so preferential. This is a completely equal treaty. It even benefits our side. With such a good result, what does it matter if I sacrifice an eye? Al said with his voice full of pride. We have not disappointed Mizukich-sama's expectations. Wait! When Mizukich-sama grows stronger and reaches a point where she can defeat that Achiha Natsuo, what can't we reclaim? Upon hearing these words, everyone gradually became spirited. They strayed in their backs and lifted their heads high. That's right, we still have Mizukich-sama. This time it was because we didn't know Natsuo's technique, and we didn't know a way to counter it. But when we gather more information next time, 
Ichiha Natsuo might not be an opponent for the Mizukage Sama. What do you mean might not? Mizukage Sama will definitely defeat Ichiha Natsuo. That's right. Mizukage Sama is the strongest in the Shinobi world. They all cheered and regained their spirits. Their gaze became resolute again, filled with hope. Niji, who was watching the Karigaka group leave, was left speechless. Looking at the Kiri ninjas regaining their momentum, Niji's mouth twitched, wanting to make a sarcastic comment. What would your expressions be if you knew how your Mizukage Sama held back the evil enemy, Natsuo? He really wants to see it. He was wondering if there might be a chance. Thinking about that Niji looked up and looked in Sunagaka's direction. So, Natsuo-sama is going to the battlefield against Sunagaka now. And Rasa seems to be the strongest Kazakiage who was raised by Natsuo-sama. He still remembered Natsuo's words when he left. I'm going to the front line against Sunagaka to pick up my wife. Niji continued to reflect. If the Suna ninjas obediently bowed their heads, it would be fine. But if they developed the same strange confidence as the Kiri ninjas, and attacked Natsuo-sama Niji's expression was strange. Suddenly he wanted to see the spectacle that would unfold on the front against Sunagaka. But nothing interesting should happen. Niji thought. Natsuo-sama wiped out the entire Kumogaka ninja force. Even if the Suna shinobi are confident, they shouldn't be so exaggerated. Meanwhile, on the front line, lines against Sunagaka Natsuo. You've finally come to die. Today is the day of your death. Our Kazakiage will let you see what true strength is. All the forces of Sunagaka are here, and the enemy is only one person. An army against one person, the advantage is ours. Kazakiage sama today is the day you become famous. The Suna Shinobi were extremely excited, holding their kunai and eagerly looking at Natsuo standing alone in the distance. If it weren't for the lack of orders from their superiors, they would have already rushed over. Everyone was extremely excited, looking forward to the moment when the title of strongest shinobi would fall on their Kazakiage's head. No one noticed the despair in Rasa's eyes. Enough. Stop talking, all of you. Rasa felt like crying as he roared in his mind. You all want to kill me with your words Natsuo came to the front line against Sunagaka alone, and did not bring any Kanova ninja. He came for two reasons, to bring his wife back home, and to deal with Tsune's little plan. Although she agreed to have his children, she insisted on having a grand wedding before entering the Ichiha clan. This was a reasonable request, as Natsuo had held weddings for all of his other wives. There was no reason for things to change when it came to Tsunade. However, she made it clear that as fifth Hokage, she had to lead by example. With all of Kanoha's shinobi fighting on the front lines, she couldn't justify the extravagance of a wedding. But without a wedding, she refused to accept Natsuo. In other words, she was forcing Natsuo to help her end the current shinobi world war as soon as possible. Although the fourth shinobi world war had been relatively short, the casualties were not insignificant. Especially for Kumogaka, the losses suffered during this war were severe, and needed to be recovered urgently. Tsunade was worried about Natsuo's eyes, so she concluded the negotiations with Kurigiko as soon as possible, and she also worried about the safety of the Kanoha ninjas. As a doctor, Tsunade always had a compassionate heart. Although Tsunade played some tricks, she was able to convince Natsuo to help her once, just one more time. She had to solve the Awagaka problem herself, and she couldn't find any more excuses to ask Natsuo for help. Naturally, Tsunade agreed to this. After all, Kumogaka had been completely defeated, and Jiraiya could mobilize to take charge of the battle line against Awagaka. So, on one hand, Natsuo Natsuo came to pick up his new wife, and on the other hand, he was helping Tsunade. Natsuo arrived alone at the battlefield against Sunagaka, thinking that since he had already established communication with Rasa, and that he would just have to come to take Tamari away. But who would have thought little Natsuo, why don't you come down and die? Natsuo, you are nothing. Today is the time when the name of Sunagaka resonates throughout the shinobi world. Long live Kazakij sama The Suna shinobi were full of fighting spirit, their faces determined. Their eyes were filled with reverence and trust towards their Kazakij. As he listened to the Suna shinobi scream, Rasa was on the verge of tears. Rasa was very aware of the delicate situation he found himself in. The reason why he seemed confident before was because he had already planned to bow his head and seek peace when Natsu arrived. He really didn't want to fight with him. Cough, cough, don't be overconfident. I still can't defeat Ichiha Natsuo. At the same time Rasa complained in his mind. That's right. I can't defeat Ichiha Natsuo. So don't have strange expectations. However, upon hearing this, the Suna Shinobi's eyes lit up. Now we understand. Rasa was taken aback upon hearing what the Suna Shinobi was saying. Then he began to scold them in his mind. What the hell do you understand now? Kazakij sama just acknowledged that he couldn't face Natsuo directly, so he had already prepared traps against him, right? Many Suna Shinobi became excited upon hearing this. That must be. It is impossible to directly confront the giant summoned by Natsuo. But Shinobi are not samurai who need to fight head on. This battle will be a clash of wits, and Kazakij sama has already taken the lead. Many Suna Shinobi, including Baki, looked at the fourth Kazakij Rasa with an expression of admiration. Lord Kazakij, with your deep foresight, 
You must have already anticipated the current situation, right? Although Natsuo is recognized as the strongest in the shinobi world, Kazuki Ijsama must have prepared many powerful means to deal with him from the beginning, right? Kazuki Ijsama, now is the time to show your wisdom. Rasa. Hearing the voices of Asuna Shinobi on the other side, Natsuo's expression was a little strange. Although Natsuo had long heard about the rumors that Rasa was the strongest Kazuki Ij, but he really didn't expect that all the Asuna Shinobi had become like this, everyone has transformed. It's terrifying Rasa's mouth twitched, and for a while, he couldn't say anything. He could only scream in his mind. What a fucking battle of wits. At what point did you see me setting traps on the battlefield? My genius is to hire a bunch of teachers for my daughter in order to make her the best wife possible. Maybe she ends up cajoling Natsuo so much that he ends up coming to Sunagaka. This is my wisdom. But even if Rasa is shameless, he can't say such things to his subordinates. And although it is somewhat embarrassing, because he is now the strongest Kazuki Ij, all of Sunagaka operates according to his orders, and that gives him a feeling of accomplishment. Plus every Suna Shinobi now looks at him with admiration. He really can't help himself. Even if he is forcing the situation, he wants to force it a little more. Rasa uses the same gold to rise into the air, while looking at Natsuo with a hint of arrogance in his expression. Natsuo, long time no see. Yeah, long time no see. Natsuo's expression is strange. You've changed a lot, after all. I carry the hopes of the entire village. Rasa's voice is strong. Naturally, there should be some changes. This hope of the entire village almost made Natsuo burst into laughter. But the Suna Shinobi give him a lot of respect and cheer loudly. That's right. Rasa-sama, you are a hope. You are the light of Sanagika. The future of Sanagika is in your hands. Rasa-sama, please make sure to win. Rasa's mouth twitches, and the sand under his feet quickly flies towards the distance. Let's go, Natsuo. This is not the place for a battle. His expression becomes solemn, and he says in a deep voice, I don't want to see the bloodshed of my Sunagaka companions, come on. You and I will solve the problems between Kanoha and Sunagaka in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Let's have a conversation between men. Natsuo more or less understands Rasa's plan, so he nods and then follows him. Rasa felt a sense of relief seeing Natsuo following him, then shouted at the Suna Shinobi. Listen to my command, everyone stay in place. Listen carefully, no one is allowed to get close. Once the battle starts you could end up dying from the after effects. It is absolutely, absolutely not allowed to come over. As the Kazuki Ij, I will endure everything. You just need to trust your hopes in me. I will fight for Sunagaka. Do you understand? Saying that, he gradually moved away. Natsuo also followed leisurely, leaving behind only the Suna Shinobi with faces full of admiration, watching Rasa's departure with fanatical eyes. When Rasa's figure completely disappeared, the Suna Shinobi started discussing frantically. Rasa-sama looked so cool. Is this the magnanimity of the Kazuki Ij? Damn. Why didn't he let us help? Even if I risk my life, I will create an opportunity for Rasa-sama to kill Natsuo. Fool, do you think you are the only one willing to sacrifice your life for Rasa-sama? Look around you. Who is not willing to die for Rasa-sama? But precisely because of this, Rasa-sama does not allow us to participate in the battle. Can Rasa-sama win? He will definitely win. He is the Kazuki who possesses extraordinary intellect. He I guess when Natsuo arrives on the battlefield, he will be shocked by Rasa-sama. In fact, as the last Suna Shinobi said, Natsuo was really surprised. After all, without any hesitation, Rasa knelt down and knocked his head on the ground. Natsuo, I'm sorry. I really didn't expect it to turn out like this. Natsuo, yes, who could have imagined that the shadow of a Shinobi village would directly kneel? Even Natsuo was taken aback. Truly a disgrace to the cage level, Rasa really embarrassed the cage level. So, how did your village end up like that? Natsuo's mouth twitched as he spoke. I don't know either. Rasa looked helpless. After Operation Destroy Kanoha, all the Suna Shinobi showed me the utmost respect, and there was even some admiration in their eyes. No matter what orders I gave, they would interpret them in the best way possible. I also don't understand how they all ended up like this. Rasa looked innocent. Although he enjoyed the title of strongest Kazuki Ij now, he hadn't lost his sanity. He was also worried that the Suna Shinobi's morale was too high and they might accidentally clash with Natsuo. So, before losing himself to glory, he deliberately tried to make the Suna Shinobi realize that he was not invincible or all-powerful by issuing some incorrect military orders and making mistakes. However, it was futile. Rasa remembered a time when he forcefully ordered a squad to attack a camp in Kanoha. According to the intelligence, it was an absolute mistake in terms of the power balance. However, to his surprise, when the squad stormed into the Kanoha camp, they found only a few shinobi, but a large amount of supplies. It turned out that the commander at that time, due to lack of personnel, had to bluff and release false information about the camp, trying to scare the Suna Shinobi for a few days, waiting for reinforcements to arrive. 
But this flaw was exposed due to Rasa's erroneous order at that time. Kinova suffered a huge defeat while Sunagika gained a large amount of resources. It was an almost miraculous victory. The Suna Shinobi cheered together praising the Kazakiyaj for his wisdom and cunning. They also expressed that the Kazakiyaj had seen Kinova's tactics long ago, and therefore ordered the attack. Instead of diminishing the Suna Shinobi's meaningless admiration for him, he seemed to have intensified it. This kind of thing has happened more than once. He didn't know if it was because Sunagika had been blessed with good luck, but the Suna Shinobi had repeatedly achieved similar overwhelming victories. Sunagika's inexplicable troop movements not only caused no losses, but disrupted Kinoha's defenses, forcing Kinoha's commander to move troops randomly, and ultimately suffer a major defeat. After a few times even the Kazakiyaj himself gave up, but even if he gave up, he still had to work hard for Sunagika. That's why Rasa didn't hesitate to kneel, because he knew that Sunagika's safety rested on his shoulders. His actions would directly determine the fate of Sunagika. So you're saying that Sunagika intends to surrender? Natsuo rubbed his chin. Tsunade should accept it. But your Tsuna Shinobi just scolded me harshly earlier. Don't you plan to compensate me? Natsuo looked at Rasa with a half-smile. You can name your price. Rasa said straightforwardly. I'll accept whatever I can accept, and if I can't accept it, I'll fight to the death. After all, that's how reality is. Upon hearing this, Natsuo chuckled softly. Very well then I don't want anything excessive. I heard that the Elder of Sun Agaka, Chiyo, has a forbidden technique called Kisho Tensei. That can bring the dead back to life I want that. Does Elder Chiyo have a secret technique like that? Why didn't she know? Rasa felt puzzled, but still readily agreed. Okay. I will immediately request it from Chiyo. As long as she has it, I should be able to get it back. After all, he was the strongest Kazakij in Sunagika. He had righteousness on his side. Even just by listening to Natsuo's description, Rasa knew that the forbidden technique was extremely important. But he didn't hesitate. Okay? Then I agree. Natsuo shrugged. Have Sunagika send ninjas to Kanoha to admit defeat and sign the treaty. Oh, by the way, where is Tamari? I came this time intending to bring her back. Saying this, he turned around and was about to head towards the Sunagika camp. Wait, Natsuo-sama. Rasa reached out his hand and said, Could you please do me a favor? Hum. Natsuo frowned as he looked at Rasa. Rasa felt a little embarrassed and said, As you know, I am currently the strongest Kazakij in Sunagika, and I am burdened by the responsibility of that title. Can you please use your strongest technique and pretend to fight me? There's no other way. If there's no action at all, then his reputation as the strongest Kazakij will be gone. Although Rasa knows it's self-deception, he still wants to keep the title of the strongest Kazakij. Natsuo's mouth twitched, and he glanced at him. My appearance fee is not cheap. Hearing this, Rasa did not hesitate and said, To be honest, I have hired a number of teachers for Tamari, even specifically inviting many experienced Warren Kofkov, to teach her what she needs to know before marrying into a big clan like the Achiha clan. Can my sincerity cover this time's appearance fee? Natsuo fell silent for a moment upon hearing this. It must be said that Rasa's sincerity moved him quite a bit. Okay, I'll help you create an epic battle. Boom, boom, boom. The earth trembles, the sky tears apart. The Tsuna Shinobi in the distance stare in astonishment. The Susanoo covers the sky, and the surging sand is like a tsunami. The thunderous sounds indicate the intensity of the battle. So this is the legendary power of the Ichiha, it's okay? Our fourth Kazakij didn't lose to him. Although I have greatly overestimated the level of the fourth Kazakij, I never imagined that he would still exceed our expectations, truly the strongest Kazakij. The Tsuna Shinobi are filled with shock and awe. Even from such a distance, the earth-shaking battle can still be clearly felt. How exaggerated it all is. But our fourth Kazakij didn't lose. Even from this far away, we can still see that unique shade of yellow in his sand. The Tsuna Shinobi eagerly watch from a distance. The prestige of the strongest Kazakij is formidable. Although every Tsuna Shinobi wishes to rush in and help Rasa in the fight, in the end, they do nothing. After all, this is what the fourth Kazakij hoped for the battle has already continued for a full half hour. From time to time the sound of collisions could be heard, and the ground under their feet barely stopped shaking. But in the end the battle ended. Under the hopeful gaze of the Tsuna Shinobi, Rasa, covered in blood, returned with staggering steps. Sorry, companions, I still lost. He was covered in blood, with slight swelling on his face. The mixture of sand and blood on his body formed a reddish mud stain, fully demonstrating his efforts. The Tsuna Shinobi were filled with excitement and tears streaming down their faces. Rasa-sama, you did your best. No. If it weren't for the fourth Kazakij's concern about collateral damage to Sunagika's forces, and if we had enough high-level Shinobi to support him, he wouldn't have lost to a mere Natsuo. Damn it. We are too weak. We don't even have a qualified Shinobi to help Rasasama. We are too decadent for give us Rasasama. Natsuo. How should it be said? Natsuo is definitely a good employee. After the boss pays, he organizes things clearly and tries his best to act. For example, he was worried about Rasa's insufficient chakra, so he took matters into his own hands and attacked the ground, causing vibrations to spread in all directions. And Rasa's greatest contribution was to disperse the golden sand. Of ten parts of sand, only one part was golden sand. 
This is how he was able to create the appearance of a great wave, making the Suna Shinobi in the distance, see the strength of the strongest Kazakage. Whether it was the drastically changed terrain or the vibrations that the Suna Shinobi occasionally felt, they were all caused by Natsuo. He fully demonstrated his skills in creating the scene of an epic battle. The Suna Shinobi were truly deceived by his acting, believing in Rasa's title as the strongest Kazakage. This was the result Natsuo had anticipated. But when the Suna Shinobi took it so seriously, he didn't know what to say. Okay, let's consider it as helping my father-in-law. After all, my father-in-law has proven his sincerity. Cooperating with him a little won't affect me at all, Natsuo thought, then touched his nose and cleared his throat. Kazakij, since you have admitted defeat, then next I understand. Rasa nodded towards Natsuo and let out a sigh. Then he looked towards the Suna Shinobi. Fellow Shinobi, I apologize. We have lost this battle, no. Kazakij sama we can still fight. The Suna Shinobi shouted excitedly. We haven't lost yet. We are willing to use our lives to help you defeat this damn Achiha. Rasa shook his head slowly. No need. A victory won with the blood of the Suna Shinobi is not what I want we lost this time. Natsuo, don't worry. I will send an envoy now to negotiate peace with Konoha. Natsuo looked at him, then according to the agreed script he said, This won't be a tactic to buy time, right? Sanagaka has preserved his strength well. You don't plan to wait until you've recovered from your injuries to attack Konoha again, do you? No, you can rest assured, said Rasa pausing for a moment, as collateral to Mari. Ah, Tamari was surprised she never expected her father to call her at this moment. She leaped up and landed beside Rasa, Kazakij sama Don't call me Kazakij sama just call me father. Rasa sighed lightly, looking at Tamari with a mixture of love and reluctance. But in the end, he became resolute. Tamari, are you willing to sacrifice yourself for some Agaka? Tamari was a little confused, but she didn't hesitate to say, I am willing. Rasa nodded, then turned to Natsuo and said in a deep voice, Natsuo, I know you don't trust us, the Suna Shinobi. But I can prove our sincerity to you, Tamari is my daughter. She will accompany you and stay by your side as a hostage. If there are any unusual moves on Sunagaka's part, you can break the agreement directly. Is this acceptable? As soon as these words were spoken, many Suna Shinobi were stunned. Then their faces showed expressions of anger and humiliation. No, Kazakij sama We can still fight. Sunagaka can still fight. That's right. Please don't sacrifice your daughter. I am willing to fight for you. Kazakij sama even if I have to risk my life, I will create an opportunity for you to kill Natsuo. Please don't do this. However, Rasa slowly shook his head. No, it's not possible. He let out a sigh, his face filled with sorrow. We, Sunagaka, have lost, but our strength has been almost completely preserved. If Natsuo doubts our sincerity, what should we do if he starts launching indiscriminate attacks at this time? How many of our brothers from Sunagaka will die? Tamari is my daughter. Aren't the Suna Shinobi the sons and daughters of their parents? Upon hearing this, Tamari's eyes welled up with tears. An intense emotion surged in her chest, urging her to step forward and loudly declare, Okay? As the daughter of the Kazakuj, I should not only enjoy being protected in the rear, but I should also charge to the front lines. Wait father, please entrust this mission to me. Truly, you are my good daughter. Rasa nodded approvingly, then spoke sternly. This is the order of Rasa, the fourth Kazakij of Sunagaka. Suna Shinobi, will you defy this order? Kazakij sama Tears streamed down the eyes of many Suna Shinobi. They gritted their teeth and all kneeled down. We obey the order of the Kazakij. And before them, Rasa, despite his seemingly disheveled appearance, seemed to emit a sacred radiance. The mixture of blood, sweat, and dust on him was so dazzling. Beside him, Natsuo thought. In fact, every expert at the cage level has his own greatness. If Rasa were thrown into the entertainment industry of my previous world, he would definitely be a contender for best actor. Rasa returned to the Sunagaka camp then began treating his wounds while arranging to send messengers to Konoha. Although these injuries were deliberately created, they were still real injuries. Shinobi have keen eyesight, and if the wounds were fake, they would be seen through at a glance. Then Rasa suffered some injustices. Doesn't this show that he is very dedicated as an actor? At least he didn't need a stunt double. The diplomatic delegation does not have much to negotiate. Although Sanagaka has gained much from Konoha, it is unlikely that Tsune will refuse Sanagaka's surrender. After all, Konoha is already under pressure due to the war, and although Sanagaka launched a strong offense in this war, they mainly occupied some lands and captured some supplies. For Konoha, which is rich and powerful, it is actually nothing. Without blood feuds, a ceasefire is naturally not difficult. As for what conditions were finally obtained, Natsuo doesn't care. That's Sunagaka's problem. After solving the previous problems, Rasa began to brainwash his daughter Kof. I mean the old father's instructions before parting with his daughter. He made it clear to Tamari about Natsuo's character, and that he sent her deliberately. Natsuo is a powerful ninja and he hopes that she can work hard to win him over, and reduce her hostility towards Sunagaka. If she can bring him back to Sunagaka, it would be even better, Rasa said these words very seriously. He really hopes that Tamari will gain favor with him. Rasa witnessed him summoning the Chakra Giant for half an hour of fake fighting, and afterward his face didn't change. 
and he didn't even breathe heavily. Rasa began to complain in his mind. Who the hell spread the news that Natsuo can't fully demonstrate the power of that technique? Or is it Natsuo himself who is worried that he is acting too high profile? So he is deliberately spreading fake news to avoid being surrounded. Rasa now fully understands one thing. Whoever gets Natsuo will get the world. If he can bring Natsuo to Sunagaka, it is not a dream for Sunagaka to dominate the world. On the other hand, if he can't bring him over, he can only try his best to prevent him from becoming an enemy of Sunagaka. So even if they didn't discuss the option of Tamari becoming his wife, Rasa would still make the same decision. Everything is for Sunagaka. Tamari also accepts this to a certain extent. The shinobi have actually received a strong ideological education, so sacrificing themselves for the village is normal. Although this time she feels like Rasa is selling her out, which is a bit cheap on Rasa's part. But if it can reduce some losses for the village, Tamari can accept it. In the end, it's because Rasa's prestige is too high. Even if Rasa admits his complete defeat to Natsuo, the sooner shinobi still consider him the hope of Sunagaka, looking at Rasa with admiration on their faces. In the midst of all this frenzy of fanaticism, even Tamari, as the daughter of Rasa, who knows very well what her father is like, has been influenced to some extent. The only one who hasn't been influenced by this madness is probably Gara. He looks at Rasa, who is full of fatherly love towards Tamari, with a strange expression on his face, always wanting to say something. But he doesn't dare to say it. After all, Natsuo is still waiting outside the Sunagaka camp. Natsuo brought Tamari back to the village. He also brought the news of Rasa's decision to seek peace. Tsunade looks at Tamari, who is obediently standing behind Natsuo, not knowing what to say. Who goes out to fight and comes back with a wife? Tsune complained in her mind. I've always heard that Achiha Natsuo is a weirdo, not at all like an Achiha now I see it, this guy is the most orthodox Achiha. To revive the Achiha clan, he even brought back the daughter of the leader of an enemy shinobi village. This kind of almost crazy obsession, even Tsune can't believe it if it's not Achiha. But peace is always a good thing. Tsune secretly thinks, Although Sunagaka was the first to declare war on Kanoha and managed to successfully carry out Operation Destroy Kanoha, the two sides are not irreconcilable enemies. After a series of battles, Kanoha has also suffered losses, and the voices longing for peace are growing louder. Rasa also doesn't seem to be the shame of cage levels as previously stated. He was able to fight against Natsuo, who had activated the Susanoo for so long. Obviously, he's also a powerful shinobi. Tsunade speculated in her mind. Peace is the best option. Outside of the losses that Sunagaka caused Kanoha during Operation Destroy Kanoha, her. They only occupy the territory of the Land of Fire, in addition to confiscating its resources. As long as they return the invaded territory, the rich and powerful Kanoha will not care about that small amount of resources. The other high-level members of the village also express the same attitude. After all, the Kazakiage is not only very strong, but also very cunning, and has achieved almost miraculous results during this war. Kanoha when fighting such an enemy, the pressure it must endure is really great. Even if Kanoha makes some concessions to Sunagaka, they can rely on the concentrated strength of all fronts to double their gains from the remaining opponent, Uwagaka. It can be said that during all these operations, in the end Kanoha will not incur losses. Of course, peace treaties between the great shinobi villages will not be signed today or tomorrow. There will still be negotiations, which will take some time. The battle between Natsuo and Rasa spread quickly through the spies of the various forces. Everyone was surprised to hear the news. Damn, is the Kazakiage really that strong? Especially some people who still had their doubts, specifically went to the place where Natsuo and Rasa fought for a long time, and finally came to a conclusion. The strongest Kazakiage. He truly lives up to his name. The Suna Shinobi also solemnly declared, if it weren't for Rasa-sama's love for the people of his village, and his unwillingness to sacrifice the Suna Shinobi, perhaps there would have been a chance to defeat Natsuo. After all, the two of them had a big battle and fought for a long time back then. Besides Kurigika's strongest Mizukage, who could fight Natsuo for so long. Many Suda Shinobi expressed, if our Kazakiage sama lets us help, it is possible to defeat Natsuo. Unfortunately, our Kazakiage cares too much about his fellow villagers, and is unwilling to allow us to sacrifice ourselves. We are all willing to die for our Kazakiage. The Suna Shinobi looked regretful. It also made Rasa, who was still stunned by how the situation was developing, realize that being defeated by Natsuo not only did not diminish his prestige, but made his reputation even stronger. After all, losing to the number one person in the Shinobi world is not a disgrace grace, but rather an honor. The Suna Shinobi even refer to Rasa as the number one person under Natsuo, and the second strongest person under Natsuo would be the Mizukage. Of course, the Kiri Shinobi are not convinced by this. They believe that since Rasa had already anticipated Natsuo's return with Rasa's intelligence, he must have made preparations on the battlefield early on. The reason he was able to entangle with Natsuo for so long is obviously because he relied on the things he had prepared earlier. His true strength should be below on Mizukage. Both sides exchanged insults from a distance, each with their own reasoning, fiercely opposing each other without giving an inch. 
But regardless, the fact is that the strongest Mizukage, Turumi Mei and the top level expert the strongest Kazakage, Rasa, they have been recognized by everyone. Some even considered that if they joined together they would be stronger than Natsuo. While these rumors spread Natsuo remained silent. In the Ichiha clan residence, Natsuo looked at the girl who had just entered the house. Natsuo's other wives also looked curiously at this girl. Tamari immediately showed a timid look and hid behind Natsuo. Natsuo-kun, the sisters are so scary. Are they not welcoming me? If I marry you, the sisters won't be angry, right? They won't argue with you about this, right, Natsuo-kun? I'm really sorry for causing you trouble, Natsuo K-U-N tilde tilde everyone. What the hell is wrong with Tamari? Why did she become so annoying? Damn Rasa, what has he taught her? Hearing Tamari's earlier conversation with Anko and the others, Natsuo was instantly confused by Tamari's shy appearance. Angry. Why would we be angry? Anko said loudly. Joining our Acheha family means we're all family. Don't worry, the sisters welcome you. Saying that, she glared fiercely at Natsuo. The meaning in her eyes was obvious. Why is this guy so indiscriminate even wanting a little girl like her? Really? Tamari said cutely and innocently. Of course. Anko said without hesitation. Then, sister, will you like me? Of course I'll like you. You're so well behaved, much better than those two brats at home. Sister is so nice. I like sister the most. Saying that, Tamari jumped into Anko's arms. And then she started complaining about her mother dying in childbirth, her father Rasa caring very little for his family, not experiencing any family love, and having to take care of two annoying younger brothers. Anyway, Anko's heart immediately softened. What a good child come, sister will take you to eat a big meal. Saying that, she directly took Tamari's hand and left. Natsuo, although Anko's naturally quirky personality played a part, what kind of skill tactics did Tamari use? Whatever, I don't care anyway. Natsuo casually shrugged and allowed Tamari's actions to continue. And to be honest, he didn't plan to make a move on Tamari for now. Although Tamari is older than Sasuke and the others, she is still too young for anything serious. She still needs a few more years to grow. During the war, Natsuo was not idle. Especially after obtaining the Flying Thunder God technique, he was able to take care of both his wives and the front lines, going back and forth between the two places. But the war delayed some things which made Natsuo very frustrated. Now that a peace agreement has been reached with Kurigako, Kumogako is only a matter of time before someone is sent to surrender, and Sunagaka's envoy has already arrived and is negotiating. Only Awagaka is left, and Jiraiya can take care of them. It can be said that Natsuo can now be worry-free, and can now finally focus all his energy on reviving the Ichiha clan. Of course, what Natsuo is most looking forward to is his wedding to Tsunade. Because they're still in the midst of war, Tsunade insisted on not having any ceremony, and planned to officially marry in after the war. But she has already moved in ahead of time. The first day Tsunade moved into the Ichiha clan residence, Natsuo noticed that Tsunade was not in her room when he looked for her. After searching for her for a while he was surprised to find her in his room. And when he entered she managed to surprise him once again. She captured her lips in a searing kiss, the aggressive dance of her tongue conveying her excitement. Someone is feeling anxious. Natsuo said with a smile as she pulled away from her to take a breath. Shut up. Tsunade stammered with unusual shyness, avoiding Natsuo's gaze as she blushed. Then, just to hide her frustration, she slapped him hard on the arm. I'm just keeping my end of the deal. Of course. Natsuo said, nodding sagely, feeling kind enough not to mention the way her fingers trembled with genuine excitement as she tried to unbutton his shirt. Natsuo decided to let himself go when Tsune pushed him onto the bed, lying on his back, taking off his shirt in the process only for her to lie on top of him. And so, they began a heated kissing session, Tsune's hands exploring Natsuo's chest muscles continuously, as if it were the first time they were together. In a sense, it was. The first time they were together was due to Tsunade's drugs, and subsequent encounters were only strictly physical. This time, they really had a deeper relationship. Apparently, decisively resolving the other shinobi villagers' siege of Kanoha was enough to break Tsunade's prickly exterior. Initially, Natsuo was planning a quick encounter while strengthening her using Renchi no Kanke. But Tsunade's enthusiasm made him change his mind. He wanted to see what she would do while she had the initiative in her hands. At first, their bodies remained joined, deepening the kiss even as Tsunade's body riot over Natsuo's in a desperate frenzy. When she ended the kiss, she began to trace the muscles of his chest with her hands, as she moved downward with determination, her lustful gaze revealing her intent. Desperate need oozed from her as she reached for his belt, trying to take it off of him, only for her hands to shake so much that she fumbled again and again. Enough. She growled with beautifully savage anger, finally snapping the belt. When Tsunade pulled down Natsuo's pants and happily ran her hands up his bare thighs as she leaned forward with a smile. Natsuo's eyes locked on her exquisite face. Tsunade's lips slid seductively around his member as she bobbed her head intensely. It was a passionate encounter, made even more exciting by the fact that her beautiful brown eyes stared into his, mirroring her burning arousal. Her sleeveless kimono-style shirt gave him a tantalizing view of her cleavage every time she raised her head, and her eyes filled with tears, as she took the entirety of Natsuo's member into her mouth. Natsuo wanted to see her naked, but he also wanted to flaunt his strength. So she came up with an interesting idea, wine release, blade of wind. Natsuo emitted chakra from his fingertips, creating an invisible sword 
more from the wind. Because Tsune couldn't see the wind, and because of how precise Natsuo was with his use of the technique, she only felt a gust of wind before her clothes fell from her body in pieces. Ugly what? How? Tsunade started in shock as she stood up, fully displaying her beautiful, generous breasts in the process, only to be met with Natsuo's playful smile. Do you know how dangerous that was she started to say only to stop suddenly? Well, I don't care. I'm just so excited. She corrected herself as she climbed onto Natsuo's lap and impaled herself on his member, her scream echoing through the room. Natsuo continued lying on his back, doing nothing but enjoying the frenetic ride. And Tsunade was frantic her hips swaying hard as she moved up and down, her blonde hair fluttering with her movement, her fingers digging into Natsuo's chest. Just to make the beautiful moment even more perfect, Natsuo felt the bond he shared with Tsunade, due to the wrench in Okanke, grow even stronger. For a moment, Natsuo wondered why the bond with Tsunade would suddenly strengthen. But after thinking about it, he understood why. The jutsu he had used to undress her was definitely not simple at all, he showed great precision and control over Chakra. Although Natsuo's exploits in defeating the other shinobi villages were mainly based on the use of Susanu, this power only depended on the Manjekyo Sharingan. This was the first time Natsuo had shown such overwhelming skill in Chakra control, something Tsunade was proud to be the best at. No wonder this made her accept him even more. After a minute of frantic riding, she let out a frustrated grunt as she grabbed his wrists before bringing them to her lush breasts, tempting him to explore her body. Natsuo would never refuse such an irresistible invitation. He sank his fingers into her soft breasts, enjoying the elasticity of her. As he increased the pressure, her moans intensified, accompanied by the frantic rocking of her hips. She shuddered with pleasure as she felt the touch on her sensitive nipples. The sudden change of pace pushed her even deeper into the land of arousal. She slumped forward and hugged his body, while her hips continued to move with unbridled passion. Let me feel you completely inside me. My husband mark me with your seed make me yours, she whispered between moans, given over to ecstasy with her eyes clouded by pleasure. As you wish, my beautiful wife. Natsuo whispered to her as he exploded inside her without warning. Natsuo noticed the bond strengthening slightly, as he continued to fill her with his seed. Taking advantage of this intimate moment, Natsuo activated the wrench in Okanke, and transferred the maximum amount of vital energy and mental power that their bond allowed him. She was already at the limit, and when Natsuo reached his climax, he unleashed a torrent of indescribable sensations, causing her to orgasm. The explosion of life energy and mental power that flowed into her completely engulfed her. This was the first time that Natsuo activated the wrench in Okanke with her, and although she tried to remain lucid before the tide of pleasure, she succumbed without remedy. Every shudder of his within her, every wave of ecstasy pushed her beyond the threshold of her consciousness, letting her speak as if she were under the effects of the most intoxicating elixir. This is impossible, she managed to whisper as she registered that her vital energy was strengthening. But what surprised her most was that she felt a refreshing energy running through her mind. Nothing is impossible for me, my dear wife. Natsuo whispered in her ear as he stroked her head gently, letting it fall against his chest, her breathing slowly calming from her previous frantic pace. He let her sleep while occasionally infusing her with a little more life energy and mental power. Being careful as strengthening her too much could cause imbalances in energy flow. Luckily everything was in order. Natsuo was worried about accidentally hurting her, because Tsunade is the first woman of his that she is so strong and has such a strong bond with her. So he was worried, since he had never shared so much energy. Natsuo was glad to see her grow stronger with his help, as she is currently his strongest woman with whom he shares the deepest bond, which allowed him to test the limits of Renshu no Kanke. Natsuo was curious as to where the strengthening bond's limit was. Luckily for him, this was the perfect time to explore that. Natsuo woke her up after 20 minutes of rest when his energy fully recovered. Natsuo kissed her gently to wake her up. Wake up, sleepy. He murmured as she opened her eyes. I had a strange dream she muttered as her eyes remained closed, only to snap them open a moment later. No, I really feel like I've gotten stronger somehow. How? She gasped as she grabbed his face, screaming frantically. Just another trick in my grab bag, darling. Natsuo said lazily, amused to notice that, despite her haste to get up, his member was still inside her, sliding deeper with every frantic movement she made. That's impossible. She exclaimed, her voice tinged with surprise, though the seriousness of her expression disappeared when she let out a soft moan. Really? He said, grabbing her by the waist before flipping her over and placing her beneath him, his number still inside her. Let's check it out together. With that, Natsuo began to furiously impale her, every movement intense and filled with emotion, trying to fill her opening. Her passion-filled moans were loud enough to cause a fuss, if it weren't for the fact that they were in the privacy of his room. Each movement was accompanied by a small discharge of vital energy and mental power. That's impossible. She murmured again, this time her voice tinged with adoration rather than disbelief. How? We have all the time in the world for you to learn my most important secrets. Her legs wrapped around Natsuo's waist, using all her strength to push him deeper inside her. Due to her inhuman raw strength, Natsuo began to thrust into her mercilessly, each push creating a mixture of sensations in her, stirring up a whirlwind of emotions between pain and deep delight, accompanied by another injection of energy. She moaned deliriously, her fingers digging into his shoulders firmly, marking the intensity of their connection. Yes. Oh, why yes till the... 
Siune moaned through tears as she shook uncontrollably, choking with pleasure. Her back arched, offering her generous breast, to which Natsuo moved closer to taste her sensitive nipples, further intensifying her pleasure. Determined to increase her excitement, Natsuo stood up, carrying her in his arms with ease and heading towards the wall. With her between his body and the wall, Natsuo penetrated her with such force, that he shook the room with each thrust pushing her passion to the limit. The more Natsuo fucked her, the louder her moans of pleasure became, she enjoyed his displays of power. Whether it was his physical strength or sharing his energy with her, her excitement at his power intoxicated her. But fortunately, he possessed it in excess, making it a delight rather than a hindrance. Her mouth found his shoulder, biting it fervently as she shuddered in another orgasmic burst. Natsuo decided to change the pace, gently pulling out inside her as he explored her rear entrance with bold movements, only to penetrate her mercilessly, forcing her to cry in pain, earning another merciless bite in response. Without holding back, he took her to a wild ecstasy, awakening moans that intertwined with her tears. Despite the intense pleasure when Natsuo met her brown eyes, she revealed total dedication. An ecstatic smile graced her face. The way she shivered from it only made it sexier and more hypnotizing. Natsuo, in turn, reveled in the moment. Fucking the fifth Hokage mercilessly was an exquisite experience, especially with her being the first woman to be able to withstand the full force of her, since she became stronger with the system. Harder F-A-S-T-E-R tilde, she said as she wailed through tears. Take me, use me, I'm Y-O-U-R-S tilde. And so Natsuo penetrated her without holding back, letting himself be carried away by an intensity that had been repressed for a long time. Foreplay had faded into oblivion and gentleness had become a distant concept. A burning passion and the desire to subject her to his will guided his actions, each thrust met with moans full of surrender. Without a word, she relented as Natsuo led her to kneel on the bed. Then he pulled her arms back, causing her to bend over the bed, leaving her helpless as he penetrated her deeply. When Natsuo released his seed inside her, she simply moaned obediently. So much ENERGY told her she muttered confusedly. Natsuo was happy that the bond he shares with Tsune was strengthened again. He realized that the bond is at the same level as that of Anko, Kurenai, Yuga and Amayori. Although he is still far from being on the same level as Yukinos and Yokos, it is quite surprising that Tsune trusts him so much considering that they have hardly shared much together. The next few hours were filled with unbridled passion. I feel like I'm much stronger she mumbled dazedly before passing out once again, finally overwhelmed by pleasure. On the other hand, in a Wagaka, the pressure on Anoki became even greater. Although he immediately sent envoys to the Sunagaka camp, trying to contact Rasa to jointly deal with the formidable enemy, Kinoha, and explain the pros and cons, making it clear that if they didn't unite at this moment, they might be defeated one by one by Kinoha, which possessed top-level combat power. But in the end, he couldn't convince Sunagaka. Kurigaka has already withdrawn from the war. Sunagaka is in negotiations with Kanoha, and although Kumogaka is still holding out, it is only a matter of time before they surrender to Kanoha so now only our village remains. Anoki frowned, his face darkened. How did the advantageous situation where Kanoha was besieged by the four great shinobi villages become what it is now in such a short time? Damn it. How did this battle turn out like this? Why is the progress of this shinobi world war so fast turning into this state in such a short time? In the past, didn't the shinobi world war take several years to come to a conclusion? Now, in less than a year, it's almost over. Natsuo, if it weren't for him, Anoki showed a grim expression while gritting his teeth in hatred. If it weren't for this guy suddenly appearing in Kanoha, how could we have ended up in this situation? Suchikage sama what should we do? Koritsuchi asked in a low voice. Should we surrender to Kanoha? Among the four great shinobi villages, only Awagaka and miserable Kumogaka remain. Actually, if it weren't for the fury and desire for revenge of the Kumo shinobi after the fourth Rakage was captured, and if Nayujita wasn't there to stabilize the situation inside Kumogaka, they probably would have bowed their heads and surrender by now. In reality, the only ones who can continue the war is Awagaka. Although Awagaka is not weak, but even if Natsuo doesn't make a move, they are no match against Kanoha. In the past, it took all the great shinobi villages to work together to make Kanoha bleed. A mere Wagaka is really no match for Kanoha. Anoki could only smile bitterly. No, we can't bow our heads to them. Kanoha is in a great position and has more than enough strength to demand even more benefits. In this situation, will they show mercy to a Wagaka? How is that possible? They let Sunagaka go, and they let Sunagaka go but they won't let Awagaka and Kumogaka go. Even if Anoki chooses to bow his head without hesitation, Kanoha will definitely demand a large amount of benefits. Anoki cannot bear this result, and Awagaka also cannot accept this result. Contact Akatsuki, don't worry about money, spend more to get their help. Anoki could only sigh. I'll send some people to persuade Kumogaka, maybe we can get them to join us. It's a pity that Karigaka and Sanagaka are so foolish and lack the courage to fight Kanoha to the death. Anoki had already sent people to contact Turumi Mei and Rasa, hoping that they would continue fighting and share the pressure with Awagaka. To be honest, Anoki didn't understand the reasons for Karigaka and Sanagaka's withdrawal at all. Clearly, the strength of the four great shinobi villages is not inferior to that of Kanoha, and Turumi Mei and Rasa also achieved great victories. 
If they united, it is very likely that they could defeat Natsuo. But why did they back down? If both Turumi Mei and Rasa are not confident that they can defeat Natsuo, Anoki was willing to go help them. But it's useless. Even if he sends people to try to convince Turumi Mei and Rasa, they still choose to give up without hesitation, wasting their current achievements and negotiating with Konoha. What guys without a backbone? What's with the first Mizukija's impetus unifying the land of water by force? What about the first Kazukija's ambition demanding land from Senju Hashirama? They are really embarrassing them by not continuing their legacy. Anoki angrily jumps and curses. Kuritsuchi sighs lightly and can only silently close the door, not letting others see Anoki's current irritable state. It's not Anoki's fault, the pressure he's under is just too much. And no one can share the burden with Anoki and Awagaka on the other side, the Akatsuki organization. The people who receive the information are all confused. Is Rasa really that strong? Terumi may actually hit such strong power. These two are experts who can compete with Ichiha Natsuo and confront him with a fully manifested Susanu. They thought they were just ordinary cage level, but they turned out to be hiding so much. Sasori thinks about Rasa and can't help but sigh. Things are not always what they seem. Rasa really hid so much, which I didn't expect. Remember that after killing the third Kazakij, it was Rasa who took power and led Sanagika. But when they went to the battlefield, they were beaten like dogs by other countries. Perhaps the reason why he now has such strong power is because of that experience. Lying in wait, enduring hardships for 10 years, able to rival Susanu. This is a strong world warrior. Sasori sighs deeply. Kisum has mixed feelings for Turumi Mei. He was recruited by Abito, who controlled the fourth Mizukij, and met with Turumi Mei several times. At first, he thought she was just an ordinary Kinochi with a strong loyalty to the village. Although her strength is good, what cage of any country has no achievements? But he didn't expect her to have the strength she has now. Although Abito said that the fourth Mizukij, who was a perfect Jinchuriki, was killed by Turumi Mei because the fourth Mizukij wanted to die. But now that he thinks about it, even if he didn't want to die, it wouldn't have changed much, right? What a tremendous woman. Kisum exclaimed in admiration. Others also watched the achievements of the two, especially the changes in the terrain of the battlefield, caused by the fight between Natsuo and Rasa, and were amazed. These two have hidden themselves too deeply. If it weren't for this great shinobi world war, would they continue to hide? Terumi Mei is fine, after all, she has the achievement of defeating the fourth Mizukij. But Rasa has nothing. For so long pretending to be the shame of the cage levels, it was all just an act. If Rasa had not been defeated by Natsuo, perhaps he could have led Sanagaka to create a path that would shock the entire shinobi world. The waters of the ninja world have deepened. Abito couldn't help but sigh. He thought that he was already hiding very deeply, thinking that he had the entire shinobi world under his control. But he didn't expect that these guys, one by one, could hide even better. First it was Rasa, then Turumi Mei, and now Rasa again. Who knows how many hidden strong people there are in the ninja world. Black Zetsu and White Zetsu remain silent. With Natsuo's strength even the skilled and hidden white Zetsu cannot get close. But the destruction left on the battlefield is proof of how intense the fighting was. Whether it's Rasa or Turumi Mei, they both show considerable strength. After all, it's impossible for Natsuo to cooperate with them to pretend to fight, right? These two powerful individuals sitting in their respective villages have put significant pressure on the Akatsuki members, who need to collect the tailed beasts for their future plans. Everyone remains silent. Not even the usually active white Zetsu says a word. This pressure is too heavy. Awagaka has sent out an invitation to strengthen cooperation and increase mission rewards. Nagato pauses for a moment and says, What does everyone think? The group remains silent for a moment. The current situation in the shinobi world is already clear. With Kurigaka withdrawing from the war as did Sunagaka, and Kumogaka being nearly wiped out, only Awagaka remains of the four great shinobi villages that attack Kanova in this war. Awagaka's invitation shows that they are concerned about their own ability to withstand the pressure, and are willing to hire Akatsuki Shinobi even if it means spending a lot of money. Although the rewards have increased, so have the risks. Given the current situation, unless Nagato goes all out, who can stop Natsuo? But will Nagato take action? The Three Tails was killed by Itachi, and it will take a few more years for it to be revived, revealing his strength in advance and attracting the suspicion of the major nations. Nagato would never do that. Although he is powerful, his body cannot withstand prolonged battles. He also plans to follow the examples of Turumi Mei and Rasa, remaining silent for three years, and then making a stunning move to capture all the tail beasts and fulfill his own dream. Reject Awagaka's request, Nagato said indifferently. Their mission carries too much risk. Akatsuki is not only the members present, but also includes a large number of Omegaka shinobi who are not strong enough. Nagato is not willing to sacrifice the lives of the Aang shinobi just to obtain funds from Awagaka. Not to mention that if Natsuo takes action even the current members of Akatsuki could die. 
Before hunting the tailed beasts, he cannot allow Akatsuki to suffer such a huge loss. Abito also agrees with Nagato's decision, and the others nod in agreement. Only Dadara, who came from Awagaka, hesitated for a moment, but finally said nothing. Ichiha Atachi also squinted his eyes, remaining silent with a complex expression in his gaze. Regardless, with Akatsuki's decision not to participate in the war, the fate of Awagaka was determined. After finishing speaking, Nagato's figure flashed and disappeared from the meeting. Kissum let out a smile and mockingly added, Our leader is really like an emotionless puppet. Conan, who hadn't left yet, looked at Kissum in surprise. Not sure if it was just a random joke, or if he had actually noticed something. However, after observing Kissum for a while, she found nothing unusual about him. She can only consider it a coincidence. Atachi, on the other hand, was very aware that Kissum seems to be much more cheerful lately. After this small exchange, everyone released the magic lantern body technique, dispersing its projections. Kakuzu opened his eyes, turned his ring, and then rubbed his chin. Since Akatsuki refused to cooperate with Iwagaka, they were no longer potential clients, so, I remember that Awagaka has a new and powerful Kunoichi, with excellent strength and great talent. What was her name? I think it was Kuritsuchi. The turbulent situation in the ninja world had nothing to do with Kakuzu. Natsuo, who had completed Tsunade's mission, spent his days eating, drinking, and working towards the revival of the Ichiha clan. Except for Tsunade, who was Hokage could not fully dedicate herself to supporting Natsuo in the revival of the Ichiha clan. And other of his main wives that Natsuo focused on strengthening with his Renshin no Kanke, all the others dedicated themselves to the task of reviving the Ichiha clan. Considering the feudal ideas prevalent in the shinobi world that once a Kinochi marries, they would become peaceful housewives who would not participate in battles. So taking care of the family wholeheartedly was her job. Anyway, the Ichiha clan was not short of that amount of money, so it doesn't affect Natsuo that his wives become housewives. Although there were exceptions like Anko, who was excited and wanted to go to the battlefield to make a name for herself, most of his wives wanted a quiet life. At most they continued their shinobi training, but they had no desire to join the battlefield. But they were not idle either. Since Natsuo noticed that his children who had formed a bond with him, were stronger, more intelligent, and developed some new abilities, he decided to let Yukino, along with his other wives, hire more tutors according to the children's abilities. Also because shinobi usually need to infiltrate or impersonate people with professions, there is a very complete educational system in the shinobi world. The most complicated thing was that this system was not popular. But as members of the Ichiha clan, Natsuo decided to give his children the best education. And with more children in the Ichiha clan, most of his wives spent a lot of energy taking care of them. As time passed, Sasuke and Naruto were about to graduate. With Natsuo's occasional guidance to Naruto, he wasn't at all worried that Naruto wouldn't be able to graduate like in the Naruto series. Or rather, it would be strange if he couldn't graduate. However, unexpectedly, Naruto suddenly ran over with a terrified expression. Natsuo, help me. There's something weird in my stomach. He looked terrified, his face filled with panic. Natsuo, I think there's a monster inside my stomach. What should we do? Natsuo and Nikki, that's a monster. Why would there be something like this in my stomach? Is it because I've been going to the club too often and caught some strange disease? Naruto's face was full of panic, especially when he remembered the occasional dirty diseases that adults would talk about. He felt even worse. Natsuo, on the other hand, had an exasperated expression as he listened to Naruto. All right, calm down a bit. The club you went to, the Achiha clan's club, has a monthly physical examination. There's no way cough, cough. It's a tail beast. Natsuo almost started promoting the club. But luckily he reacted quickly and changed the subject. A tail beast. Naruto was stunned. That's right, you are the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. Natsuo paused and looked at Naruto. But I didn't expect that you could see the Nine Tails so easily now. There was no doubt that what Naruto saw was the Nine Tails. Although Naruto had not yet graduated and had experienced very little, his strength was much stronger than during the same period of time in the Naruto series. However, the moment he saw the Nine Tails, he naturally panicked. Naruto, on the other hand, was a little confused. Under the control of the third Hokage, he had no understanding of his own origins, and had never heard of the existence of the Nine Tails. Although Tsune did not maintain the information lock on Naruto after taking office, but since immediately after she took over she had to take care of the impending war, she also didn't have much free time to become a loving older sister figure to comfort Naruto so Naruto was completely clueless, only knowing that on the day he was born, the fourth Hokage killed a demon fox, and nothing else was clear. Natsuo wanted to explain the relationship between Jinchuriki and Tailed Beasts, but after thinking about it, these profound questions were too complicated for Naruto, so he said directly, I'll just take you to see it directly, it'll be faster that way. Speaking, he grabbed Naruto's hand. In his eyes, the power of the Manjekyo Sharingan surged. The next second, Naruto suddenly realized that he and Natsuo were in a huge prison. Inside the prison, a fiery red behemoth was lying quietly inside. Seemingly aware of someone's presence, the Nine Tails slowly opened its bestial eyes. Oh, little brat, didn't expect you to come in so quickly, and you even brought in a Chiha, that is. Naruto pointed at the Nine Tails in panic. 
Natsuo Iniki, the monster I saw back then was him. That's not a monster, it's a tail beast. Natsuo remain calm. Don't be scared. Even if you break this prison, I'm here. It can't turn the world upside down. You dare to say that the nine tails eyes were filled with killing intent, its sharp teeth slightly exposed emanating an aura of death. If you have the ability, release me and let me see how you can stop me from turning the world upside down. Naruto was stunned. Tail beast. What's that? It's a giant chakra entity with tails. Natsuo explained with a smile. You've already seen the eight tails, the one at the entrance of our village. You mean that giant octopus? Naruto exclaimed in surprise. Although Naruto didn't feel much about the existence of the tail beasts, he knew about Natsuo's achievements. He was shocked when he saw Susanoo dragging the eight tails all the way to the edge of the village. That's right, it's that one. Natsuo smiled. You've also seen the one tail, Shukaku, during the Chunin exams. It was the giant Tanuki. From the one tail to the nine tails, there are a total of nine, or you could say ten tail beasts. Among them, the nine tails is the strongest member of the tail beasts. Being recognized as the strongest, the nine tails snorted lightly, its eyes filled with arrogance. Naruto, on the other hand, relaxed a bit. Although he wasn't sure how much stronger the monster in front of him was compared to the one dragged back to the village by Natsuo, it was normal for him to defeat this raccoon dog, if Natsuo could defeat the eight tails. But Natsuo and Nikki, why is this nine tails inside my body? This is the policy of the first Hokage. Natsuo smiled and said, he believed that if the powers of the ninja world could be balanced, there would be fewer wars. So he deliberately captured the tail beasts, and distributed them among the shinobi villages of the world. And in order to control the immense power of the tail beasts, each nation chose to seal them within a Jinchuriki. The demon fox that the fourth Hokage faced back then was the Nine Tails. He chose to seal the Nine Tails inside a newborn baby's body, hoping that he could control the power of the Nine Tails and serve Kanoha. That's right, it's you. Me Naruto's face changed. Although he was young, his special experiences made him far from being comparable to children of the same age. Naruto clearly remembered that some people were unfriendly to him, unwilling to sell him things, and even curse him as the demon fox Naruto murmured. Well, they're not actually cursing you. They're cursing that. Natsuo smiled and said, You're just stuck in the middle. But in their hearts, Naruto is the symbol of the Nine Tails. Natsuo didn't say this, but Naruto understood. So, is it because of this thing that I had to live this way? Naruto looked at the eyes of the Nine Tails, full with hostility. Yes. Natsuo didn't hide it either and said directly, The third Hokage specifically ordered everyone not to tell you about this, ostensibly hoping that you would have a normal childhood. But in my opinion, he wanted to get close to you and win your respect. Tail beasts are a powerful and restless force in the eyes of anyone. As Hokage, he must have it under control. This is actually only natural. Although the third Hokage made many mistakes, in Natsuo's view, his actions towards Naruto were justifiable. Although he felt very sorry for Naruto, as Hokage, he had to earn the respect and love of the Jinchuriki in order to ensure the villagers' safety. So isolating Naruto and becoming Naruto's only emotional harbor is the most effective, reliable, and easiest way. And although the third Hokage's approach to achieving that goal is problematic and somewhat misleading, but it must be said that compared to the experiences of Naruto and other Jinchuriki, Naruto's situation is relatively better. Rasa, from neighboring Sun Agaka, was one of the most ridiculous, as he was literally trying to kill his own son at every turn. In comparison, the third Hokage's actions are quite gentle. Of course, compared to Rasa's treatment of his own son, it is morally unacceptable for the third Hokage to target the orphan of the fourth Hokage, who just died fighting for Kanoha. Furthermore, it was obvious that Hiruzen needed to get even with someone for Buwako's death, and that target could only be Naruto. About this matter, Natsuo also tells Naruto. He has no intention of covering up for the third Hokage, and speaks directly and clearly. Upon hearing this, Naruto slightly opens his mouth, his eyes filled with a hint of sadness. So this is what the third Hokage thought. He had always respected this Hokage even after the third Hokage's death. When the whole village criticized him, Naruto still firmly stood up for the third Hokage. But who would have thought after a moment of silence, Naruto looks at the nine tails. He emanates a presence with boundless hostility when in front of him. Hey, Natsuo, is this guy really that strong? Naruto asks. Actually, just by looking at the appearance of the Nine Tails, one can sense a strong sense of oppression emanating from it. But Naruto remembers how Natsuo forcibly dragged the Eight Tails here back then it's powerful, but maybe not as strong as it seems. Why did the fourth Hokage choose to capture it even at the cost of his own life? Why did it have to be sealed within him? It's still very powerful, Natsuo said with a smile, especially their chakra, which is immense. The attacks they unleash can cause great damage to ordinary ninjas. Feel its killing intent, and you'll understand why people fear him. Indeed, Naruto said, taking a deep breath. The first time he saw the Nine Tails, he was immediately panicked and scared, rushing to find Natsuo. And what he faced was still the Nine Tails locked in a cage. If it were released, the pressure it would have to endure should be even worse. 
The nine tails snorted coldly as if trying to scare Naruto to death. The surging killing intent emanating from its body overwhelmed him. Naruto's face turned red. Although his strength had greatly increased compared to before, he had never truly been on the battlefield or experienced real combat. He was completely unable to adapt to the killing intent of a tailed beast. However, Natsuo just smiled. Naruto, don't be afraid. But despite its fist appearance, tailed beasts are actually quite pitiful. Pitiful. Naruto was taken aback. Even the Nine Tails was taken aback, then said, Hey, Ichiha kid, what do you mean by pitiful? Natsuo just smiled. The first Hokage kept each tail beast confined in a small space. They can't go out on a regular basis, so it's difficult for them to see the outside world or taste something delicious. It's fortunate that they don't need to eat or drink, otherwise they would all starve to death. Naruto blinked, thinking, they can't even eat Ichiraka Raymond. That's indeed a bit pitiful. The Nine Tails, however, roared angrily. Your human food is meaningless to me. Pitiful. I don't need your human pity. It roared repeatedly, emanating a ferocious aura that even seals couldn't suppress. Naruto felt a surge of killing intent, barely managing to stand after retreating three steps. Don't be afraid, Naruto. Natsuo smiled and suddenly remembered something, saying with a smile. Do you know, the first Hokage, Senja Hashirama, once held back nine tail beasts with just one hand. If you want to become Hokage, you need similar strength at least. Although things have changed a lot, thanks to the foundation laid by the third Hokage, Naruto's dream hasn't changed. He is still striving towards becoming Hokage. Although now due to certain factors the dream of having a harem was added, but being the Hokage is still one of his dreams. With just one hand suppressing such a monster, Naruto widened his eyes in astonishment and said, So Hokage is really that powerful? The Nine Tails roared. Idiot. The first Hokage is the god of Shinobi, the strongest Shinobi in the world. I was able to force him to use one hand, which is already a proof of my strength. Just like when Rasa lost to Natsu at first glance it is not considered a shame, but rather an honor. The same goes for the Nine Tails. Do you think anyone is worthy of making Senju Hashirama use one hand to suppress them? Naruto blinked and looked curiously at Natsuo. Is the first Hokage really that strong? It seems like the textbooks didn't mention this much. The first Hokage is indeed very strong. The so-called third Hokage is the strongest Hokage written in your school books, is just Saratobi Hiruzen boasting about himself. Natsuo said with a smile, if Saratobi Hiruzen were to fight the first Hokage, let me put it this way. The first Hokage can defeat a hundred Hiruzen and not even receive a single scratch. Naruto thought for a moment, realizing that the first Hokage could defeat a hundred third Hokages. This seems a bit terrifyingly strong. In that case, Nine Tails is also excessively strong. That's right. The Nine Tails proudly said, Even someone like Senja Hashirama said to me, Your power is too terrifying. It needs to be sealed. Do you understand my power now? That's right. Natsuo nodded. I can confirm that the first Hokage did say that. At that moment, when first Hokage Senju Hashirama used the wood release and summoned the top transformed Buddha, he held back the Nine Tails with one hand, with 999 hands behind him. He then said seriously to the Nine Tails, Nine Tails, your power is too terrifying. It needs to be sealed. That's right, Nine Tails was sealed under those circumstances. EFFT. Naruto suddenly burst into laughter. He held his stomach and rolled on the ground. I can't take it anymore, ha ha ha. With one hand holding down nine tails, 900 hands with nowhere to go. Ha ha ha. Nine tails, your power is too terrifying, really too terrifying. Ha ha ha. It's really terrifying. Terrifying to the point that Naruto couldn't stop trembling from laughter. Nine tails' old face instantly turned red. It opened its blood filled mouth, but had nothing to say because Senji Hashirama really did suppress it like that at the time. Nine tails is indeed very terrifying, but compared to Senji Hashirama, it's a thousand times less terrifying. Kid, stop laughing. This surge of anger rose in Nine tails' heart. In his shame and anger, he roared and swung his claws towards the cell trying to attack Naruto, ignoring the seal in front of him. Boom. A loud sound was heard as its sharp claws broke some chains and collided with the bars, generating a ferocious momentum. Naruto's laughter abruptly stopped, and a hint of fear flickered in his eyes. No matter how powerless Nine Tails appeared in front of Senju Hashirama for the current Naruto, it was a true ferocious beast. Don't be afraid, Naruto. There's nothing to fear about Nine Tails. Natsuo smiled and turned towards the seal. Tail beasts have simple personalities, and they actually like humans. As long as we touch the furry heads, we can calm them down. Saying that, Natsuo stepped into the railing of the seal. Kid, you actually came in. Nine Tails' face was ecstatic. It suddenly roared, and its claw swung towards Natsuo. Natsuo and Nikki, be careful. Naruto's expression changed. However, Natsuo just smiled faintly, and the arm of Susanoo appeared on his body. He grabbed Nine Tails' claw with one hand, then twisted and pressed it forcefully. The Nine Tails felt the force, and its whole body inevitably fell to the ground. And Natsuo, at some point, calmly stood on Nine Tails' shoulder, gently touching its head with his hand. Natsuo said in his mind, Hum, not bad, the feeling is quite good. The Nine Tails was about to roar. The next second, Susanoo spread its limbs and firmly pressed the Nine Tails to the ground, even completely sealing its mouth. The Nine Tails struggled desperately but couldn't move. And Natsuo maintained a relaxed posture with a smile on his face, as he stroked the Nine Tails' head. Then he smiled and said to Naruto, You see, as long as I pat its furry head, it immediately becomes quiet, right? 
Naruto, Natsuo, forgive me for speaking frankly, but I don't think an ordinary person can calm him down using this method. Naruto slowly opened his eyes. Natsuo also slowly withdrew his hand. How about it? Aren't you afraid of the Nine Tails now? Natsuo smiled. Naruto blushed and insisted. I'm not afraid. I'm just cautious. I'm being careful. Then he spouted a bunch of incomprehensible words. Something about how caution is the most important thing for a ninja. Something about reporting to the captain first when encountering a situation. Something about prioritizing intelligence. And how he didn't attack the Nine Tails because he wanted to gather information about it. Natsuo laughed heartily, with a cheerful air. Get along well with the Nine Tails. The Tailed Beasts are actually a good bunch. Natsuo smiled and said, If the Nine Tails gets angry, you can consider doing what I do and pat its head. Naruto, sorry, Natsuo and Nikki. Although I have always trusted myself, aren't you overestimating me a little? Right now, the Nine Tails are still raging inside me, looking like it wants to kill you. Natsuo, however, smiled indifferently, then glanced meaningfully at Naruto. Although the plot had been disrupted by himself, Naruto had become a regular at the clubhouse. But perhaps this inheritor of Asura could really make the tail beast completely change their ways. After comforting Naruto a few more times, he left. Naruto, however, stared at Natsuo's figure in silence. It wasn't until Natsuo's figure completely disappeared that he relaxed and spoke up. Natsuo and Nikki, thank you. Back then, Natsuo was one of the few adults who didn't discriminate against him. The entire Kanoha, the third Hokage, and even Jiraiya, all had their doubts about Naruto. Only Natsuo knew everything, but still accepted him, and even taught him many precious ninjutsu. Guiding his training he touched his stomach, where the seal marks made him silent. That was the source of his pain. But since Natsuo said that the tail beasts are a good bunch, Naruto fell silent for a moment and whispered, All right, Nine Tails, stop causing trouble. Natsuo and Nikki has already left. However, the Nine Tails within his mind continued to roar madly. I'm going to kill him. Kill him, you Uchiha bastard, if you have the guts come in again. Let's see if I can slaughter you. Hey, kid, go find that bastard and tell him to come in again. I'm going to kill him. Crazy roars, the anger inside can be felt even through the seal. Naruto said with a helpless expression. Natsuo already pinned you down and rubbed you on the ground even if he comes back. It will be the same your companion. The Eight Tails was also brutally beaten by Natsuo and Nikki. The Nine Tails angrily said. That's because I was split into two by that damn fourth Hokage. Only the Yang attribute remains in your seal. If I were in my complete state, he wouldn't be my match. Naruto mutters softly. But Natsuo and Nikki is the strongest in the Shinobi world. He defeated the Ab from Kumogaka combination. That worried the fourth Hokage back then. And even in your full state, you couldn't defeat the fourth Hokage. How are you going to fight Natsuo and Nikki? What did you say? The Nine Tails voice suddenly rises. I said the Nine Tails is the strongest. The Nine Tails is the most formidable. The Nine Tails is the most amazing. Don't speak so loudly, it's very noisy. How about this? I'll invite you to club. Let's be friends, okay? I'm not interested in human women. I see Naruto rubs his chin, pondering for a moment, then brightens up. How about I find you a female fox? But it seems a bit difficult to find a fox as big as you. Naruto is caught in a dilemma, not knowing where to find a fox of Nine Tails size. Nine Tails. He remained silent for three seconds, then burst into a louder roar. Damn kid. Into the seal. Not only will I kill that damn Achiha, I'll kill you too. Although Kanoha suffered some losses in this great shinobi world war, it was far from being crippled. Just looking at the students of the ninja school obediently staying in school was enough to prove this. Back then, the third Hokage had repeatedly drawn students from the ninja school to reinforce the front lines. Tsunade's actions have also won the hearts of the people of Kanoha. What kind of combat power can the students of the ninja school have? Not everyone is like Kakashi who graduated at the age of five. The third Hokage was completely using the new blood of Kanoha as cannon fodder. Therefore, they all praised Tsune for having the same magnanimity as the first Hokage, and inheriting the will of fire from the first Hokage. The first Hokage established the Shinobi village to keep children from going to war. As a result, the third Hokage reversed history, and now the great fifth Hokage has finally set things right. Kumogaka was also unable to resist Jiraiya's attack. As the only remaining cage-level expert in Kumogaka, Naya Yujido eventually managed to suppress the internal turmoil in Kumogaka, and then opted to surrender to Kanoha in the hopes of being able to redeem the Eight Tails Jinchuriki and the Fourth Rakage. This also indicated that Kanoha had gained the absolute initiative in this great shinobi world war. This is the role of top-level experts. The Kanoha shinobi looked at the Eight Tails, and then towards the Ichiha clan, deeply moved. If the first Hokage had chosen to join forces with Ichiha Madara to unify the world, I'm afraid the entire world would have bowed down to a great Kanoha. If Natsuo had a favorability system he could constantly see the next notification. Ichiha's reputation plus one by the way, at this time, Killer B is still in the state of the Eight Tails. So many days have passed, and of course, he has long since regained consciousness. But it is not known if it is because he does not want to show himself or for some other reason. Killer B, however, didn't move at all. He didn't even try to transform and see if he could escape the seal. 
Although as a village that inherited all the sealing techniques of the Yuzumaki clan, Kanoha shouldn't have forgotten something so simple. But without even trying to figure it out, it's clear that something is wrong with his mentality. He didn't even try to rap, which is his favorite thing to do. He just sat silently at the entrance to Kanoha. This situation caused the Kumogaka envoys to fall silent, sighing one after another, fully realizing the current situation of their village and accepting that they will have to make even greater concessions in the upcoming negotiations. After a few more days, the negotiations with Sunagaka finally ended, and they signed an agreement with Kanoha. Similar to what Natsuo expected, Rich Kanoha didn't care about the resources plundered by Sunagaka. Even Tsunade, who was furious, only symbolically demanded compensation to end it. Obviously, Tsunade wanted to end the negotiations with Sunagaka, with minimal damage due to Rasa, and she also planned to recover all of Kanoha's losses from Kumogaka and Awagaka. However, Kumogaka who was excessively weakened is likely to become food for other shinobi villagers. In order to monopolize the benefits as much as possible and reduce the income of other villagers, Sune cannot weaken Kumogaka excessively, but can hit Awagaka a little harder. Jiraiya's transfer order has been prepared, just waiting for the peace treaty to be signed, and then he will specifically go and fight Anoki. But all of this is Tsunade's job. Apart from listening to her complaints every night, Natsuo is not interested in this. What's more important is that Naruto and Sasuke have graduated from the ninja school. This means that the Naruto series has officially begun although as a consequence of his transmigration, almost the entire plot has completely collapsed. Natsuo doesn't know the direction of Naruto and Sasuke's fate. They graduated successfully and are very happy, so they decided to celebrate with their ninja school class classmates. The little guys naturally chose a green grass field belonging to the Ichiha clan as the venue for their celebration. Of course, those in charge of all the preparations are not the little ones, but the servants and chefs of the Ichiha clan who prepared a barbecue buffet. Also joining the banquet were some of Natsuo's older children with Yukino, Yugao, and some of his wives who were free. Naruto stood on the table and began to boast about his glorious history, such as punching Mizuki and kicking Aruka. He even declared that he would go to the front lines and return as a great hero to become Hokage. Kinohamaru, who was brought along as a family member, was excited and asked, Naruto Ani, are you finally going to embark on your legendary ninja journey? That's right. Naruto said without hesitation, I will definitely achieve great things. Shikamaru looked at him and advised, Naruto, it's really troublesome the battlefield, it's very dangerous. Genin like us should not directly participate in the battle. But Naruto's gaze was firm. No, I already asked Natsuo and Nikki to speak for me. I must be able to receive a challenging mission so I can earn a lot of money. What's wrong, Naruto? Are you missing money? Yukino asked, looking a little worried. Since she was very aware of Naruto's life experience due to what Natsuo had told her, of course there is a shortage. The Achiha club is just too expensive cough, cough. Naruto almost blurted out his true feelings and quickly forced himself to say, the higher the reward for a mission, the more dangerous it is. As the future six Hokage, I must prove my worth to everyone. Sham PH, idiot. Sasuke still had a cold and aloof demeanor. With your level, you'll wet your pants as soon as you step onto the battlefield. But when that happens, you can call on me to save you. As a member of the Achiha clan, heir to the strongest lineage in the shinobi world, I will give you a hand as a token of my generosity for having been my classmate even if you are the worst student. Sasuke, you jerk. Naruto was furious, showing his teeth and claws. Looks like I'll have to show you how amazing I am. The two started fighting again, while Goro encouraged them to intensify the fight. Noticing Goro who only wanted the world to be in chaos, Natsuo decided that his punishment for his latest recklessness should be extended. But Natsuo still watched all this with a smile. Whether it was Naruto or Sasuke, they both had a desire to be extraordinary. They both independently chose to go to the most dangerous front lines. According to Sasuke, he planned to establish the reputation of the Ichiha clan from this moment on. Although Natsuo had already been recognized as the strongest in the shinobi world, but regaining the glory of the Ichiha clan was supposed to be Sasuke's task, according to the initial task assignment. Because Sasuke claimed that he would eventually defeat Natsuo and strengthen the reputation of the Ichiha clan. As for Natsuo, he would simply devote himself honestly to reviving the Ichiha clan. The dirty and exhausting work should fall into his hands. Natsuo was relieved by this. Although Sasuke still feels that he must redeem himself for what Itachi did to the clan, this shows that he will not be consumed by hatred and revenge like in the Naruto series. On the other hand, Natsuo's wife smiled at Sasuke because of his words, even if they were just the comforting words of a child. So they served him many delicious dishes. And although Natsuo was considered the strongest in the shinobi world, many did not want his loved ones to go to dangerous battlefields. Especially after Tsune joined the Achiha clan, they learned from her about the risk of blindness, when using the Achiha clan's Manjekia Sharingan. Yukino and the others tested Natsuo's vision every few days, fearing that one day they would wake up and discover that her husband had gone blind. Sasuke also showed great respect for Natsuo's wives and treated his children very well, although some of them drove him crazy. But the fact that Sasuke maintained this respectful attitude also made Sakura envious. It's really nice. Sakura looked at Sasuke, 
who was so obedient to Natsuo's wives and so tolerant of the children. She couldn't help but say, although Natsuo and Nikki has so many wives, Sasuke is polite to each and every one of them. On the contrary, towards me. Sakura's mouth twitched as she remembered Sasuke's gaze towards her. It was as if he completely ignored her. This kind of disregard was even more unbearable than hostility. Actually, apart from Natsuo or rather people related to Natsuo, such as Naruto, Niji, Natsuo's wives and children, Sakura didn't notice that Sasuke had any special attitude towards anyone else. It was as if everything else didn't matter to him. And the one person Sasuke cared about the least was definitely Sakura herself. So how can I attract Sasuke and improve my relationship with him? Sakura fell into deep thought. In times like these, learning from those who came before is the best choice. He looked at Sasuke, who treated Natsuo's wives with respect, and tolerated the pranks of Natsuo's sons. So the best method is, should I also marry Natsuo? As a girl with a peculiar thought process, Sakura was actually seriously considering this question. However, just three seconds later, Sakura snapped back to reality, and her face instantly turned red. Marry Natsuo and Nikki, so she can later marry Sasuke. What kind of absurd idea is this? What the hell am I thinking? She exclaimed. Forget it. Forget it all. She slapped her own cheeks as if the rosy color on her face was caused by her own slaps rather than natural embarrassment. This attracted the attention of countless people. What is Sakura doing? I don't know, probably complaining about some weird things again. She still wants to compete with me for Sasuke like this. Ino, Shikamaru, Kiba, and others looked at her with strange eyes. Only Choji remained focused on his goal as always. Ah, chef, the meat looks good. Please give me 10 servings. Thank you. Natsuo has always lived a quiet life even after becoming the strongest in the ninja world. He continued to work hard to revive the Achiha clan, spending his days with his wives and children. However, no matter how peaceful his life may be, the reputation of being the strongest in the ninja world should never be underestimated. After a while, Naruto came over and said sneakily, Natsuo Niki, Natsuo Niki. Hum, Natsuo looked over. How about becoming my teacher? Naruto's eyes were full of excitement. Since we're graduating, we need a teacher. Natsuo Niki, why don't you teach us? Natsuo blinked his eyes. Who are you referring to? Of course it's me the number one person in the ninja school, and Sasuke, who always lags behind, and Sakura. Naruto said confidently, Don't worry, we'll definitely be the best students. We'll listen obediently. With you around, we'll definitely be able to complete the most difficult missions on the battlefield, and become the most shining stars of Konoha. Naruto said, holding onto Natsuo's thigh with a pleading expression. Natsuo's mouth twitched. Never mind when you became the number one in the school. But when did Sasuke become a laggard? I don't want to go to the battlefield. Natsuo casually said, I just came back from there. What's the use of killing so many people? Can you give me some girls? You have your own teacher. I don't want to accompany kids on missions. Natsuo waved his hand. It's too troublesome. Do you know who our teacher is? Natsuo and Nikki. Sasuke walked over and asked curiously. Unlike Naruto, he had known for a long time that it was impossible for Natsuo to be his teacher. With his personality it is impossible for him to leave Konoha. Even if Natsuo was willing, Sasuke wouldn't be. What would happen to the Achiha's revival if he didn't work hard? Did they not need new blood for the clan anymore? As for the selection of the teacher, it is naturally confidential to the students. But for high-ranking and influential ninjas who want to know the teachers of their own children, it is really simple. Not only the team leader, but also the selection of teammates assigned by the Hokujin principle, the wishes of high-level ninjas, will also be an important reference. Privileges everywhere. I know, he is considered a master, and he can easily rank in the top five in Konoha Natsuo casually said. He is the direct disciple of the fourth Hokage back then. Of course, it is Kakashi. Kakashi has connections to Naruto's father and Sasuke's clan. His own strength is also reliable. Although he is not yet at the level of Cage, he has grown a lot in this shinobi world war. He belongs to the top level ninja of Konoha, but Naruto and Sasuke, who have a broader vision, don't think highly of Kakashi. Not even second place in the top five. Sasuke's expression was a bit unfriendly, and Naruto also looked disappointed. We were taught by the strongest ninja in the ninja world, Natsuo. The gap is really too big. The two unanimously decided to simply follow Kakashi and carry out the missions. If they have time, they will have to invite Natsuo to teach. How can Kakashi compare to Natsuo? What about teammates? Who are my teammates? Sasuke asked. You and Naruto and Sakura. Natsuo doesn't want to change this iron triangle combination. The other teams have changed. Ino Shikicho has been separated directly. Hinata has joined Ino after the separation and Tenten, who volunteered to lead a team on the front line, has been transferred. This forms a new combination. Originally, Tsune did not plan to split up Ino Shikicho, but she couldn't refuse when Niji volunteered. Although he is young, Niji possesses the Haiga clan's bloodline secret technique, knowledge gained from training with Natsuo, and strength surpassing that of a Jonin. He is more than capable of being an excellent team leader, especially after Niji stood up against the Kirishinobi, displaying a strong personality, his prestige in Kanoha 
Shirohiro has further increased. Because of this and Natsuo's support, Tsunade agreed to give in to his request. As for why Niji insists on bringing three girls on his team with him, Niji is a clever person. He even wants to marry his cousin Hanata and Hanabi to Natsuo. Would he be afraid of getting more disciples? However, when Natsuo mentioned the team assignments, Sakura's eyes lit up. Ino let out a sigh but immediately felt lucky. Although the Ino Shikicho trio has natural coordination and a level of trust that surpasses others, she really doesn't want to be with Shikamaru, who is always complaining, and Choji, who is constantly eating. As for Naruto how wonderful, Naruto immediately became excited. Although he had tasted sweetness at the club more than once, Sakura was still his first love. He wasn't as obsessed as before, but being on the same team with her was obviously a good thing. Sasuke, on the other hand, frowned and looked dissatisfied at Sakura. Sakura, don't hold me back. Naruto was one thing, Although he couldn't beat him, he was indeed not weak. But what was Sakura? Coming from a common family, she was below average in any ninjutsu, jinjutsu, or tajutsu. Her theoretical knowledge was strong, but can theory kill enemies? Sakura's smile froze. Sasuke, I Natsuo sighed lightly. No, Sasuke, you underestimate Sakura too much. I always thought Sakura was a hidden talent. Her talent should not be underestimated, right, Sakura? As he spoke, he rubbed Sakura's head with one hand, his eyes shining. Sakura was also a genius. Despite her unpleasant character of being alone thinking about love, she was the only Kinoichi among the protagonists of the Naruto series, who kept up with Naruto in the final stages. Upon hearing this, Sakura felt somewhat moved. She didn't know her own talent, but she knew how much Sasuke despised her. Naruto may welcome her on the surface, but in reality, she doesn't like the idea that she is just a teammate without any strength. What Natsuo recognizes is her own potential. Yes. Natsuo and Nikki. Sakura is energized. I will work hard. Sasuke furrows his brow, not thinking that Sakura plays any significant role. But since Natsuo spoke, he casually said to Sakura, I understand. So, Sakura, work hard to become stronger. It doesn't matter if you can't get stronger. Regardless of the teammate, it won't affect my performance. Sasuke is always confident. Not far away Hinata-sama. Please have this. Niji presented the freshly grilled meat from the chef, and handed it over. Thank you, Niji Nai-san. Hinata's face blushed slightly as she silently accepted it. But I can do this myself. No, this is also my duty. Niji smiled and said, Natsuo-sama told me that he feels like you've always seen hungry. So he specifically asked me to have the chef prepare more for you. Hinata-sama, in the Achiha clan, you can eat to your heart's content and enjoy a good meal. Upon hearing this, Hinata's face blushed showing both shyness and embarrassment. As a top noble family in Kanoha, the Hayuga clan has always upheld aristocratic etiquette. They don't speak while eating and have several procedures for every meal. Hinata, who has been reminded since childhood not to eat too quickly, not to eat too much, as it goes against etiquette, has always been in a state of not being able to eat enough. Not because of the lack of food in the Hayuga clan, but because Hinata is a hidden big eater. Kinoha once held an Ichiraku Raymond eating contest with a time limit of 30 minutes. Naruto, who loves Raymond the most, ate 30 bowls. Yamato, However, overwhelmed Naruto with a score of 31 bowls. But what surprised everyone was that Hinata won overwhelmingly with 46 bowls, completely surpassing both of them. Even though Ichiraku Raymond held eating contests multiple times in the future, with even participants like Akamichi Choji and his father, the most anyone could eat was around 42 bowls. Hinata was also known as the queen of big eaters. However, 46 bowls were not actually Hinata's true capacity. After all, the time limit was 30 minutes, and this time she wasn't intentionally restricting herself. With this capacity, the Hyuga clan, which demands high table manners, naturally couldn't meet Hinata's needs. So some people have said that Hinata actually had amazing talent, but unfortunately, the rigid rules of the Hyuga clan limited her development. However, Hinata's face turned red. Eating so much clearly didn't conform to her education. Even Niji Naino's steam rose from her head. Hinata struggled hard trying to salvage her ladylike image. Um, Niji Nai, actually, what Natsuo heard was just a rumor. I'm a delicate girl. How could I eat so much? Niji, Natsuo-sama said that when you come to the Achihas, just relax as if you're at home. Don't be polite. If you're polite, it means you treat him as an outsider. Hinata, even delicate girls can't give up their pursuit of good food. Niji Nai, please help me ask the chef to grill three more servings. Niji stood there dumbfounded, taking a while to react. He quickly ran to the chef's area, but after taking three steps, he couldn't help but turn back. Hinata-sama is something not right. Natsuo, come and try this. Tamari ran over quickly. This is something I personally did here. A.H. Tilda 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 saying that, with an eager expression, she picked up a piece of roast meat and brought it to Natsuo's mouth. Natsuo, of course, didn't hesitate and took a bite. Is it delicious? It's quite tasty. He, that's great. Tamari's face immediately lit up with a smile, her cheeks slightly blushing. I've been practicing for a long, long time to master the perfect cooking time. If Natsuo says it's delicious, then my efforts weren't in vain. Saying that, she twisted her body slightly and giggled as she ran off. Then I'll grill another portion for you. This one will definitely be even more delicious. 
The whole process was full of enthusiasm. Natsuo, is this still the stunning Tamari? What have you done, Rasa? But acknowledging Rasa's efforts, Natsuo said in his mind, Very well done, Rasa. Although many people may not like the excessive enthusiasm and find it strange, but that is mainly due to the overly artificial tone and unnatural way of speaking. But as the leader of a village, Rasa obviously had a large amount of manpower and resources, and successfully raised Tamari to be perfect in all aspects. Although it may not seem like a good adjective, actually experiencing Tamari's enthusiasm feels really refreshing. On the other side Niji was just getting his fifth serving of grilled meat from the chef. Don't misunderstand, the meaning of Hinata's three more servings is not that she can only eat three servings. It's because the meat won't taste good once it gets cold. So before the meat cools down, she can only eat three servings. So eat and then get more. Niji has already made five trips back and forth each time with three servings of meat. Niji was already numb. So Hinata's talent may really be very strong. Look at how she suppresses her appetite on a daily basis. With such a huge appetite, even if Hinata can secretly buy some food outside to replenish her energy, it is obvious that most of the time she will be in a hungry state. However, even in this starved state, he can still maintain his current strength. Niji was surprised as he pondered in his mind. Could it be that Hinata is the strongest genius in the Hayuga clan? As Niji served Hinata food, he began to casually chat with her. The reason he had been following Hinata all this time was not because of Hiyashi's order to take care of her, but because he hoped Hinata would support him in changing the Hayuga clan. As the legitimate daughter of the main family, Hinata's status naturally gained the support of many Hayuga clan members. If she supported him, the coup to change the Hayuga clan would be much easier. Hinata and her younger sister Hanabi have a good relationship. By using the reason that her sister would sooner or later be branded with the caged bird, then Niji should be able to gain her support to change the family division of the Hayuga clan. Then Niji began to subtly guide the conversation, complaining about the main family and branch family system. As a ninja of the branch family, it is quite normal to complain about the Hayuga family system. Even though Hinata is young, she is aware of the grievances within the branch family. So it is natural for her to express a few complaints, but that's as far as she can go. After all, she is just a newly graduated Kinoichi. She can't even resist her father Hiyashi. So what else can she do? Seeing this, Niji starts to probe further. Lady Hinata, I heard that Hiyashi-sama has not yet decided on the heir to the main family. If you were to win, what would happen to Hanabi? Upon hearing this, Hinata immediately bites her lip. She is full of reluctance, sinking into silence. Hanabi is her younger sister, and she really doesn't want her sister's life to be marked by the cautiousness and subservience of the branch family where she would be scolded by the main family in the future and dare not argue back. Niji sees that there is a chance and quickly encourages her. He talks about the oppression of the branch family by the main family. As Hanata listens, her heart becomes heavier and heavier. But contrary to what Niji thinks, she still does not stand up and try to resist the family system. In fact, as Niji talks more and more, she appears to be somewhat relieved. Oh no, Niji's heart sinks. He knows about the sisterly bond between Hinata and Hanabi, and that she would never give up on her sister. So the reason for her current relief is Hinata has decided to give up her position in the main family, and intends to hand over the Hayuga to her sister Hanabi thus making Hanabi the head of the main family. There is no other explanation. Hanata has always been repressed by the rules of the Hayuga clan, and being submissive is the image of her. Instead of letting her sister become a caged bird, she plans to endure it all. This is the choice of the kind but weak Hinata. But it's not the choice Niji expected. But what else can Niji say? Hinata is not someone who can be a leader. She is used to being submissive, used to her father Hiyashi's strictness, and used to the oppression of the many rules of the Hayuga clan. Her kindness alone is not enough to change all of this. As Niji was losing hope with Hinata, he suddenly remembered something. Hum, wait, I remember Hinata's look at Natsuo just now. Maybe I can try a different approach. Niji squinted his eyes as if chatting casually, and gave a bitter smile to Hinata. Sorry, Lady Hinata, it seems like I've had a bit to drink today and said something inappropriate. It's okay, Niji and Nikki the family branch has suffered too much. Hinata said hurriedly, it's not much suffering. Niji forced a smile. It's just that the branch family has a hard time finding suitable partners. Despite the reputation of the Hayuga clan, we are not well received in the marriage market. Many people despise the curse mark. Caged bird on the branch family's forehead, considering it ugly and lowly, representing servitude. Hinata fell into a slight silence. Niji, of course, Lady Hinata doesn't need to worry about this, but it's different for Hanabi. With Hiyashi's personality, even if Hanabi doesn't want to, he will forcibly marry her off to a talented Hayuga clan member from the branch family. Hinata became even more silent, biting her lips slightly. Niji, I heard that Natsuo had wanted to marry a Kinochi of the Hayuga clan before, saying that he found the pure white eyes of the Hayuga clan very charming, and that he really hoped to have a Hayuga as his wife, is this true? Hinata's eyes lit up, grabbing Niji's wrist, and her eyes filled with anticipation. Niji's mouth curled up subtly, but his face expressed regret. Yes, there is such a thing. 
But it was rejected by Hiyashi-sama. Father rejected it. Yes, Hiyashi-sama believed back then that if a Kunoichi of the Haige clan married Natsuo, it would be a disgrace for the clan. Although now Natsuo has become the strongest ninja in the world, Hiyashi-sama has not changed his mind. It seems that Natsuo will never marry anyone from the Hayuga clan. Saying this, Niji sighed repeatedly, shaking his head. Hinata heard this, and her eyes became even more dim, and she gradually became despondent. In other words, even if I am willing, I cannot marry Natsuo, right? Hinata's eyes were lifeless, and she seemed to have lost all her strength. Even the meat she was holding in her hand fell to the ground. Niji whispered softly at his side. Sigh, the Hayuga clan. But before he could finish speaking, Hinata grabbed Niji's wrist. Niji and Nikki. Hinata's face was full of fighting spirit, her eyes burning with flames. I think you're absolutely right the Hayuga clan cannot continue to decline like this. Let's change the decaying Hayuga together. Niji and Nikki, you are the first genius of the branch family, becoming a Jonin at the young age of 13. You must have a way, right? Although I have nothing but my identity as a member of the main family. I really want to support you and give the Hayuga clan a better tomorrow, Hinata said, her face serious, filled with the flames of determination. The corners of Niji's mouth couldn't help but curl up. He never thought it would really be so easy to convince her. Then he knelt on one knee in front of Hinata. Hinata-sama, as you wish. While in his mind he said, Natsuo-sama, your charm is truly irresistible. So, Hinata intends to resist her father in order to marry me. Natsuo heard Niji's report after the banquet. He was a little confused. Yes, Niji could only smile and say, Natsuo-sama truly is the most charming man in the shinobi world. Even a Hayuga clan's young miss couldn't escape your grasp. Natsuo remembered that he didn't have much interaction with Hinata. It seemed like he had only helped her a few times before, acting like a trusted older brother in comforting her. In the plot of the Naruto series, she falls in love with Naruto in that way. But he did not believe that she would fall in love with him without the protagonist's aura. At most she wanted to accumulate goodwill as one of her many contingency measures at the time. With such limited interaction, how did Hanata fall in love with him? So much so that it gave him the courage to even resist his father, Hayuga Hiyashi. With Hanata's personality that's surprising enough. So now you plan to accelerate your plans with the Hayuga clan. Natsuo lowered his head and looked at Niji. Yes. Niji nodded. My prestige within the Hayuga clan is already quite good. If Natsuo-sama helps me release the caged bird of several experts from the Hayuga branch family, my prestige will further increase. With Hanata-sama's help, the pressure from the main family will also be greatly reduced. Actions can be accelerated further. Helping the experts of the Hayuga clan's family branch free themselves from the caged bird is not difficult. But you are still no match for Hiyashi in terms of strength. Natsuo said bluntly, Public opinion can influence emotions, but in the end, shinobi depend on strength. I won't help you with this, you should understand. Yes, strength is indeed a big problem. Niji also felt a bit troubled. I am still too young. The current Niji is only 13 years old. But he already possesses Jonin level strength. This is already quite exaggerated. Considering that Kakashi, one of Kanoha's greatest geniuses, before becoming decadent was at this level. Niji has really worked hard. He is extremely talented and diligent enough to practice day and night even actively going to the front lines, hoping to gain combat experience. But even so, compared to Hayuga Hiyashi, who is an elite Jonin with years of experience, he is still far behind. The branch family members can contain the main family members, but the most crucial enemy still needs to be solved by Niji himself. Otherwise, his actions would be meaningless. Without the ability to wield great power and influence in the Hayuga clan, Natsuo would also have no reason to help Niji. Perhaps you can consider some shortcuts. Natsuo pondered for a moment and said, You know, the Dejutsu of the Hayuga clan can actually evolve even further. Advancement. Baikigan. Niji was taken aback. Yes, just as the Manjekia Sharingan is an advancement of the Sharingan, the Byakugan also has great development potential, Natsuo nodded. He was referring to the Tensigan. However, the Tensigan is comparable to the Rinnegan, and Natsuo doesn't know how realistic it would be for Niji to obtain it. The possibility is relatively low. Niji pondered. The Hayuga clan has a deep heritage and some records. He decided that after returning, he would search the records of the Hayuga clan. Natsuo was not in a hurry. With Niji's talent, in a few more years, he would definitely advance to elite Jonin and be able to fight Hiyashi. Sasuke and Naruto both entered the battlefield. Of course, their team leader Kakashi was helpless. The two problem kids on the team were not well behaved at all, especially when it came to bothering their teacher. During the bell-stealing exercise, he was careless and thought that facing two Jonin was nothing. As a result, he was almost beaten by Sasuke and Naruto's corporation. Later, he couldn't help but ask them why they were so strong and where they learned such advanced ninjutsu. The two said in unison, Natsuo and Nikki taught it to us. And so, the small team was established. Then, Kakashi hoped to start with some small tasks and accumulate experience before going to the battlefield. But the two of them insisted on showing off their skills on the battlefield. With a serious face, Kakashi told them that they were still genin, and did not have the strength to go to the battlefield. Due to the influence of Natsuo and Tsunade, Kakashi was ultimately forced to take them to the front line against Kumogaka 
which was not completely peaceful, but had the least amount of conflict, in hopes of reducing the risk. Meanwhile, Natsuo completely ignored the commotion outside, and quietly enjoyed his home life. After Natsuo worked hard for a while, Tsunade finally became pregnant. Not only Tsunade, but his other wives also became pregnant. While he still continued to use the Renshu no Kenkei to strengthen Yukino, Yugao, Kurunai and other of his first wives, and the ones he trusted the most. On the other hand, Gurun and other of his wives also had children. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 195, you have gained chakra plus 17, six parts chakra. Gurun is not weak in talent, lineage, or strength. For her to receive an evaluation of 195 is very rare and valuable. Now, Natsuo is roughly equivalent to the combination of Senju Hashirama and Achiha Madara during the Valley of the End battle. For him now, Ninjutsuo only means to enrich himself without playing a decisive role. What can make him truly strong is first, skills from other worlds after breaking through the potential of 200. Secondly, special Keke Genkai, Shinjutsu, or high-level techniques from the world of Naruto. For example, Rinnegan, Tensigen, Yumotsu Hirasaka. Omnipotence Natsuo narrowed his eyes. Then he felt how all his chakra was mobilized to mix with the six parts chakra. A unique feeling arose from within. Unique chakra surged from an unknown source. A powerful surge collided with his chakra. The moment they met, they fused without any barriers. Natsuo slowly opened his eyes. In his eyes, the original Manjekyo Sharingan pattern disappeared, leaving behind dark purple pupils in the shape of a six-path circle. Finally I have obtained the Rinnegan. Now that I have managed to awaken the Rinnegan, there are few people left who can pose a threat to me. Natsuo pondered for a moment. Maybe I should start searching for traces of Otsutsuki Asiki in advance. Otsutsuki Asiki traveled to the Shinobi world many centuries ago, along with Otsutsuki Kagaya, with the goal of planting a god tree and harvesting its chakra fruit. He possesses and controls a second ten tails, which is imprisoned in a special dimension. Using Jaijin's identity, he founds Kara, which is an enigmatic organization made up of mysterious members, and the main antagonists of the series Boruto, Naruto Next Generations. The Kara organization is divided into two groups, inners and outers. Natsuo doesn't know the current situation of the inner team. After all, the members of Kara's inner team in the Boruto series are all modified humans, and at this time when even the ninja scientific tools have not been born, they obviously do not have the ability to modify the human body. But Natsuo still remembered that the bounty stations are associated with Kara. The outer team established trading points on the black market, where bounty hunters collect rewards for their names in the bingo book. Let's try to find it. Natsuo mused. After all, the god tree and the ten tails, they are very valuable things. Of course, this kind of thing should definitely be handed over to Konoha. As the strongest village in the shinobi world, it is the most suitable candidate to investigate the Kara organization. In addition, Natsuo will give them access to all the resources and connections of the Achiha clan to achieve this. Sunagaka was the first village to end the war with Konoha. Both parties are very satisfied with this, especially Sunagaka. Although they have sacrificed some benefits, overall, this shinobi world war was a rare great gain for Sunagaka. In the past, Sunagaka had always been defeated in various ways but this time it can truly be considered a victory for them. There were very few casualties and many gains. If we don't count the war reparations that Kanoha will force Awagaka to pay in the future, Sunagaka is the biggest winner of this shinobi world war. Natsuo even heard that the daimyo of the Land of Wind was shocked by Sunagaka's performance, and began to provide them with sufficient funds again. It should be noted that the reason Sunagaka joined Operation Destroy Kanoha was because the daimyo of the Land of Wind reduced its funding, forcing Sunagaka to take unconventional measures. Now, Rasa finally doesn't have to work hard every day to mine and sell gold. Furthermore, the other reward promised by Sunagaka was also given to Natsuo. Forbidden Technique, One's Own Life Reincarnation, this is one of only two resurrection ninjutsu known in the Naruto series. Although the cost is equally huge, its value is not small. However, unlike the outer path samsara of heavenly life technique, the rebirth of one's own life reincarnation requires a large amount of chakra, and uses one's own chakra as a means to give life to others. After receiving the technique, Natsuo called Yakushi Kabuto. Kabuto, contact Orochimaru. Natsuo looked at the man in glasses in front of him. Yakushi Kabuto was a little confused. He had been staying at the Achiha clan's research center for too long, discussing scientific advances and developing new products with Natsuo every day. He had even forgotten that he was still Orochimaru's subordinate. Oh, are you looking for Orochimaru-sama? Yakushi Kabuto was surprised, then quickly smiled. I understand. Do you need me to invite Orochimaru-sama to a specific place? But if I may be frank with Natsuo-sama's power, Orochimaru-sama may not dare to come and see you. Yakushi Kabuto hesitated. After all, during the Operation Destroy Kanoha, Natsuo had indeed fought Orochimaru. Although they couldn't be called enemies, they were clearly not friends. Natsuo then went on to defeat many powerful shinobi over the next period of time, 
gaining a great reputation. Orochimaru he might not dare to meet him. No need, just pass the message to him. Natsuo waved his hand dismissively. I just want to make a deal with him. What kind of deal? Yakushi Kabuto summoned a messenger snake while asking. I want his summoning. In pure world reincarnation Natsuo's words made Yakushi Kabuto freeze. In pure world reincarnation that was Orochimaru-sama's biggest trump card. How could he easily give it to someone else? But if Natsuo-sama forcefully demanded it, don't misunderstand, it's not for me to learn, it's for you to learn. Natsuo glanced at Yakushi Kabuto's expression and sneered. I'm not interested in the power of the ancient shinobi, but I am interested in themselves. Consider it as me training one of Orochimaru's subordinates. I'll pay the tuition for you to learn. While speaking, Natsuo offered a reward of 500 million ryo. Yakushi Kabuto fell into a slight silence. Although Kanoha's attention was quickly focused on the major invading shinobi villages, but as one of the triggers of the Great Shinobi World War, Tsunade never gave up her pursuit of Orochimaru. As his teammate who understood him the most, Tsunade directly hit Orochimaru's actual heel. Money. According to Yakushi Kabuto's knowledge, Orochimaru was currently facing a severe shortage of research funds. If Natsuo demanded the impure world reincarnation for his own study, Orochimaru-sama might actually agree. Just Natsuo-sama, what do you want to do with impure world reincarnation? Yakushi Kabuto reminded, impure world reincarnation requires part of the DNA of the person who wants to be reincarnated, in order to perform the summoning. If you want to summon the second Hokage to help you with your research, Orochimaru-sama will not give up that part of the DNA. The second Hokage is a great force. Orochimaru will not give away this trump card. I'm not interested in the second Hokage. Natsuo looked at Yakushi Kabuto and said, The impure world reincarnation can control people summoned in battle but it cannot control people to conduct research. Then what is the reason why I need to learn that technique? Yakushi Kabuto asked curiously. Natsuo calmly stated his plan. Yakushi Kabuto widened his eyes. Damn, can you play like this? Is this a chair extremism? So crazy then Yakushi Kabuto contacted Orochimaru. And Orochimaru was very interested in that plan, but he still tried to negotiate. Natsuo didn't care much either. Money is not a problem, but if he really dares to trick him, he can't blame Natsuo if he goes to his snake pit on a whim. In the end, both sides completed the transaction. At the end of the transaction, Yakushi Kabuto was called by Orochimaru. Before leaving, Natsuo also asked Yakushi Kabuto to ask Orochimaru if he is willing to develop technology that can make Kunoichi stronger. The price is not a problem. After all, the revival no. Two project that Yakushi Kabuto is responsible for has not made any breakthrough. So now Natsuo's handcuffs can only be strengthened through the Renshu no Kankei. Yakushi Kabuto had a strange expression as he thought. Not only me, even Orochimaru-sama is going to be treated as your worker. The Kumogaka delegation quickly completed peace talks with Kanoha. They paid a high price and finally redeemed the eight tails and the fourth Reiki J. When they saw Reiki J, they burst into tears on the spot. Additionally, before the eight tails were rescued, Natsuo had cut off one of its tails, leaving it sealed for future use. Now the combination ab is incomplete. This is an unprecedented defeat for Kumogaka. But the people of Kanoha did not feel pity. Instead, they all had a look of satisfaction. Damn Kumo Shinobi, they finally got what they deserved. Among the four great Shinobi villagers, the one that has been most hostile towards Kanoha has been Kumogaka. They even dare to lay hands on the Hayuga clan, let alone other Shinobi clans. While Tsunade organized troops to monitor Kumogaka, she also sent Jiraiya to support the battlefield against the Wagaka. Jiraiya is like a Kanoha brick, ready to be placed in any wall of trouble. Natsuo respects this. The reason why he can stay honestly in the Achiha compound and work hard for the revival of the Achiha clan is all because Jiraiya is carrying the burden for him. Natsuo raises his glass from afar while pondering. Wait Jiraiya, when you return victoriously, I will definitely give you a Rachiha Club Gold card as a gift, so you can play without worries. This is my respect for you. After saying that sentence in his mind, Natsuo poured out the alcohol, letting it seep into the ground. There is no other choice. He still has to work hard tonight to revive the Achiha clan. He can't drink alcohol, or it will reduce his efficiency. After that, he turned and entered the room. But it didn't take long before he came out again. Natsuo frowned, looking dissatisfied. He casually leaned against a pillar inside the Achiha clan residence, his eyes revealing the pattern of the Manjekyo Sharingan, emitting a faint sense of oppression as she silently observed the man in front of him. The man in front of him was wearing the uniform of Akatsuki, clearly young in terms of life force, but his face looked mature as if his body had been crushed by the weight of life. He gave off an extremely cold aura, like a cold and merciless killing weapon. He silently passed through Kanoha's protective barrier without attracting anyone's attention. He then arrived in front of Natsuo without anyone noticing him on his way. In the dark night, the moon was partially covered, and he was shrouded in darkness, as if he and Natsuo, who was in the moonlight, were people from two different worlds. We meet again, Natsuo. He spoke in a low voice. It's a shame Sasuke went to the front. If he knew you were back again, he'd probably regret his choice. After all, you left quickly last time, Natsuo said as he sighed. 
The incoming person is none other than Ichiha Atachi. Sasuke Ichiha Atachi sighed lightly. Sasuke's situation is not important. What is important is you, Natsuo. Those eyes although I have hesitated to believe it, you have in fact awakened the Manjekia Sharingan. Atachi said, looking at the Manjekia Sharingan symbol in Natsuo's pupils with a complex expression. Did he wake up when I exterminated the clan? His voice was low, full of complexity and guilt. No, it has nothing to do with you. Natsuo shook his head. I see Ichiha Atachi fell silent for a moment, his expression gloomy. Clearly, he didn't believe Natsuo's words. You've come to me now because you regret your choices back then. Natsuo glanced at Itachi. Your current expression doesn't resemble that of a cold-blooded clan annihilator. Maybe. Ichiha Itachi sighed lightly. But I no longer have the possibility of turning back. In the Ichiha clan there may be normal people. But all those who have awakened the Sharingan are extremists. Ichiha Shisui and Ichiha Itachi, seemingly the gentlest members of the Ichiha clan. But in reality, this kind of thinking that would rather sacrifice the entire clan to protect the village, is itself proof of obsession. In the end, I am also the purest Ichiha. Itachi sighed softly. The purest Ichiha, even if they realize they are wrong, they will not turn back. Or perhaps they will tell themselves that it is already too late to turn back and it is better to continue on a single-minded path. Ichiha Itachi's expression was complicated, but his eyes blinked and quickly regained composure. Shall we? Have you already known the reason why I annihilated the clan back then? Itachi asked. The third Hokage and Danzo, I have already avenged the Ichiha clan. Natsuo answered casually. You really understand among the members of the Ichiha clan, your eyes see the clearest. Itachi sighed softly, paused, and continued. Do you have any resentment towards me? With your strength, I should not be your opponent. I don't know if you hold any resentment towards the village. But if my death alone can dissipate your grudge, I can let you kill me. This is the main reason why Ichiha Itachi came here. Natsuo obviously knows too much. In the past, Itachi didn't care about Natsuo, as long as he didn't tell Sasuke about the annihilation of the clan. He didn't care if Natsuo knew the truth about the annihilation of the Ichiha clan. But now it's different. As the strongest in the shinobi world, what would Natsuo do if he knew the role the village played during the Ichiha clan genocide? Would he hold a grudge against the village and attack Konoha like Ichiha Madara did? If sacrificing his own life could solve this problem, Itachi would definitely not hesitate. Even if he now regrets his past actions, he still recognizes his identity as Konoha's shinobi Ichiha Itachi actually wanted to arrive earlier. But since his previous encounter with Natsuo, Kisum had started to behave strangely, and was much more alert than before. Itachi silently watched Natsuo, waiting for his response. Clearly, it is a matter of life and death for Itachi, but his expression still remains calm. This is Sasuke's mission. Natsuo shook his head. The two of us reached an agreement a long time ago. I am responsible for reviving the Ichiha clan, and he is responsible for restoring the glory of the Ichiha clan as well as solving the problems on your side. The corner of Itachi's mouth twitched as he thought. Let Sasuke regain the glory of the Ichiha clan. Aren't you the strongest in the shinobi world right now? Ask any random person if the Ichiha clan hasn't regained its glory. Yet in the end, Itachi hesitated for a moment, and then didn't say anything, just lowered his head. Thank you Natsuo. Natsuo is giving Sasuke the glory of killing the Ichiha clan trader. This is also Itachi's greatest wish. In his original plan, he hoped that Sasuke could become the hero of Konoha who killed the trader of the Ichiha clan. Natsuo, he suddenly spoke. After I am defeated by Sasuke, I will give you my eyes, you have been using yours for so long. They must be overburdened, right? Speaking, he had a sincere expression on his face. The extent to which Manjekyo Sharingan consumes eye power, no one knows better than him. Although the reason for Itachi's current condition is partly intentional on his part, expecting to die at the hands of Sasuke as a result of their confrontation. But the main reason is the consumption of the Manjekyo Sharingan. After Natsuo exposed his Manjekyo Sharingan, although it has only been a few months since the Great Shinobi World War, he first fought Turumi Mei, then eliminated Kumogaka, and then fought Rasa. Although it doesn't look like it, his eyes should have consumed a lot. And his own eyes are the last compensation that Itachi, as a sinner, can offer to one of the last surviving members of his clan. Ichiha Itachi said seriously, You should know that the vision lost due to the use of the Manjekyo Sharingan of our Ichiha clan can be restored by transplanting the eyes of an Ichiha with strong blood ties, thus awakening the eternal Manjekyo Sharingan, which eliminates the side effects of its use. Body damage and chakra drain are reduced to an imperceptible minimum level, and sight no longer suffers any damage. I originally intended to leave it to Sasuke, but now, my eyes can be left to you. As for how to leave them to Natsuo, Itachi didn't say it. But Itachi was sure that he had the ability to defeat Sasuke, as he successfully performed one last self-immolation drama and sent Natsuo his eyes. Natsuo, however, shrugged. No need. I don't intend to wear someone else's eyes. Don't you understand the consumption of Manjekyo Sharingan? Ichiha Itachi frowned. Or do you think you are really the strongest in the shinobi world now? 
Natsuo, the shinobi world is more complex than you think. Do you really think that only I, without the help of the Anbu members and Root, can quickly and silently kill the entire Chiha clan? A Chiha Atachi revealed directly, there was another person who was involved. He calls himself a Chiha Madara, also possesses the Manjekyo Shuringen, and his strength should not be underestimated. I have seen him use the abilities of the Manjekyo many times without any discomfort. He should have the legendary eternal Manjekyo Shuringen Natsuo, don't be arrogant. You may not be his match. Speaking of which, Ichiha Atachi's expression suddenly became serious. He was earnestly admonishing Natsuo, not just to express his goodwill, but also for the sake of Konoha. He didn't want Natsuo to be blinded by the title of the strongest in the shinobi world and become the next Ichiha Madara. However, Natsuo directly interrupted him and said, There is no single way to restore the eye power of the Manjekyo Shuringen. Ichiha Itachi was taken aback. He had made the difficult decision to give his eyes to Natsuo, since originally, this was the light intended for Sasuke. And now are there other methods? Yes, Natsuo said calmly. Hashirama's cells have a surprising effect in restoring eye power lost during the use of the Manjekyo Shuringen. Ichiha Madara used this method to counteract the side effects of the Manjekyo Shuringen. After hearing Natsuo's explanation, Atachi immediately believed him. Natsuo had fought successively, so theoretically he should have consumed a lot of eye power. But upon closer inspection, he did not show any side effects from overusing the power of the Manjekyo Shuringen. On the contrary, Itachi felt immense ocular power coming from Natsuo's eyes. Furthermore, with the information that Natsuo's battles lasted for a long time, cold it be that he used the method he just mentioned to fix the problems with the Manjekyo Shuringen. Is it Orochimaru's research achievement? Ichiha Itachi thought to himself. He had some vague understanding of the interaction between Orochimaru and Natsuo. Most of Otogika's Jonin level Kinoichi were sent to the Ichiha clan. Could it be that they all defected? Although he was curious, Atachi wouldn't foolishly ask about it. After all, information about his own strength was always the most important secret. But the eye power restored by this method should not compare to the power of the eternal Manjekyo Shuringen. Atachi earnestly advised. Natsuo, I hope you can replace your eyes with mine. The Manjekyo Shuringen is unlikely to be a match for the Eternal Manjekyo Shuringen. I before he could finish his words, Natsuo interrupted directly. The Eternal Manjekyo Shuringen, are you talking about this? The pattern in Natsuo's eyes suddenly became more complex. When Atachi saw the complex pattern in Natsuo's eyes, which was much more complicated than the pattern he initially saw, he was stunned. It seems that the ocular power in the eyes of that guy who calls himself a Chihamadara is much less than that of Natsuo. Is this the Eternal Manjekyo Shuringen? Atachi reflected in his mind. Natsuo said that Hashirama's cells can solve the side effects of the Manjekyo Shuringen without needing the eyes of another member of the Ichiha clan. Did he find another method to evolve the Manjekyo Shuringen? Atachi was sure that Natsuo didn't have a family member who could unlock the Manjekyo Shuringen. Then there is a way to evolve the Manjekyo Shuringen without implanting the eyes of another member of the Ichiha clan Atachi sighed inwardly. However, although Atachi did not know the specific method, he felt that the difficulty of evolving the Manjekyo Shuringen without eye implantation was countless times greater than that of advancing with an eye transplant. After all, if Natsuo's method was so simple, not only that method would have been known throughout the history of the Ichiha clan. Truly the strongest recognized in the shinobi world. Ichiha Itachi sighed in his heart, then said seriously, I see, it seems I misunderstood. However, Natsuo, even if you possess the eternal Manjekyo and your visual power will not be exhausted, the powerful people in the shinobi world are more hidden than you imagine. Itachi had a serious expression on his face. You may not know this, but after leaving the village, I joined an organization called Akatsuki, the leader of that organization possesses the Rinnegan. I have personally experienced the power of the Rinnegan, a power that far surpasses the Manjekyo, a power revered as that of a god, Ichiha Itachi sighed with emotion. In reality, he had never personally witnessed the might of the Rinnegan. However, Ichiha Itachi had indeed heard from other members of Akatsuki about the power displayed by the leader of Akatsuki when inviting others. Combined with the oppressive feeling he felt during each meeting, he spoke as if it were true. Ichiha Itachi actually did not believe that the power of the Rinnegan was far superior to the eternal Manjekyo Shuringen. Nor did he say these words to scare Natsuo. He still cared about Konoha, and didn't want Natsuo to become arrogant and tyrannical, like other Ichiha clan members causing harm to the village. However, what he didn't expect was the Rinnegan. Is this what you're talking about? In the next second, the pattern in Natsuo's eyes suddenly changed, and his pupils turned dark purple. Six circles appeared in his eyes as they gave off a strange sensation, and the surrounding cold ocular power also underwent a transformation. Ichiha Itachi finally couldn't maintain his composure, his face turned pale. The Rinnegan, how could you possess the Rinnegan? Ichiha Itachi's expression instantly changed. Having only a shallow understanding of the Rinnegan and knowing that it is extremely rare, Ichiha Itachi's first reaction was Natsuo. So you're the leader of Akatsuki Itachi's expression changed drastically, and he almost wanted to activate the Susanoo to fight Natsuo with his life. 
No wonder many people feel that Ichiha Natsuo is not as extreme as other Ichiha who have activated the Menjekyo Sharingan. They even suspected that he placed his extremism on reviving the Ichiha. It turns out that it was all an illusion. His true identity is actually the leader of the Akatsuki. He is the collaborator of Ichiha Madara. Natsuo was taken aback and instinctively wanted to laugh. But upon careful consideration, Ichiha Itachi's reaction seemed normal as well. The Rinnegan is extremely rare. Although there have always been legends of the Rinnegan in the Shinobi world, almost everyone believed it to be a false rumor. Even when Ichiha Itachi saw Nagato's Rinnegan with his own eyes, he thought the same. Seeing the Rinnegan, one of the rarest Dejutsu in Natsuo. The first thing one can think of is that this guy must be related to Nagato. Ichiha Itachi was about to unleash his chakra without hesitation. Although he didn't believe he was a match for the renowned Natsuo, even if he died, he would make a scene in front of countless Kanoa Shinobi. I absolutely cannot allow Natsuo's conspiracy to succeed. Ichiha Itachi roared in his mind, and a chakra structure quickly appeared around his body. However, before Susanu could take shape, Natsuo instantly appeared beside Ichiha Itachi and patted his shoulder. Don't worry. I have nothing to do with Akatsuki anymore. We used to have a business relationship, but now we don't even have that. Natsuo grabbed Itachi's shoulder and smiled. Itachi's body stiffened. As a formidable expert at the cage level, Natsuo unexpectedly easily approached his side. Itachi's eyes fell on the ground, where there was a strange and unique mark. Flying Thunder God I was careless. Itachi's voice sounded bitter. So Natsuo, what conspiracy do you have? Conspiracy. I just said I have nothing to do with Akatsuki. Natsuo shook his head. Itachi looked incredulous and had an unpleasant expression. You are clearly a member of the Ichiha clan. How could you have the Rinnegan? Natsuo, are you still trying to deceive me? His expression was ugly, feeling like he had just been played like a clown, bearing his heart and soul. However, Natsuo laughed and released Itachi's shoulder. It's precisely because I am a member of the Ichiha clan that I have the Rinnegan. Do you remember the stone tablet in the underground shrine of the clan? Natsuo's mouth called up. After activating the Manjekyo, you will see the method to activate the Eternal Manjekyo. And after activating the Eternal Manjekyo, you will see a line written on it. Seeking stability, one god was divided into yin and yang. These opposing two acting together obtain all things in creation. The division of the power of this god gave rise to the lineages of Senju and Ichiha. What the so-called power of god means is the Rinnegan. Itachi's expression changed drastically upon hearing this. He suddenly thought of a question. Wait, Natsuo, are you saying that the Rinnegan is an upgrade to the Eternal Manjekyo Sharingan? That's right. Then why does the leader of Akatsuki have the Rinnegan? Ichiha Itachi's expression changed drastically. Ichiha Madara? Why would he cooperate with him? Although he had never seen Nagato's true face, and did not know his identity as a member of the Yuzumaki clan. But how could a Chiha Madara mix with someone who has an enhanced Eternal Manjekyo? As everyone knows, an organization cannot have two leaders. Originally, Ichiha Itachi thought that Ichiha Madara was completely confident in suppressing Nagato, so he joined Akatsuki. But if the Rinnegan is an upgrade of the Eternal Manjekyo, then how can Ichiha Madara hope to suppress Nagato? Although suppression by the Rinnegan may not be as simple as a Manjekyo suppressing a normal Sharingan, someone with this Dejutsu should still be able to suppress someone who does not have it. Even if Ichiha Madara is not arrogant, he shouldn't have wanted to join Akatsuki. Where did Pain get the Rinnegan from? Itachi wondered. Seeing Itachi's doubts, Natsuo looked at him meaningfully. Itachi, you don't think the Rinnegan is easy to awaken, do you? Although I haven't seen the Ichiha Madara you mentioned. To activate the Rinnegan requires the high level visual power of the Eternal Manjekyo, along with the special physical of the first Hokage Senja Hashirama, in addition to the six baths chakra, that will serve as a catalyst. Forgive me for being blunt. But if you really saw the Rinnegan, then the only person in the past hundred years who would qualify to possess the Rinnegan is Ichiha Madara himself. The Rinnegan you saw should belong to Ichiha Madara himself. Ichiha Madara's eyes. Ichiha Itachi's expression changed slightly. So, the leader of Akatsuki is Ichiha Madara. No. The eyes of Ichiha Madara that I saw back then were clearly the Manjekyo yes. With that pupil power, it is impossible for it to be the eternal Manjekyo. The reason why Itachi believed that Ichiha Madara was the real Ichiha Madara was because he could freely use the power of the Manjekyo without worrying about the side effects. And Natsuo also mentioned before that Hashirama's cells can restore the Manjekyo's eye power. So the person I collaborated with at that time was not Ichiha Madara at all but someone who awakened the Manjekyo and obtained Hashirama's cells. Itachi thought about this possibility. But soon, he fell into even greater confusion. But why would that Ichiha Madara claim to be Ichiha Madara? And why does the leader of Akatsuki hide his identity as Ichiha Madara, and insist on hiding himself behind puppets, presiding over the Akatsuki organization with the appearance of a puppet? This doesn't match Ichiha Madara's character, and it seems that Ichiha Madara and the leader of Akatsuki have some kind of hidden connection, but they distrust each other. Even more so than us missing ninjas. There is no trust between them. For a moment Ichiha Itachi's mind was filled with countless thoughts. But with his intelligence and spy skills, he roughly deduced what was happening. Ichiha Madara is not Ichiha Madara. But it should be related to the real Ichiha Madara. The leader of Akatsuki is also not Ichiha Madara. 
It's highly likely that his eyes were transplanted, so the burden is heavy, just like Kakashi's Sharingan transplantation. There may be some after effects, which is why he constantly hides himself under the guise of a puppet. And the mastermind behind the two of them is the real Ichiha Madara. Ichiha Itachi is truly impressive. Despite having very few clues, most of it was based on speculation, but he still came close to the truth. However, Ichiha Itachi still doesn't fully understand the abilities of the Rinnegan. He's still a step or two away from seeing everything clearly. Natsuo was not very worried about Itachi guessing the real situation, so he revealed a lot of information to him. Ichiha Itachi bit his lip slightly. He had spent five years undercover in the Akatsuki organization, but he was almost completely ignorant of the mastermind behind it. If it weren't for Natsuo, he probably wouldn't even have realized Ichiha Madara's conspiracy. And the real mastermind, Ichiha Madara, made him feel alert and horrified. The fact that the leader of Akatsuki and the fake Ichiha Madara, two top-level experts, was still dealing with the tail beasts. What is this guy trying to do? Ichiha Itachi's heart sank, and he finally said, I will investigate thoroughly. But Natsuo, since you have awakened the Rinnegan, you should know how difficult it is to deal with it. Be careful, the shinobi world is treacherous. He couldn't help but feel a deep sense of emotion. Of course, Atachi's main goal hasn't changed. So he wants to prevent Natsuo from becoming too arrogant and becoming a traditional, domineering Ichiha. That would harm the village. I understand. Natsuo said nonchalantly. But since you're here, would you be willing to help me with a favor? What do you need help with? Ichiha Atachi asked. There is a hidden force in the shinobi world called Kara Organization. It is divided into an outer circle and an inner circle. I hope you can help me gather information about them. Natsuo spoke up. Kanova's investigation should not stop, but Akatsuki channels can also be used to speed up the process. Compared to Nagato, the Otsutsuki clan is the existence that Natsuo should pay attention to now. The outer and inner circle. Ichiha Atachi frowned. I understand. I will complete this mission entirely. Be careful, that Kara organization is not simple. Natsuo cautioned. The powers involved are very complex, not unlike those of your Akatsuki organization. Are there any other hidden organizations similar to Akatsuki? Ichiha Atachi's mouth twitched feeling a similar sentiment to Abito a few days ago. The shinobi world's waters are so deep. However, he still nodded, his eyes slightly narrowed. Since the Kara organization is strong, should we guide them to confront the Akatsuki organization? After all, they are enemies of Kanoha, it's perfect to let them fight each other. Of course, this is a topic for later. Atachi left quietly, just as he had arrived. Natsuo didn't mention any reward for accomplishing the task, and Atachi didn't ask for any. For someone like Atachi, money is not worth mentioning, only peace is worth any price. However, judging from his appearance, it seems that he still intends to die by Sasuke's hand to achieve the title of Sasuke's hero. He is only holding the mentality of doing more for Kanova and the Achiha before he dies, and working hard as a spy to gather information. Although Natsuo agreed to let Sasuke deal with Itachi and didn't care what method he used to deal with him. But that was only when there were no interests involved. What if there were changes it was a normal day in the Achiha clan district. The place was beginning to come to life with people of all kinds going about their daily lives. Everything was fine in the district except for a new area that was under construction, where some of Natsuo as children gathered. The crowd of children were between three and five years old. They were standing on the edge of a building looking at something in the tallest building that was under construction. Since Akarin had managed to establish the special bond with Natsuo he had grown quickly, he was just over four years old. But he looked like a boy of about six or seven years old. The same thing happened with Rayan and some of the other children who formed the bond with Natsuo. Akarin climbed to the building under construction, a building about ten stories high. The fast fist winds threatened to uproot him and throw him to the ground. But the boy ignored them, and continued climbing towards an eagle's nest. That was almost at the top. Actually, Akarin didn't have much interest in the eagle's nest. He just wanted to show his siblings that he could get the eggs in the nest. Since forming the bond with his father, Akarin felt something change inside him. He developed a special ability, like that possessed by Goro and Naomi. Akarin moved his hands without even paying attention, his intuition telling him where to grab and where to place his feet. His ability allowed him to sense danger. Something inside him told him when something bad was about to happen, the little voice in the back of his head guiding him in the right direction. It didn't take long for Akarin to reach the empty nest and grab one of the eggs put it in his mouth, and climb back down without any problems. When he came down from the building and turned to approach his siblings, his instincts told his that something was very wrong. And when he approached his siblings he saw what it was. Two women stood silently behind the crowd of children who cheered excitedly at Akarin's feet. Without saying a word, one of the women moved through the crowd of children and grabbed Akarin by the ear, dragging him. Ow, ow, oh, I'm sorry. Akarin apologized as he was dragged by his ear. You were supposed to be in your lessons right now, but when I go to check on you, what do I find? Yuzuki Yugao, Akarin's mother, let go of her ear as she scolded him. An empty classroom with only the instructor, and you and your siblings were nowhere to be seen. I'm sorry, Akarin looked at his feet, avoiding his mother's glare. At the same time Goro communicated telepathically with Naomi. Naomi, Kurunai Kaisen and Yugao Kaisen have arrived. We need to escape. 
Goro, noticing that Naomi was not responding to him, tried to look for her among his siblings, only to realize that she was nowhere to be found. Then he met Kurinai's angry gaze. Goro lamented telepathically. Naomi, you betrayed Miyachiha Goro. How many times do they need to punish you for you to learn your lesson? Kurinai said as she grabbed Goro by the ear. All the children were frightened by the arrival of Kurinai and Yuga. Then Yuga said, You had better prepare for your punishment, especially you Akarin. You did something very dangerous. Now all of you go to your lessons as usual. After Itachi's visit, Natsuo decided to relax at the artificial lake that had been built in the Ichiha district. Currently, he was sailing on a boat that had been modified by the Ichiha Institute's engineers and turned into a luxury yacht. Natsuo sat in the captain's chair as he looked out over the bridge. He was relaxing as he admired the calm weather. Natsuo looked around the bridge while the engineers carried out tests on the various latest technological devices installed on the luxurious yacht. Ever since Ryoji, one of his children with a jonin level Kinochi from Kinoha, became obsessed with ships and pirate stories. Natsuo decided to fulfill his son's wish and make the luxury ships of his previous life a reality. He even thought about integrating scientific ninja tools to build a much more advanced ship. How's the ship going? Natsuo turned to the engineer in charge of the project. Everything works correctly, but we need to go to sea to test the more advanced functions. The engineer said while he reflected, Natsuo-sama, his son is a true genius. He learned everything related to the engines of this ship quite quickly, and even helped a lot during the debugging of the engine during its operation. That boy has grown up fast. Since Natsuo formed the bond with Ryoji, he began to grow rapidly. But what amazed Natsuo the most was his great intelligence. Since Ryoji was obsessed with ships and pirates, Natsuo had him work on the engines to familiarize him with the ship. And ever since Ryoji got to work on the engines and decided to learn everything about how the ship worked, he seemed to instinctively know how to work and fix everything, plus the work never seemed to tire him. Every day it became more obvious that Ryoji was not like his other siblings, who had been strengthened by the bond with Natsuo, and that he, Akarin, Goro and Naomi, had much greater potential than what is seen for now. The yacht continued sailing at different speeds on the lake to continue testing the performance of the yacht as well as its maneuverability. The crew continued with data collection. In the ship's engine room, Ryuji covered in grease was controlling the yacht's engines. The engineer in charge of the engine room was amazed by how easily Ryuji became familiar with the ship's technology. From his point of view, it is no exaggeration to say that this is one of the most advanced ships he has ever seen. Be it the power or the performance of the engine, as well as the various technologies involved in the operation of the boat are top-notch, but the boy learned everything quickly even now he was doing almost half of his tasks. How is everything? The engineer in charge asked as he approached Ryoji. Everything is working correctly, although we cannot test higher speeds or other functions, until we take the boat to the open sea. Ryoji turned to the engineer. The engineer is a man who had worked on a ship since he was a baby, and was very familiar with engines, which was why his father had paid a huge price to have him work for the Ichiha clan. The engineer nodded happily. Well, as long as the ship moves, then we'll do our job. Then he slapped Ryoji on the back, smearing even more grease and oil onto the boy's grease and oil-covered shirt. Too bad we can't test the boat in the open sea yet. I could retire happy, knowing that a boy like you has inherited all my knowledge. I guess we'll do the test soon. I'll learn everything from you then. The engineer laughed. You are not meant to be down here. Your dad just wants to support you in your passion, and for you to learn about the technology of this ship. During these months the engineer had become more than a friend to Ryoji. The old man had taught him everything he knew about how to fix and maintain each part of a ship. Go up to the bridge and tell your dad what the situation is here, and check if everything is in order on the deck. Sure, Ryoji quickly left the engine room and headed to the deck. Everyone on the ship knew who Ryoji was and stood aside as he made his way through the ship's hallways, arriving at the bridge in a few minutes, his dirty appearance out of place, among the clean and tidy appearance of the researchers occupying the bridge. Ryoji, Natsuo smiled as he entered and stood up from his chair. How are the engines? Everything is in order. The ship is ready for open sea trials. Ryoji informed. Can before Ryoji could continue, a communication request sounded. Natsuo looked at the communication manager, who had answered the call, then reported. Natsuo-sama, Yukino-sama requires her presence at the Ichiha clan residence. Some of the children have caused trouble. The young man reported, before returning to his duties. Okay? Prepare to return. Natsuo ordered. I'll go back to the engine room. Ryoji sighed with disappointment. Ryoji returned to the engines to tell the old engineer that the trip would end soon and that he would have to return. The yacht parked at the dock of the artificial lake and then they began to disembark. Welcome back my husband. Yukino greeted Natsuo as she disembarked. I hope your walk was relaxing. Natsuo hugged Yukino as he greeted her. Tell me Yukino what the children did this time. It's better that we discuss it at the residence. Sisters Yugao and Kuro and I are waiting to discuss the matter. Yukino answered. Roji, Natsuo. Natsuo, Yukino, and many of the servants headed to the Ichiha clan's central residence. They arrived at the central residence, and the servants dispersed to carry out their various tasks. Ryoji followed Natsuo and Yukino through the halls of the residence. Daddy a screech broke the silence, and a little girl, no more than one year old, ran towards them while she was accompanied by another girl, Hikari. Natsuo knelt down and picked up Hikari and Naomi, one in each arm. 
Do you girls miss dad? Yeah. Hikari laughed while Natsua blew on her belly. On the other hand, Naomi pretended to be calm while she was hugged by her father. But the corners of her mouth slightly raised from her revealed that she is also happy to see her father. Now you girls want to take me to the studio. I need to talk to your mothers. Natsuo put the girls down and let Hikari guide him. Over there, Hikari pointed to the door that led to Natsuo's study. Thank you Natsuo took his little daughter and handed her to Ryoji. He then looked at Naomi and Ryoji and said, Go play with your siblings. Ryoji took Hikari and Naomi. While Natsuo entered the studio with Yukino, Ryoji took his sisters out to the main hallway. It had been a while since he had played with them. Ryoji remembered the conversation he had had with Ren. Since he formed the bond with his father, both he and some of his other siblings began to remember more things from when they were babies. Ryoji began to remember everything from the moment he opened his eyes for the first time. It was his mother's face looking at him. He remembered the lullabies she sang to him and his father, telling him stories about the endless ocean for the first time. Those were the clearest memories he had. Are you okay Ryoji? Naomi asked worriedly, pulling him out of his thoughts. Then Hakari squirmed in his arms, and the little girl covered herself in the oil that covered Ryoji's stained shirt. She managed to escape her brother's embrace and run down the hallway, leaving stains as she went. Come back here, Ryoji and Naomi said behind the giggling girl, keeping their distance as they chased her sister through the hallways, while others of her siblings joined in the game. Natsuo entered the study with Yukino, where Yugao and Kurinai were waiting. Husband, Yugao and Kurinai greeted him as they sat on the couch. The children escaped from their lessons. The problem is that Goro encouraged Akarin to climb one of the buildings under construction on the commercial street. Yugao said as Natsuo sat on the couch in front of them along with Yukino. This time what they did was very dangerous. They should be punished more severely. Kurinai said, it's okay. Goro's punishment should be more severe. As for Akarin, they can be more lenient. They should pay more attention to the children who have begun to develop special abilities, so that they don't feel excluded from their other siblings. It's the case with Akarin, and it's also the case with Ryoji. And over time some of the other children will also feel the same way. Natsuo's wives agreed with him. He then discussed with Yukino some of his ideas about the expansion of the Achiha clan in the maritime area since the results in the tests of the new ships were very satisfactory. At the same time Natsuo also remembered that the Funato clan appeared in the Baruto series, so he reminded Yukino, so that he would be careful with them. About half a month later Yakushi Kabuto finally returned from his visit to Orochimaru. Natsuo-sama, Orochimaru, taught me the impure world reincarnation technique. Not only that, he also said that he would help you research the technology to improve the potential of the Kunoichi. Yakushi Kabuto looked helpless. I've never seen Orochimaru divert his attention to something like this before technology to improve the potential of Kunoichi. This has nothing to do with Orochimaru's dream at all. Orochimaru actually wasted his energy on this. It completely subverted Yakushi Kabuto's understanding of Orochimaru. It seems like he's really short on money. Yakushi Kabuto sighed lightly. Orochimaru has always been a principled person, but now that he's desperately short on money, his principle is to not have any issues with money. Then let's begin. Natsuo smiled. Yes, Natsuo-sama Yakushi Kabuto looked helpless. You've really done your best for the revival of the Ichiha clan. Even to the point of allowing me to learn Orochimaru's forbidden technique, he sighed lightly but immediately formed hand seals, summoning impure world reincarnation. The next second the three sacrifices were soon covered with the ashes of the seals. Three beautiful figures appeared in front of the two. The first person had long deep black hair that reached their waist, a gentle face, and fair skin, Ichiha Makoto. The second person had long green hair. She has it combed in such a way that it forms a ball on the top of her head with what appears to be a needle point, while two large orange tipped locks mark the rest of her face. Hikora. The third person had long red hair that reached below her hip. In addition, her hair was separated on both sides of her face by a hair clip that she had on the left side of her hair. Her skin was white, and her eyes were grey-violet, and she wore a blue bracelet on her left wrist. Yuzumaki Kishina. After the three were revived Makoto opened her eyes, revealing the manjekyo pattern in her eyes. Pakura opened his eyes and a fireball of scorch release appeared beside him. Kishina opened her eyes and a surging chakra burst out from her body. The three of them emitted a powerful aura. Exactly, Natsuo specifically sought out Orochimaru to teach Kabuto the impure world reincarnation in order to summon these three powerful Kunoichi. The Kunoichi of the Shinobi world no longer satisfied Natsuo, so he couldn't help but approach the Pure Land. Three incredibly powerful chakras suddenly burst out. Their subconscious struggle originates from the restraint imposed by Yakushi Kabuto. Mikoto has awakened the Manjekyo. Natsuo-sama, you really think highly of me. Yakushi Kabuto's mouth twitched as he desperately suppressed the restlessness of the three. Soon, the three women also regained their consciousness. Where is this? I remember I was already dead. Pakora frowned. Yeah, yeah. I should have died at the hands of the Nine Tails. Wait, who are you? Kishina subconsciously nodded in agreement, but then realized something was wrong and looked at Pakora. Makoto frowned and looked at the familiar scenery around her. Is this the Achiha clan's main residence? Am I still alive? The Achiha clan. How did I end up at the Achiha clan? Pakora furrowed his brow. Kishina, on the other hand, was stunned for a moment, then burst into laughter. Ha ha. 
I'm not dead. You said being stripped of the nine tails meant certain death. I am indeed a woman who can break common sense. Makoto next to them said, Um, Kishina, actually you were already dead before me. What? I'm dead. Kishina was stunned. But what's my situation now? The three paused and looked at the two people in front of them. Yakushi Kabuto's mouth twitched as he felt the impure world reincarnation's restriction on the three women, secretly feeling uncomfortable. He can only say in his mind, Natsuo, Natsuo, how can you not even let go of dead women? Yes, this was planned by Natsuo. Ichiha Makoto and Yuzumaki Kishina's DNA samples were obtained from the root. As for the Pakura samples, Natsuo obtained them through a trade with Orochimaru using Reikijai's limbs and some money. As for the purpose, please calm down you three. In fact, you are dead. Kabuto interrupted them and said, Miss Pakura, you died at the hands of the Kiri Shinobi. Pakura frowned, obviously recalling being betrayed by Rasa. Miss Kishina, you died during the Nine Tails Rampage? Kishina was stunned, then immediately looked around anxiously. Where is Naruto, my child? Where is Naruto? Miss Makoto, you died at the hands of your own son, Ichiha Itachi. Makoto fell into a slight silence. Pakoro and Kishina looked at each other in surprise. The three of you are all dead. I summoned you using the second Hokage's secret technique in pure world reincarnation. Yakushi Kabuto smiled faintly. You should feel the restraints placed upon you, right? The three remained silent. However, they were all powerful experts. Pakora was the first to speak. So you summoned us? But what exactly do you want? A battle. But from what I can perceive, there doesn't seem to be any enemies that require you to use this forbidden technique. The next second, a voice rang out. It's to help me revive the Ichiha clan. Natsuo took a step forward with a smile on his lips and said seriously, I hope you will help me revive the Ichiha clan, in exchange for resurrecting all of you. The three women's eyes all narrowed at the same time. Makoto furrowed her brows and stared at Natsuo's face. This appearance are you Natsuo. Ichiha Natsuo. Makoto, you still remember me? Natsuo smiled. When your father died, I was the one who gave you the pension. Of course I remember you. Makoto sighed lightly, and her gaze slightly narrowed on Natsuo. You have become such a powerful shinobi now before Natsuo spoke, everyone completely ignored his presence. Only after he spoke did everyone notice his existence cage level, possibly even stronger. The three women all had the answer in their hearts. Are you still alive? I heard that you went on a mission and completely disappeared. Makoto sighed lightly. It's good that you're alive, it's good that you're alive. As she said that, she let out a sigh of relief. On the other hand, Kishina curiously asked. Hey, that Achiha guy. Can you bring us back to life? As she spoke, the gazes of the three women became sharp at the same time. They were all deceased, so it was impossible for them to have no regrets. But to be resurrected, it is truly too ethereal and elusive. It's possible. Natsuo replied with a simple and shocking statement. Since you are helping me revive the Achiha clan, it is something I must do before you can help me. Wait, you said help revive the Achiha clan. The Achiha clan has declined. Kishina tilted her head and looked at Makoto. Makoto, I told you that Fugaku has no vision. Look, the powerful Ichiha clan has been ruined by him. The term revive is clearly used for a family that has already declined. Although the Ichiha in the past did not produce a powerhouse like Ichiha Madara, they can't be considered as having declined. Makoto opened her mouth as if to say something but stopped. On the other hand, Yakushi Kabuto couldn't help but say, No, it's not because the former clan leader, Fugaku, didn't have vision. You can't say it like that. The main reason why the Ichiha clan declined is mainly due to Ichiha Itachi, Makoto's eldest son. He killed all the members of the Ichiha clan, including the clan leader Fugaku and his wife Makoto. The only members of the Ichiha clan left alone were Natsuo Sama and Ichiha Sasuke, the younger brother whose life Itachi spared. Makoto sighed lightly and closed her eyes. Kishina widened her eyes. Damn, is that Itachi guy so fierce that he wipes out an entire clan? Even Pakura couldn't help but look at Makoto. In her time, the Achiha clan was a very well-known and prestigious clan in Kanova, with many elites and talented individuals. And yet, it was actually wiped out by the son of this seemingly gentle woman next to her. Itachi has his own reasons. Makoto said after a moment of silence and fell silent again. Pakura and Kishina narrowed their eyes, realizing that things were not as simple as they seemed. But after all, it had been many years since their deaths. I'm not interested in your Achiha business, but if you can really bring me back to life, I don't mind helping you revive the Achiha clan. Pakura's expression was cold. I agree to your deal. I agree too. Kishina quickly added, I also want to see Naruto. And besides, you are at least a relative of Makoto, so I will definitely help you. But how can we help you revive the Achiha clan? Kishina blinked her eyes and suggested, since you can revive people, I suggest you bring back the fourth Hokage, Namika's Minato. He is very powerful, and once revived, he will return to the position of Hokage, and surely be able to help you. This suggestion was filled with selfishness. Fugaku can also be revived. Makoto interjected, Natsuo, both Fugaku and I are members of the Achiha clan, and we will definitely help you. Natsuo smiled lightly and shook his head, no, Minato and Fugaku cannot help me, only you can. What do you want us to do? Pakora frowned and asked, Namika's Minato, 
who has the authority, cannot help, and former Uchiha clan leader Fugaki cannot help either. What can they do then? I want you to bear children for me. Natsuo said without any hesitation, his face still serious. Makoto widened her eyes upon hearing this. Akora's face also trembled with surprise. Kishina was even more shocked, her mouth wide open. What did you say? Say it again. I need your help to have children. Natsuo said seriously. I believe the biggest problem of the Ichiha clan is the scarcity of our population. The combination of excellent parents makes it easier to give birth to excellent children. I need your help. That's right. This is Natsuo's goal. Nowadays, there are not many cage-level Kinochi in the Shinobi world, and only Conan and Nai Do are at that level. Since in the mortal world there are no more options, Natsuo decided to find a way from the Pure Land. He has set his sights on those deceased cage-level Kinochi. Natsuo, are you joking? Makoto's expression became extremely stiff, and she forced a laugh. Stop joking, this is not the time to joke with you. I'm not joking, Natsuo said seriously. The number of Ichiha clan members killed by Itachi is too much. Although I have been trying to increase the population in these years, I still cannot increase the number significantly. I summoned you with great effort just to have more children and strengthen the Ichiha clan. Natsuo was more direct, but both Kishina and I are already married. Makoto couldn't help but say. Kishina also nodded repeatedly. Natsuo shook his head and said with a sacrificial attitude, for the sake of the Ichiha clan, I don't care, but we do mind. Mikoto and Kishina's mouths twitched. However, after Pakura frowned, she immediately said without hesitation, Okay, as long as you help me resurrect, I will help you. Her eyes were filled with anger. The heroine of Sunagaka had died long ago, and she, who had been betrayed, had only one purpose left. Revenge. Revenge against Sunagaka. As long as I can seek revenge against Sunagaka, I can do anything. Pakura spoke decisively and without hesitation. Compared to the two married women, she, who had always been single, didn't care about such matters at all. However, Natsuo awkwardly smiled and said, Um, this is a bit difficult, what's difficult about it? Aren't you from Kanoha? Pakura frowned. If I'm going to seek revenge against Sun Agaka, it will also benefit Kanoha, right? Besides, as long as you let me go and seek revenge, I have the confidence to kill the Kazuki Edge of Sunagaka single-handedly. Flashes of murderous intent flashed in her eyes, and she clenched her teeth tightly. It was Sunagaka who had betrayed Pekora, catching her off guard. She had been lured into an ambush set by the Kiri Shinobi, where she was directly killed by a wave of attacks. Although it seemed like several years had passed, Pekora was confident that no one in Sunagaka was a match for her. Of course, she was referring to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Pekora was currently considering how to lure Rasa out of Sunagaka, that's not the issue. Natsuo touched his nose. The main problem is that Rasa is now my father-in-law. Although I don't really care about this father-in-law, there's no reason to let someone else go and kill him. Pakura is definitely more important to Natsuo than Rasa. But Tamari is still his future wife. Both sides are important, and he can't let Tamari down, right? You married Rasa's daughter. Pakura widened her eyes. But aren't you a ninja from Kanoha? Can Sunagaka and Kanova really form an alliance through marriage? Cough you may not know. Yakushi Kabuto stepped forward and said, but Natsuo-sama is currently recognized as the strongest shinobi in the world. He defeated the fifth Mizukage, crippled the fourth Reikage, dragged the eight tails back to Kanoha, and also defeated Sunagaka led by Rasa. Rasa sent his daughter to the Ichiha clan as collateral to keep the peace. And Natsuo-sama is not only the strongest in the shinobi world, but also the biggest contributor to the resurgence of the Ichiha clan. The last part you can see for yourself all the children around here are descendants of Natsuo-sama. Yakushi Kabuto pointed to the houses within the Ichiha clan residence as he spoke. The women instinctively used their perception ninjutsu to scan the area, and were immediately shocked. Damn, how come there are more than a hundred children here? And why do nearly a hundred women resemble the children? Are they all his biological children? Even Makoto, who knew Natsuo, looked at him with a face that said, So this is the real Natsuo. The three women fell silent. In the end, Kishina spoke without hesitation. I'm sorry but I can't help with this favor. Please bring me back to life, and I will repay you with something else. I don't need anything else. Natsuo shook his head. Aside from women, I don't care about money or ninjutsu. The Ichiha clan's wealth is growing, and he doesn't need anything more. Well, let's forget about it then. Kishina shrugged. You can put me back now. I won't help you with this. Mikoto also said, Natsuo, I'm sorry. I don't mind helping you with other things, but this... However, if you can revive Fugaku, he will definitely help you strengthen the Ichiha clan. Akora also bluntly said, I won't help you either, son-in-law of Rasa. Based solely on the fact that he sold me to Karigaka, I can't forgive him. There is no doubt that all three of them chose to refuse. Natsuo sighed lightly, but this was within his expectations. The stronger a person is, the stronger her personality and will. A carefree life within the Ichiha clan. The honor of being the wife of the strongest person in the shinobi world. It's all useless. Even if Natsuo offers a sky-high price, the three people in front of him will not compromise. However, Natsuo looked at Pakura and said, Miss Pakura, 
Do you know what Rasa's life is like now? Hey, what kind of life can Rasa have? Akora scoffed. He is a shadow who betrayed his fellow villagers. I was really wrong to support him back then. As she spoke, she gritted her teeth slightly, a hint of hatred flashing in her eyes. With his character, it would be fortunate if Sanagaka did not perish under his leadership. It must be said that Pakura's assumption is quite accurate. Rasa didn't handle Sanagaka well. Operation Destroy Kanoha was not the result of Sanagaka's proactive attack, but rather desperate actions in the face of Sanagaka's increasingly difficult situation. And this is the result of the incompetence of the fourth Kazuki Rasa. Even this desperate counterattack was quite lackluster. If Natsuo had not intervened, Rasa would not have even reached the Kanoha battlefield, since Orochimaru would have killed him before everything started. He almost became a tool for Orochimaru's impure world reincarnation. However, now Rasa is known as the strongest Kazuki and his prestige in Sanagaka is unmatched. Natsuo said with a smile. After all, he led Sanagaka and gained many benefits at very little cost in the Fourth Shinobi World War, and mere Rasa did that. Pakora seemed to have heard a joke and couldn't help but say, What is he? How can he lead Sanagaka to profit from the war? He is certainly nothing special. But I can't resist acting with him. Natsuo smiled and said, After all, he is my father-in-law. Rasa is now recognized as one of the strongest cage-level experts, second only to someone like me. Countless Suna Shinobi are willing to die for him, considering him the strongest Kazakiage, even surpassing the first Kazakiage in prestige. Don't mention the fact that you were betrayed by him. Not many Suna Shinobi know about it. If you come forward and expose this matter, believe it or not, the Suna Shinobi will also say one after another. Pakura, you are despicable. What's wrong with sacrificing some Shinobi for a mission? The fourth Kazuki needs you to sacrifice yourself. Why do not you do it? Pakura widened his eyes. That's impossible. However, Natsuo laughed and revealed the details of Rasa's great achievements. With all this series of great achievements, how could the Suna Shinobi not be a fan of Rasa? Pakura listened in astonishment. Sanagaka being the weakest village among the five great shinobi villages, Pakura also understood why the Suna Shinobi would be so excited by the sudden appearance of such a powerful Kazakuge. Why does my enemy live so freely? While I have to keep the pumpkin stuck in the sand, a burning rage filled Bakura's heart, wishing to go to Sanagaka right now and personally kill this so-called strongest Kazakuge. Natsuo laughed and turned his head to look at Makoto. Makoto, do you know that Sasuke sees Atachi as the murderer of his parents? He trains hard every day. He even goes to the battlefield to gain experience, all in preparation for the day when he can take revenge on Atachi. And unfortunately, Atachi plans to die at Sasuke's hands as a missing nin, in hopes of turning Sasuke into a hero. Although I killed the third Hokage and Danzo, Sasuke doesn't know the secret behind the Achiha clan's extermination. If he had killed Atachi and then realized that his beloved brother was not the main culprit, but was just someone who was manipulated and decided to die by his hands, what would become of him? Makoto's expression changed upon hearing this. As a mother, how could she stand to see her children killing each other? Atachi, you promised me that you would take care of Sasuke. Is this how you take care of him? Planning to die by Sasuke's hands. If Sasuke remained ignorant, it would be fine. But as he grows, he will eventually learn the truth behind the Achiha clan's extermination. How could he accept the fact that he killed his beloved brother? Atachi will die. Sasuke will also collapse. Natsuo, I beg you. Makoto grabbed Natsuo's arm, her face filled with pleading. Please, as members of the same clan. Can you explain Atachi's suffering to Sasuke? Can you stop them from killing each other? Consider it as payment for the care the clan gave you back then. Please help me. I can tell Sasuke about this matter, and I can also stop Atachi's suicidal thoughts. Natsuo nodded with a smile. However, before Makoto could smile, Natsuo continued. But a few days ago, I saw Itachi and noticed that his physical condition was very deteriorated. Itachi expects to die at Sasuke's hands, so he definitely doesn't want to be in his best condition when facing him. Plus he absolutely doesn't want Sasuke to know that he's letting him win. So it seems like he's deliberately indulging his illness, allowing the disease to erode his body. Even if we stop their brotherly killing, Itachi won't live much longer. The root cause of his illness is the side effects from excessive use of Manjekyo. Unless he obtains a pair of Manjekyo and evolves into Eternal Manjekyo, otherwise there is no cure for this illness. Makoto's expression gradually became desperate. There is nothing more distressing for a mother than hearing the news of her own child's death. But fortunately, I have Fugaku's eyes here. Natsuo suddenly smiled and took out a container. Mikoto, you should know too. The eyes of the leader of the Fugaku clan are the Manjekyo. Also, being Itachi's father, they have a strong blood relationship. So the transplant will be very fluid. Those eyes can save Itachi. Mikoto went from extreme grief to joy in an instant. However, in the next second, Natsuo pushed her back into the abyss. But this is a precious trophy I obtained by attacking one of the roots bases. Makoto, I can accept your previous request, but I will not easily give these eyes away. Makoto opened her mouth, but in the end, she didn't know what to say. Natsuo smiled and turned his gaze to Kishina. Why are you looking at me like that? Kishina felt a little nervous when she noticed Natsuo's gaze, she was also observing Pakura and Makoto in a daze. But she immediately said without hesitation, don't think you can force me with anything. Even though Minato is dead, 
If he knew that the price of his resurrection was me, he would rather die again. It's impossible to threaten me with Minato. Natsuo nodded. Indeed, the fourth Hokage was a man who would rather die himself than involve those around him. But don't you want to know what will happen to your child, Naruto? Naruto, what happened to him? Kishina panicked and quickly denied. Don't lie to me. Minato is the fourth Hokage. His former comrades are more than capable of taking care of Naruto. Minato sacrificed his life to suppress the Nine Tails. The people of Konoha will definitely not treat Naruto poorly. The third Hokage will definitely take good care of Naruto. What could be wrong with Naruto? Kishina spoke with increasing confidence. That's right. Naruto definitely has a bright future. However, she didn't notice the hesitant expression on Makoto's face beside her. Makoto felt embarrassed to reveal the shocking truth. But Natsuo had no qualms about it. Indeed, Minato's former subordinates should take good care of his son. But the prerequisite was that they knew the fact that Naruto is Minato's son. Natsuo laughed and said, The third Hokage established a strategy to hide Naruto's identity, hoping to exclude others, and become the only safe haven for the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Guess what he will do to achieve this? Will he allow the residents of Konoha, Minato's former subordinates, or other people, to know Naruto's true identity? Upon hearing this, Kishina widened her eyes and said, How is that possible? The third Hokage promised me that he would take good care of Naruto. If you don't believe me, ask Makoto. Natsuo shrugged indifferently. Kishina turned her head and looked at Makoto. Makoto sighed lightly, turned her face away without expression, and whispered, The third Hokage forbids discussing Naruto's identity and forbids me and Fugaku, who guessed Naruto's identity from approaching him. Sorry, Kishina, even though I was there at the time. I couldn't do anything for your child. Upon hearing this, Kishina was instantly stunned. Who is Naruto? The Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Previously, Kishina was unwilling to have Minato seal the Nine Tails inside Naruto, because she herself was a Jinchuriki, and understood the miserable life of a Jinchuriki. But under Minato's persuasion and considering the support of Minato's former subordinates and disciples, Naruto would definitely not live as miserably as other Jinchuriki. So she finally agreed. Who would have thought that the third Hokage would do such a thing to isolate Naruto, conveniently gain Naruto's favor, and thus be able to control the Jinchuriki? Saratobi Hiras and Kishina instantly became furious. I'm going to kill you. Her raging chakra burst out from her body, and her roar spread in all directions. If it weren't for the early activation of the barrier around her, half of Konoha would probably have been alarmed by her roar. Yukushi Kabuto tightly suppressed Kishina's movements. He gritted his teeth and inputted chakra frantically, feeling as if he were pulling a mad ball in the end. Kishina collapsed weakly to the ground, her eyes lifeless. Makoto also lowered her head, her eyes filled with fear. Pakura clenched his teeth, his face full of resentment. Natsuo, on the other hand, smiled slightly as he looked at the three women with unpleasant expressions. Pakura, don't you want to see Rasa continue to prosper? Makoto, don't you want to see your sons Atachi and Sasuke kill each other? Kishina, don't you want to see Naruto helpless and targeted by others? But if all of you were resurrected, these situations could be avoided, right? So are you really not considering my previous proposal? Natsuo asked sincerely. Makoto, Pakura, and Kishina were deeply troubled. Yakushi Kabuto, who was standing next to Natsuo, looked at him helplessly. Natsuo-sama, is it necessary to be so insidious? However, in the end, Makoto and the other two women did not agree to Natsuo's proposal. They couldn't make such a decision so easily. On the other hand, Natsuo was in no hurry. Right now, the three women were in the state of impure world reincarnation, and they were not in the normal human mode where they could conceive. Although Natsuo had gathered two resurrection techniques, but both techniques required the caster's life, which was not desirable. Although Natsuo was considering how to improve them, it was not a problem that could be solved in a short time. During the time when they were hesitating he gave Natsuo enough time to improve the resurrection techniques, Yokushi Kabuto looked helpless. Although the hesitation of the three women was not a big deal, it still involved him. In order to prevent the three women from suddenly exposing themselves, Yukushi Kabuto had to be vigilant of their actions at all times, and unfortunately, Natsuo did not treat them as simple tools, sealing them in coffins, on the contrary, he left them free to show his sincerity to the three. This meant that Yukushi Kabuto's workload increased significantly, but what can I do if Natsuo-sama wants to do it? Yukushi Kabuto sighed in his mind. Plus, he promised to help me find mother's DNA samples. Since Makoto and Pakura can be resurrected, Yukushi Nono can also be resurrected. Although Orochimaru doesn't know what means Natsuo can use to resurrect people, Kabuto believes that since Natsuo tried so hard to summon the three women, he must be very sure of achieving it. I can't believe that back then. I didn't handle mother's body properly out of anger Yakushi Kabuto thought, wanting to hit his past self. But for Yakushi Kabuto at that time, the person he cherished the most, the person he missed every moment, had no impression of him at all. At that moment, he did not think that it was Danzo's doing, but rather that the mother had forgotten him, and that was why after the confrontation he had gone away in a daze. This caused a lot of trouble for Yakushi Nono's resurrection. Although the task of monitoring the three women is extremely demanding, Yakushi Kabuto will absolutely not allow any accidents in his work. Because any mistake on his part could lead to Natsuo giving up on the deal he made with him. He would rather die than allow something like that to happen. By the way, Orochimaru-sama wants me to send him information to help in the development of Revival No. 
2. Yakushi Kabuto thought for a moment and said, Natsuo-sama, can I send it to you? Can. Natsuo nodded, research materials are actually extremely valuable. Even failed research is the result of a significant amount of funding. For any researcher, research materials are incredibly precious. But for Natsuo anything that can be solved with money is no longer important. I'm not short of money, let Orochimaru spend whatever he wants. I just want results, Natsuo said without hesitation. Now that the Achiha high-tech base in the land of snow has been completely built, a large number of high-tech products are flooding various parts of the world. This has made Natsuo earn a fortune. In the present, the Achiha industry dominates the field of technology, with various electrical appliances being both cheap and advanced. If it weren't for the ongoing Shinobi World War, which has caused roadblocks between major countries, Natsuo would soon be worried about making too much money. But still, with the luxurious lifestyle of the Achiha, it can really be said that the more money they spend, the more they earn. Because no matter how extravagant the Achiha lifestyle is, their spending never catches up to their earning speed. I understand. Yakushi Kabuto nodded. Orochimaru-sama should be very happy. What researcher wouldn't like an investor like this? Unfortunately, this investment project is not in the direction that Orochimaru likes. Otherwise, Yakushi Kabuto estimates that Orochimaru could directly recommend himself to the Achiha and become Natsuo's subordinate. After all, who wouldn't like a wealthy and generous investor who causes few troubles? After finishing matters with Kabuto, Natsuo continued his hard work to revive the Achiha clan. During this time he also used Renshin no Kenkei to strengthen his closest wives. And to Natsuo's surprise, it was Amairi, who apart from Yukino and Joko, who managed to develop a complete bond with him. Perhaps it was because both Yukino and Joko were not very strong. But when he formed the bond with Amairi, he noticed that he could share some of the Keke Jenkai that he had received as rewards from the system. And among them the best was the Shizen Chikara, since it granted an instinctive ability that allows its user to absorb and manipulate natural energy without side effects. Really? Ringo Amairi looked helpless. I'm amazed that you can share Keke Jenkai using this method. Come on, it's getting late, Amairi. We should test the effects of my new ability. As he said that, Natsuo slowly approached. Amairi responded by rolling her eyes, but instead of refusing, she opened her arms and hugged Natsuo's body a night of hard training. After sharing the Shizen Chikara with Amairi, she told him that she had begun to vaguely understand natural energy. She even accidentally fused one of her simplest techniques with natural energy. It seems that if she strengthens herself a few more times, she could really learn Sage Mode by herself. Natsuo was delighted. Sage Mode can greatly improve personal strength. If his wives learn it, it means that the children they will give birth to will be even stronger. He immediately began to work harder on Amayori, sweating profusely, day after day, until Amayori could no longer continue to strengthen himself through Renshi no Kenke. Also due to Natsuo's continued efforts, Amayori became pregnant. Although Amayori is already pregnant, there are still many other women who haven't conceived. If by having a complete bond with Amayori Natsuo he can share some Kekei Janaki with her, there is no reason why the other women can't achieve it. However, considering that the bond requires an emotional foundation, Natsuo can only be sure that only his closest wives can achieve the requirements to achieve full bond. So for now, he can only continue to focus on his closest wives, like Yuga, Kurai and others. There may be no hope in the short term, but in the next pregnancies, there may be a chance that most of their wives will master the natural energy. After Yakushi Kabuto learned of the method in which Natsuo could share Keke Jenkai, he was left helpless. He didn't expect that Natsuo would possess this ability, and almost let Amairi learn Sage Mode, which not even Orochimaru-sama has learned. If Orochimaru-sama found out, who knows what he would do? Oh no, actually it's quite easy to guess. Orochimaru-sama never cares about worldly opinions. As someone who desires the power of Sage Mode, the most likely thing she would do upon learning this is reveal her current female form, and disguise herself as an ordinary Kinochi to enter the Achiha clan. Yes, Orochimaru-sama is capable of doing anything to make himself stronger. But, if Natsuo-sama finds out, he will kill him. Yakushi Kabuto said helplessly. And he will also kill me, the one who caused all of this. For the safety of Orochimaru-sama and my own life, let's not tell Orochimaru-sama about this. Natsuo continued his efforts. However, in the middle of it, he received a message from Kakuzu. Natsuo, there's a woman who, although currently only at the level of a jonin, has exceptional talent, and a high probability of becoming cage level will you take her in. Kakuzu's calm voice sounded. Natsuo rubbed his chin. Although Kakuzu loves money, he also has principles. He never deceives his business partners. Even if he loves money, he would never cheat on his benefactor. When he says there's a high probability of becoming cage level, it probably means that she really has a good chance of becoming cage level. So after thinking for a moment, Natsuo decisively said, I'll take her in, but the price will be relatively lower. Compared to a normal cage, she only has one chance to reach the cage level, and cannot receive two high reward. Although Natsuo values Kakuzu's subjectivity, rules that maintain the integrity of the transaction are ultimately best for both parties. Kakuzu is well aware of this but doesn't seem concerned. But she possesses a special Keke Jenkai. Isn't that an advantage? Of course it's a bonus. Natsuo nodded. If I told you she's young, just entered the age for marriage and childbirth. 
just enter the age for marriage and childbirth, and she's already a Jonan level. This talent is quite impressive. No wonder Kakuzu dares to say that this Kinoichi has a good chance of reaching the cage level. That's also a bonus. Natsuo said without hesitation. If I told you her identity is noble, a noble identity represents a strong lineage inheritance. That is naturally an advantage. If everything you say is true, I can pay according to the price of a cage level. Natsuo said without hesitation, but then curiously asked. But who can you hold in such high regard? How many people in the shinobi world are worthy of Kakuzu's admiration? I can't remember any Kinochi like that in the Naruto series. Could she be an unknown Kinochi recently discovered by Kakuzu? He, I won't tell you that for now. Kakuzu chuckled. Although he didn't think Natsuo would act before him to save having to pay him the reward, Kakuzu never took risks with money. All right, contact me after you capture the person. Natsuo said nonchalantly. I understand Kakuzu's voice remained steady. But Natsuo, I think you should understand that a noble identity and excessive talent in itself will inevitably cause some trouble. Natsuo laughed heartily. What trouble could possibly stump me? Good then. Kakuzu looked relieved and ended the conversation. Natsuo thought, why do I feel like Kakuzu is trying to trick me? Hum, he probably wouldn't, right? Natsuo continued to peacefully revive the Echiha clan at home. With his efforts, Yuhi Kurenai became the next person to form a complete bond with him, and in addition to Amayori, he was also able to share the Shizen Chikara with her. However, unlike Amayori, the Shizen Chikara that Natsuo shared with her, did not experience a significant strengthening. The reason was that, lacking the same strength as Amayori, her body could not withstand Natsuo's continuous strengthening in a short period of time. Seriously, can't you slow down a bit? Yuhi Kurenai complained. Because Natsuo got excited about strengthening Kurenai, she became pregnant in the process. Natsuo chuckled and rubbed his chin. It's not something I can control. Natsuo began to ponder. Who would have thought that the success rate would be so high? Could it be that forming a complete bond also has an effect on increasing the probability? Samui has finally given birth to a child. Offspring plus 1, comprehensive potential evaluation is 167, you gain chakra plus 14, living corpse reincarnation Natsuo said in his mind upon receiving the reward. Oh, it seems I received Orochimaru's body transfer technique well, since this technique has to do with the soul. It may give me some ideas to improve resurrection techniques. Samui looked at her child with a hint of weakness, then turned to Natsuo. Now that I've given birth, what are you planning to do to us or rather, to me? Kill me? As someone who actually betrayed the Achiha clan and almost caused many children to be kidnapped, he had already prepared himself for any punishment. Killing her would be the most normal choice. That would be a waste. Natsuo shook his head. You are at least an elite jonin. Killing you casually would be a waste of resources. So what do you plan to do? Samui's mouth curled up with a bitter smile. Are you going to keep me around? Aren't you afraid that another Kinochi like me will appear in the Achiha clan? I may have failed, but what if someone else succeeds? If you don't kill me, how will you suppress their evil intentions? Although all the spies who had infiltrated the Achiha clan had basically abandoned their original spy work and focused wholeheartedly on raising their children, that did not mean that they could not betray the Ichiha clan. There would always be women like Samui who are loyal to their village. At the very least, if the village is willing to increase the rewards, there will be people tempted. This is something that cannot be prevented. She looked at Natsuo with a bitter smile and said, If you don't kill me, aren't you afraid that others will follow my example and cause significant harm to the Ichiha? Her own death was inevitable. Otherwise, it wouldn't be enough to deter others. Unfortunately, she had experienced countless life-threatening crises and didn't die at the hands of those enemies but died at the hands of the man who once possessed her body. No, you're thinking too much. Natsuo sighed lightly. In fact, the major shinobi villagers should no longer dare to lay a hand on my offspring. I didn't tell you when you were pregnant, but now. Eight Tails was captured by me and taken to Kanoha. Natsuo calmly said, Your rakage. I cut off all four of his limbs. Most of the Kumo shinobi in the frontline fortress were killed by me, probably only a few elite jonin are still alive. A while ago, the Kumogaka envoy came to surrender. I just sent back the rakage, who had become a useless person, and it came at a great political and economic cost in today's shinobi world. No one dares to have ideas about the Ichiha clan. Samui listened dumbfounded. She hadn't been in contact with the outside world for a long time, having been under house arrest since she was brought back, isolated from any news. So she had no idea what Natsuo had done during this time. The main force of a whole country's army was completely wiped out by him. Why don't you say you're the god of shinobi? Samui finally shook her head in disbelief. How could Rakage-sama? who was so strong, possibly fail, and be reduced to a useless person it's too exaggerated. Natsuo had a strange smile on his lips. Actually, you guessed right, people outside actually call me the god of shinobi. Samui looked at Natsuo with an unbelieving expression. Ten seconds later, Samui's expression remained unchanged. Thirty seconds later, Samui started to feel a little anxious. Three minutes later did you lie to me? Why would I lie to you? Natsuo's gentle voice shattered Samui's last hope. She seemed to lose all her strength in an instant, collapsing on the bed, her eyes lifeless. Never mind Kumogaka, Iwagaka, Kurigaka. 
no one will dare touch the Achiha clan again while I'm here. Natsuo's tone was calm, so there's no need to worry about the problem you mentioned. Natsuo's lips curled up. As for the punishment for you, while having multiple wives may be sweet, men always have some new ideas they want to try, and generally, many of these ideas are not suitable for their loved ones. Samui will definitely remain under house arrest until she recovers from childbirth. Although she did not cause any harm to the children and had intimate contact with Natsuo, he was not kind enough to forgive her. On the other hand, Natsuo did not deceive her with his words. The prestige of being the number one person in the shinobi world is so great that no country would dare to harm his family so easily. There was even an incident with the Iowa shinobi that was mentioned by Sasuke himself. In a letter he sent back to the village, he sarcastically commented, Iowa shinobi really embarrassed their will of stone. They said they had a strong will and wouldn't give in to anyone, right? Natsuo, do you know that if I still wore the clan emblem, they wouldn't dare to lay a hand on me? Then what's the point of me gaining experience on the battlefield? But if I take off the clan emblem, how can I make the name of the Ichiha clan known? There is no other way. For the sake of a few children, Natsuo directly broke into the Kumogaka fortress, killed almost all the Kumo shinobi, and took away the eight tails and the rakage. Those were just a few children who hadn't fallen into the hands of the Kumo shinobi. Although it seems that Sasuke and Natsuo have a more distant relationship, no one knows if they are actually much closer. Who would dare to lay a hand on someone like him? Aren't you afraid of provoking Natsuo? Sasuke is very troubled. Of course, he complains on the surface. But anyone can see the proud attitude between the lines. Plus it's not just Sasuke who's playing this trick of complaining when deep down they're just bragging. Naruto also played along. Of course, the letter he sent said, Oh, Natsuo Nikki, I accidentally defeated another Chunin, and the village rewarded me with a whopping 50,000 Ryo. The Awagaka Chunin are really weak, I have defeated several of them, and the rewards totaled more than 300,000. With so much money, how long will I be able to play in the Super VIP section when I return? Haha, <laughs> Natsuo Nikki, when I go back, I'll treat you to a good time, and let you experience it too. Natsuo replied, Naruto, you are really amazing, come back soon. I just reloaded 10 million on your Super VIP card, so you can have a good time, don't worry about this 10 million. It's just the income I get from sleeping at home for a day. If it's not enough, ask me for more. Speaking of which, the village did not give me the reward for eliminating the Kumogaka Fortress and capturing the Rakage and the Eight Tails. Sunade, this Hokage is really stingy. I believe that such a stingy village will go bankrupt sooner or later. If one day the village really goes bankrupt, why don't you come with me, Naruto? Let's establish a shinobi village together. I think you'll be good as the tenth cage. Naruto, Natsuo and Iki, I have achieved something on my own and risking my life. I just wanted to show off to you. Can't you just praise me a little and satisfy my desire to show off? But Naruto was also helpless. Although he did kill many Chunin and made significant contributions in reality, he was also very dangerous. Naruto's careless and reckless nature hadn't changed, and he almost got killed by enemies several times. There was one time when he even fell into a trap set by a Jonin, and almost got killed by that Ayo Shinobi. If it wasn't for the Nine Tails suddenly coming to Naruto's rescue, he would have been done for. After going through so many bloody battles and deducting the daily supplies needed for a Shinobi, he only saved a little over 300,000 in rewards. On the other hand, Natsuro reloaded his card and spent 10 million. The difference is really but after doubting life for a while, Naruto wrote his response. Natsuo and Nikki, I love you. I have decided to live with the Achiha when I return to the village. I want to stay for a year. 10 million. Oh, 10 million. Damn 10 million Natsuo had no expression on his face. Are you talking about the Achiha club? Naruto blushed but still wrote his response. Doesn't that place also part of the Achiha clan? Natsuo, regardless of how arrogant Naruto and Sasuke may be, in reality, their talents are top-notch in the shinobi world. After going to the front against the Wagaka, they grew rapidly. Under Kakashi's direction, the team completed several missions. Naruto and Sasuke made a name for themselves and achieved considerable achievements, becoming rising stars. Even Sakura quickly grew, actively learning Jinjutsu from Kakashi, and not forgetting to study medical ninjutsu, when they returned to the camp for repairs. In her words, even someone as skilled as Natsuo thinks I have talent. So how could I, someone with talent, possibly lose to just Naruto? Although she might have some misconceptions about Naruto's talent. But it has to be said, war really makes people grow. The three members of the main group have made great progress, the only pitiful one being Kakashi. Because Sasuke and Naruto have become more and more daring and have actively taken on dangerous missions. This has caused Kakashi to be constantly on edge, encountering a Wagaka's expert shinobi several times, and facing constant danger. As Sasuke's team's reputation grew, a Wagaka also assembled a team to hunt them down. Although they did not dare to kill Sasuke, the Awa shinobi still planned to beat him and imprison him. This made Kakashi even more worried, but when Naruto and Sasuke found out, they laughed heartily. Naruto exclaimed proudly, My reputation has reached a Wagaka. Even the Iowa Shinobi have to specifically target me. Sasuke coldly replied, What does that have to do with you? This is the prestige of my Echiha clan. Sakura, who was standing nearby, said, The Iowa Shinobi are so scary, 
Kakashi sensei it's amazing. Kakashi, do you guys really not intend to let me? Your teacher has some peace of mind. Taking you guys out once can make me live 10 years less. He couldn't help it and proposed to Tsunade and Natsuo the idea of bringing the three of them back to the village. He felt that he couldn't protect his team members like this. Actually, Tsunade is also a little worried about Naruto and Sasuke, so she decided to ban them from accepting dangerous missions for the next period of time. A few more days passed. Finally, Kakuzu sent a message telling Natsuo that he had brought the Kinochi. Natsuo immediately went to the agreed meeting place. Natsuo, you're here. Kakuzu greeted warmly even showing a big smile. Look, this is the Kinochi I worked so hard to capture Natsuo. You need this kind of talent in the Ichiha clan. The Kinochi that Kakuzu was referring to was a short-haired girl who was staring at Natsuo and Kakuzu, with a look full of anger. He had short black hair and black eyes. She wears a red shirt with a sleeve on her left arm, with a brown Awagaka tactical vest, fishnet stockings with a red skirt and shorts over them. Her face was full of youthful vitality, but the most striking feature was her long, beautiful legs wrapped in fishnet stockings. This person Natsuo's expression changed slightly. You actually brought her here. I put in a lot of effort. Kakuzu sighed lightly, showing a sense of hard work and accomplishment. You shouldn't have made the effort. She's the Tsuchikage's granddaughter. Natsuo covered his face with one hand. In fact, you kidnapped her, that's right. The girl brought by Kakuzu was none other than the future fourth Tsuchikage, Enoki's granddaughter, and the best legs in the Naruto series. Of course, she hadn't fully grown yet, but in her teenage years, her face still had some youthfulness, and her figure was not prominent. But those legs, which were the most eye-catching, were truly something. Natsuo, didn't I tell you that she had a noble lineage? Kakuzu said naturally. Her talent is also high enough. I had to put in some effort to capture her. Kakuzu said seriously. I feel that she definitely has the potential to reach cage level. She indeed has Natsuo's mouth twitched slightly. But Kakuzu, I remember you said she was old enough to get married. Where is this girl old enough? Natsuo pointed at the young Kuritsuchi girl. He's the right age. Kakuzu paused and then turned his head slightly. I have done the research, if we go by the customs of the Sengoku era Natsuo, now there is even someone alive from the Sengoku era. Kakuzu, you really go all out for the money. But Kakuzu didn't care. So Natsuo, do you agree to this transaction? Kakuzu asked impatiently. I do. Natsuo replied without hesitation. Of course, I agree. Although it is a little different from what I imagined, Koritsuchi matches the information and introduction that Kakuza gave earlier. Since that's the case, Natsuo agrees. He said directly, within three days, the payment will be deposited into your previous account. Good. No wonder you are number one in the shinobi world, you are direct. Kakuzu suddenly showed a delighted smile and gave a thumbs up. I will continue to work hard to find excellent talents for the boss. Just do your best. Natsuo shrugged. If you can find a true cage level expert, I might consider paying you five times the price. Kuritsuchi is good, but her strength hasn't reached its peak yet, plus she's very young. True cage level strong warriors are even more valuable. Kakuzu's eyes lit up at the words. He silently swallowed his saliva. This transaction was already at an expensive price, but to increase it fivefold. Is this the Ichiha's wealth? Love it, love it. Natsuo looked at the angry Kuritsuchi and lifted him up. By the way, Kakuzu, you have captured Anoki's granddaughter. Won't he come after me angry? Kakuzu chuckled. But Natsuo, didn't you say that you didn't care about any problems I brought? So I didn't worry too much about that. A woman of noble status will definitely bring some trouble. Natsuo was mentally prepared for some trouble from the beginning of his transaction with Kakuzu. But now this Natsuo raised an eyebrow. What do you mean don't worry about it? Kakuzu replied. I mean, Anoki is right behind me. Natsuo. The next second, a small figure fell from the sky. Anoki was furious. So it was you who took away my granddaughter. In the sky, that swiftly flying little old man is known by almost everyone in the shinobi world. Natsuo had an expression filled with disbelief. Are you just passing this problem on to me? According to the agreement between Kakuzu and Natsuo, any problems caused by the transaction should be resolved by Natsuo. In theory, the current trouble should be borne by himself. But to complete the transaction one second and have trouble come the next second isn't that a bit too fast. Ah. Natsuo covered his head, feeling that Kakuzu's level of after-sales service still needed improvement. Meanwhile, it was you who took away my granddaughter. Anoki had an angry expression on his face, his clothes fluttering in the wind, exuding a bit of imposing aura. But the next second, his pupils contracted. Natsuo, you're here too. His expression changed, quickly becoming vigilant, looking around with a guarded face. Is this a Kanoha conspiracy, trying to lure me out and kill me? Well, it seems like you people of Kanoha really think you can get arrogant, just because a powerful shinobi has appeared. He laughed angrily. Natsuo, don't think you're a Chihamadara. But saying that, his small eyes were constantly alert, waiting for the ambush of the Kanoha people. He had already fallen into the trap, and facing eyes similar to a Chihamadara, Anoki was also panicking inwardly. However, Natsuo waved his hand and said, No, it has nothing to do with Kanoha. I didn't intend to fight you either. 
Isn't this a Konoha conspiracy? Anoki frowned, looking skeptical. No, Natsuo replied calmly. Then can you return my granddaughter to me? Anoki pointed at Kuritsuchi. This useless granddaughter of mine. I appreciate your concern, although I don't know what she did to offend you. I will definitely punish her severely when I go back. At first, Anoki was furious, with an expression of whoever dares to touch my granddaughter. I will kill his entire family. But now his expression suddenly changed, his voice softened, and his tone became extremely gentle. There's no way. This is the power of the number one person in the shinobi world. Anoki did not consider himself weaker than the Reikage. But the problem is that the Reikage and the Eight Tails, along with thousands of shinobi, were defeated by Natsuo. Even if he had confidence, he wouldn't think that he has surpassed the combination of the Reikage, the Jinchuriki, and thousands of troops. Especially with thousands of troops, only a few elite Jonin managed to escape in the end. So many people couldn't even escape. Natsuo's power is definitely much stronger than it appears on paper. Looking at Anoki's timid appearance, and even though she was tied up and struggling when she saw Anoki, Kuritsuchi's face was full of disbelief as she looked up in disappointment. Oh, there's no need for that. Natsuo waved his hand. I won't let her go. Sure enough, it's a conspiracy by Kanoha. Anoki's expression changed drastically, and a burning anger could be seen in his eyes. The speed at which his expression changed was astonishing, even Kakuzu next to him sighed in amazement. Natsuo, it seems like you really think you're invincible. Anoki's voice was low. Even a Chihamadara didn't dare to recklessly bully a Wagaka. Who gave you the courage to be so unscrupulous? Natsuo couldn't help but glance at Anoki. At the same time he said in his mind, When you mentioned that not even a Chihamadara dared to bully a Wagaka, are you referring to the incident where he almost beat you to death in front of the second Tsuchikage? Ah, you're thinking too much. Natsuo sighed lightly. The reason I won't let her go is not for the reason you think. This gentleman Kakuzu already sold your granddaughter to me as my future wife, so now she is mine. Oh, don't worry. I don't forbid my wives from visiting their families. You still have a chance to see Kuritsuchi and Oki. Kuritsuchi. Both of them were stunned at the same time. Anoki murmured. So you're here to buy a wife? Yes. Natsuo said calmly. Not a conspiracy by Kanoha. You've already felt it, right? It's just us around here. Anoki looked confused. He got so scared he thought he was having a heart attack. And it turns out it was all because he wanted Kuritsuchi to become his wife. For a woman. Even Kuritsuchi couldn't help but be confused. She didn't know what had happened and the cloth in her mouth slipped. From what she could be heard murmuring, has my charm spread from Awagaka to Komahagaka? Even the legendary number one shinobi in the world would bow down to me, at the cost of hiring others. To bring me over this is simply the treatment that only a femme fatale would receive. How come I didn't realize I was so beautiful? Perhaps it was a bit of a girlish thought. But she actually blushed and acted coy. Anoki knew his granddaughter too well. Seeing her like this, his face turned dark. But he still landed slowly and said to Natsuo, Natsuo, stop joking. Konohagaka and Awagaka are still at war. If you really like my granddaughter, why don't you come with me to Awagaka? Anoki's eyes flickered, his tone sincere. We and Awagaka are different from Konoha. We warmly welcomed the Ichiha clan. Then it was Kuritsuchi's turn to have a dark expression on her face. She knew her grandfather too well. This was clearly a plan to sell her off and leave Natsuo behind. That's right. Anoki had exactly that idea in mind. For politicians like Anoki and Rasa, what does a woman mean? Even if she is their own daughter or granddaughter, to them nothing is more important than being able to attract a major power to their village. Moreover, it's just getting married, not forcing their daughter or granddaughter to die directly. Even if they die, it's not something completely unacceptable. Can't they continue to have more children? Rasa is young and strong, and it won't lead to the end of his bloodline. Although Anoki can't have children, his son Kitsuchi is still in his prime. They can just have another child. In a turbulent world like the shinobi world, Anoki and the others would not think that their own daughter or granddaughter could live a carefree life. However, Natsuo shook his head. Sorry, I still think it's most comfortable to stay in Kanoha and Oki persisted. What can Kanoha give you? We in Awagaka can give you twice as much. Natsuo colon, Tsunade is already pregnant with my child, and we previously had a daughter yes, the girl who awakened the wood release. This is what Kanoha can give me, can you? Anoki was suddenly speechless. Unless he undergoes god tier special modification, there's no way an old man like him can give birth to a child with Natsuo. Even if he was willing, Natsuo wouldn't want to. But is that girl who possesses the would release your daughter? Anoki widened his eyes. Yes. Natsuo nodded. Anoki's face turned pale. Like the leaders of Kanova's shinobi clans, Anoki's initial reaction upon learning that Tsunade's daughter possessed the wood release at such a young age was to get rid of her. But just as they were arranging the manpower, the next second, they quickly cancelled this mission. Not for anything else but for the internal strife within Kanoha. The wood release Senju and the Ichiha Manjekyo are like arch enemies. Although Tsunade's daughter is still young, 
she can completely serve as hope to counter Ichiha Natsuo. They hope that Konoha will have another story like Senja Hashirama and Ichiha Madara. Back then, if it weren't for the clash of ideals between these two major powers, they would have joined forces and annihilated the four great shinobi villages. Now Natsuo is exerting his dominance over the shinobi world, and he needs a senju to restrain him. Even if Hikari is a baby and still can't contain Natsuo and ends up being killed by him before growing up, it doesn't matter. At that time, as a mother, can't Tsune target the Ichiha clan for revenge. After all, she is the Hokage. When the time comes, even if Konoha doesn't want to, there will be an internal conflict. But now you're telling me that the baby we had high hopes for is Natsuo's daughter. Speaking of which, there seems to be a rumor in Konoha that Tsune and Natsuo have met before. Anoki's face turned pale. Oh, the rumors are true. Natsuo nodded. Anoki's heart sank completely. Well, there goes the hope of internal conflict in Konoha and the hope of luring Natsuo to Awagaka is also gone. Even if Awagaka tries their best, they won't be able to attract Natsuo Natsuo. Give my granddaughter back to me. I can pretend today's events never happened. Anoki, with a heart full of despair, lost his previous gentleness in his tone. I'm sorry. I already said it. She can't leave. She will be my future wife. Natsuo smiled faintly. Anoki's aura became oppressive. Are you really unwilling to let go of my granddaughter? I don't have the habit of letting go of my own women. Natsuo said with a smile. Even if it causes a war between Awagaka and Konohagaka. Anoki's voice suddenly rose. Natsuo, don't think that the ongoing war has weakened Awagaka. In fact, Awagaka has always had reserve capacity, and does not want to go to an all-out war against Konoha. We have not yet fully committed all our troops. The number of Iowa shinobi we can actually mobilize are far from what you see now. Upon hearing this, Natsuo calmly glanced at Anoki. Anoki's voice abruptly stopped. His threats were effective against almost anyone, but not against Natsuo. Because Natsuo had really wiped out most of the forces in the Kumogaka fortress, he wasn't afraid to face the great Kumogaka army. So would he be afraid of the great Awagaka army? It's just a matter of a few more hits if you want to fight, then go ahead. Natsuo sighed. Honestly, I don't really want to fight with my wife's grandfather, but if you insist on picking a fight, I have no choice. Fine, fine, fine. Anoki laughed angrily. Let me see if you, Ichiha Natsuo, are worthy of the title of the world's strongest shinobi. The next second Anoki formed a small cube with a white sphere between the palms of his hands. Dust releases a Kekei Tota, an advanced version of the Kekei Genkai, and considered one of the most powerful ninjutsu in the shinobi world. Its power is so strong that countless other ninjutsu pale in comparison. Dust release. Detachment of the primitive world technique. However, just when the structure was about to expand a hand grabbed Anoki's wrist from the side. Hey! Hey, even if you're angry, don't attack like that. Natsuo sighed lightly. Your own granddaughter is still here. Anoki's pupils suddenly shrank. How did this guy get close? Anoki's expression changed slightly, and he involuntarily cancelled the ninjutsu he was about to cast. Then he suddenly broke free of the grip and brought his palms together again. Dust release. Detachment of the primitive world technique. A huge white light flickered and the white structure expanded instantly. However, Natsuo smiled lightly, dodging to the side, perfectly avoiding the structure. Boom. The dust release failed, leaving a deep imprint on the ground behind Natsuo. Anoki took the opportunity to fly into the sky. Natsuo, why don't you try using Susanoo? Anoki's voice was proud. Or maybe you already know. The dust release is something that not even Ichiha Madara's Susanoo could resist. Dust release. Detachment of the primitive world technique. Whoosh. A white light flickered. However, Natsuo still evaded him in anticipation. Natsuhiko raised his head slightly, his expression strange. Hum, Susanoo really can't withstand it. Susanoo's defense is astonishing. But no matter how astonishing it is, there are limits. And the destructive power of the dust release is truly unbeatable. Its attack intensity even surpassing the realm of ninjutsu, becoming a terrifying technique similar to a rule base power. Anything hit by this technique will instantly be split into atoms. It is a ninjutsu that theoretically nothing can resist. But you still have to hit someone first. Natsuo sighed lightly. It's really difficult for you to hit me with your skills. Anoki's expression became slightly embarrassed upon hearing this. Yes, that's the weakness of the dust release. The dust release is unleashed in the form of a three-dimensional structure, pulverizing everything inside it into molecules. Even if a Chihamadaira is hit, it is a guaranteed kill. But the prerequisite is to hit the target. With the attack speed of the dust release, which first creates the structure and then expands, it is impossible to escape the side of the Sharingan. Although the Sharingan is often associated with his Jinjutsu, the unique technique of Manjekyo and Susanoo, its more fundamental observation eye function is a source of pride for most Achiha. Why doesn't Anoki dare to be arrogant in front of Natsuo? Is it because he can't get through the Susanoo? No, it's because he can't hit Natsuo with his dust release. Of course, it's not just the Sharingan. The speed with which the fourth Hokage dominated the battlefield against the Wagaka back then was also the Dust Release's nemesis. Dust Release can't even hit people. Similarly, the third Rakage also defeated 10,000 Iowa Shinobi, while Anoki could only stare in disbelief. Anoki was also unlucky. Although Dust Release had great power, he always ended up embarrassed when facing enemies who were experts in speed. And what? Anoki's determination was unwavering as he said without hesitation. Even if I can't hit you, 
Aren't you still fleeing in panic from my attacks? Now return my granddaughter, and we can live in peace. Otherwise, I really want to know if someone like you, who hasn't truly fought a bloody battle with a strong enemy, can avoid my attacks 100%. Natsuo, you're not a Chihamadara. Tarumi Mei and Rasa can both fight you. There's no reason why an old man like me can't do it. Being sure of death when attacked, meant that Natsuo had to dance on the razor's edge. If it were Ichiha Madara, Anoki wouldn't dare to gamble. But although Natsuo had an impressive record, he had very few actual combat experiences compared to Anoki and Ichiha Madara, who grew up fighting. Anoki didn't believe that Natsuo wouldn't make a single mistake. Tarumi Mei and Rasa did not have dust release a powerful ninjutsu that could even break through the Susanoo's defense, but they were still able to take on Natsuo. There's no reason why he couldn't do it. You're overthinking. Natsuo shook his head with a smile. I'm not afraid of this kind of thing at all, okay? Let me see if you and Ichiha really possess the power of Ichiha Madara from back then. Anoki became furious and prepared to unleash his dust release. At this moment, suddenly, a large group of shinobi ran out of the forest. Each of them wore the forehead protector of the Iwa shinobi, numbering more than a hundred people. The one leading them was none other than Iwa's Jonan Akatsuchi. If one were to expand their perception, they would notice that there were still many Iwa shinobi coming from behind in succession. Finally, they've arrived. Anoki smiled faintly. When he went to rescue his granddaughter, he naturally considered the possibility of this being an ambush by Kanoha. Although he hadn't considered the presence of Natsuo here, he also suspected that this might be Jiraiya's cunning scheme. Therefore, while dispatching Katsuchi to launch a probing attack on the Kanoha camp, he also brought half of his people to follow him. And now Tsuchikichi-sama, we've arrived. Akatsuchi grinned foolishly, but when his gaze fell upon Natsuo, he slightly shrank back. This is truly a formidable opponent fortunately, Tsuchikichi-sama, you are cautious. Upon seeing Natsuo, the Iwa shinobi immediately believed, as did Anoki, that this was undoubtedly Kanova's plan. They wanted to law and kill a third Tsuchikich. Fortunately, Tsuchikich-sama was cautious and did not fall for Kanova's tactics. They're coming in quite a few numbers again. Natsuo shook his head. The number of people Natsuo detected with his perception easily exceeded a thousand. They were continuously springing up from the depths of the forest. Natsuo, this time you won't be able to escape even if you sprout wings. Anoki's face was filled with excitement and a gleam of light appeared in his eyes. It seems that today is the time for the strongest shinobi in the world to die. He looked excited, with a hidden killing intent in his eyes. Aren't you afraid I'll kill all of you? Natsuo asked curiously. They won't be able to withstand a few attacks from me. But Anoki laughed heartily. Natsuo, the method you used to defeat the Kumogaka army back then was through Susanoo, right? Yes, it was. Then, do you dare to use Susanoo in front of me? Anoki confidently said. Susanoo can't stop my dust release. And until you can use the Susanoo, our Iowa Shinobi army will show you what it means to be besieged. If there is no large-scale attack ninjutsu, the number of Shinobi can influence the outcome of a high-level battle. Anoki's words made sense, but... Natsuo's mouth called up. Of course, I dare to use it. Ha! Huh, Anoki was stunned. The next second, chakra around Natsuo suddenly surged. Bones, muscles, skin, armor, the enormous figure of Susanoo appeared directly. A majestic giant tens of meters tall stood in front of the Iowa Shinobi. As soon as the Susanoo appeared, it immediately raised its sword high. Don't even think about it. Anoki shouted loudly, and the dust release in his hand quickly took shape, then rushed towards Natsuo. The huge size of Susanoo couldn't dodge the attack of dust release. However, Natsuo's mouth slightly curled up. The dust release rushed forward, then Anoki's pupils constricted, because the Susanoo had disappeared. Ah, miserable screams sounded. Anoki suddenly turned his head. The Susanoo had appeared in the center of the Awagaka army. He raised the sword in his hand and slashed fiercely, instantly killing dozens of Iowa shinobi under this slash. After killing the Iowa shinobi, the sword energy continued to spread and cut through the forest on one side. Fortunately, this place where the Iwa Shinobi were was relatively open, and the Iwa Shinobi were scattered. If they had gathered in a camp like the Kumo Shinobi, this cut would have been enough to kill most of them. What's going on? How did Susanoo appear here? Anoki's expression changed drastically, and he quickly used dust release against Natsuo. But the next second his attack missed again. Natsuo's Susanoo instantly moved to the other side of Iwa Shinobi. This time he didn't even need to pull the sword out of it. He stomped on the ground with a ferocious kick causing the earth to shake and crushing a group of Iowa shinobi. It was as simple as stepping on ants. This is Anoki's pupils contracted. He thought of a fact, but didn't want to believe the result. Flying Thunder God technique Anoki gritted his teeth and said word by word. You recognize it? Natsuo smiled. Indeed, Susanoo's peculiar teleportation was the Flying Thunder God technique. Can the Flying Thunder God technique transfer such a huge object? Anoki's throat went dry. Even the fourth Hokage never did something like this. It can. Natsuo said with a smile. The fourth Hokage used it to transfer the tailed beast ball from the Nine Tails, and draw the Nine Tails away from the village. Of course, Minato's consumption was severe afterwards, and he had no choice but to use the dead demon-consuming seal, 
sacrificing himself to deal with the Nine Tails. However, Minato himself was a shinobi without a bloodline, and his chakra level was relatively low among age level shinobi. The so-called Great Consumption, compared to Natsuo's chakra level, was no different from using ordinary ninjutsu. Anoki's face instantly turned ugly. Flying Thunder God plus Susanoo. Is this combination possible? The problem is that, with this combination, not even his dust release, which can destroy Susanu, can stop Natsuo. Shuringen predicts his attacks, and the Flying Thunder God quickly evades. Anoki knows that his dust release is no longer effective. Not only that, with the power of his Susanu, Anoki's expression turned ugly as he watched Susanu stomp down, the tremendous force creating surging waves of energy. Not only did it stomp on and kill many Iwa Shinobi, but it also directly sent flying the Iwa Shinobi surrounding the area, causing them to be injured. I brought so many people, and yet it ended up costing them their lives. Anoki's eyes were bloodshot. Every Iwa Shinobi who died now entrusted him with their lives, believing in the strength of their Tsuchikage. No, I must find a way to restrain Natsuo. Anoki's eyes turned red, gritting his teeth, facing such a highly mobile enemy. The first thing is to restrict its movement methods. It is said that when the second Hokage was attacked by the Gold and Silver Brothers, Kinkaku and Kinkaku, they used the treasured tools of the Sage of Six Paths to create a sealing barrier to isolate the Flying Thunder God technique, which ultimately led to the death of the second Hokage. However, that kind of special barrier that isolates space is not something the Iowa Shinobi can achieve. Therefore, it is necessary to attack the location that the enemy must protect, forcing them to be unable to move. Just like the Nine Tails attack on Konoha, forcing Namika's Minato to fight desperately, which left him unable to flexibly use the advantage of the Flying Thunder God, and only able to face the enemy with his own disadvantages. This place is too far from Konoha, and the the location that Natsuo would want to protect Anoki, gritted his teeth as he struggled internally. But listening to the cries of the Iowa Shinobi, he finally made up his mind. I'm sorry forgive me, Kuritsuchi. Anoki's eye sockets filled with tears, but in his hands, he condensed the dust release structure. Hum, Natsuo raised his head slightly. This guy, what does he want to do dust release? Detachment of the primitive world technique. The target of his attack was not Natsuo, but Kuritsuchi. Anoki also had no choice but to do it. The only person who seems to have some connection with Natsuo is that hired mercenary, Kakuzu, and Kuritsuchi. But Natsuo's words were very clear. That person is just a human trafficker, considered a trading partner. Would Natsuo risk his life for a merchant he just did business with? How is that possible? So there is only one person left Kuritsuchi. Anoki's face looked grim, his teeth clenched. That's his own granddaughter. He didn't want it to be like this either. But listening to the screams of the Awa Shinobi, he was forced to make a decision. I hope Natsuo cares as much about his wives as the rumors say, even if she is a future wife. Otherwise, although it was a bit shameful to use the lives of people from his own village to threaten the enemy, when have Shinobi ever cared about honor in the face of life and death? His movements were slow, as if he deliberately let Natsuo see him, making a big show of it. Slow movements, even the voice shouting Kuratsuchi, I'm sorry was very loud. Old man, what are you doing? Kuratsuchi was stunned, then a bitter smile appeared. She knew her grandfather too well. Is this what being a cage of a village entails? As for being ruthless, it seems that no one is better than Shinobi Tsuchikage-sama. Akatsuchi widened his eyes. As one of the most powerful people in Awagaka, he also noticed Anoki's actions and quickly shouted. Wait, we can still resist, we haven't reached this point. We can try to fight back when Natsuo appears again. Counterattack. With what can we counterattack? Anoki smiled bitterly. Without dust release, who can break through Susanoo? And with the attack speed of dust release, it is impossible to counterattack the moment Natsuo appears, given his reaction speed. If there were other methods, would he still use this means? What a ruthless guy. Natsuo sighed lightly. Anoki, aren't you afraid that your granddaughter will hold a grudge against you? Kuritsuchi remained silent, but Anoki sighed lightly. I'm afraid, but I'm even more afraid that the shinobi of Awagako will sacrifice themselves because of my granddaughter. For Kuritsuchi, the sacrifices of the Iwa shinobi have already been significant, so why can't my granddaughter sacrifice for the Iwa shinobi? Although Natsuo didn't use much force, the attacks of Susanoo were not something ordinary Iwa shinobi could withstand. Anoki brought about a thousand elite troops, most of them Chunin and many Jonin. And now, this thousand strong force has already suffered a third of casualties. How long has it been? Although Koritsuchi is a genius, she is only a jonin herself. Other Iowa shinobi jonin can sacrifice themselves, and as a jonin, Koritsuchi can naturally sacrifice herself too. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.